Hello, I guess. <laughs> My name is Dunflesh, and I'm gonna do Dunflet on this nice second of January evening. Well, evening for me, not for my co-commentators, for example. We have some nice Aloyark and uh, Rod as co-commentators. Aloyark is actually a, an insane god gamer of this game. I don't for know the about past, that. like a year, <laughs> well, almost two years actually, probably. And we have like an old man. Yeah, yeah almost a year, <laughs> almost two years. And we have insane Rod as well with us. Hi. And Rod is actually like um, Dragonguard speedrunner, as he says, but in fact, he just runs the games where girls wear bikinis, as we figured it out beforehand. So yeah, that's going to be my support. On this run, we're going to switch co-commentators as, as we switch games. So no offense, guys, but you will be replaced. Damn. Understandable. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably one thing to mention about uh, this event is that, like, what Dunflathon is. Dunflathon is my personal event and why it even made it to, like, Speed Souls. Like, I used to do the D-Rust event every month, and this is actually a 26th Dunflathon ever. It's Dunflathon version 2.3, which means it consists of Nier, Automata, Sekiro, and Dark Souls 1, but with a certain type of categories. And this event for me was abolished for like over a year for now, because just de-rusting games without Dunflathon is more efficient. But yeah, I did actually a monthly marathon run for over two years straight, which was pretty insane. So yeah, we decided to recover it for, for a nice comfy showcase on Speed Souls, because there is like, there are really nice runs to showcase. So yeah, let's get started. We're gonna create new game, which is not surprising in this game. And the first game we start with is Nier Automata. I'm gonna name the save file Dunflathon. We're gonna play on normal because it's the superior difficulty. And yes, we soon will get started. Probably last thing to mention. Yeah, Nier is a really cool speed game. The last time Nier was showcased on Speed Souls channel was long, long, long time ago. So hope you will enjoy it. And E ending never was showcased on Speed Souls channel. Generally, E ending lacking uh, attention as the category of this game. Classic. Yep. So yeah, let's get started in five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. So we're going to start in Shmup, and the thing I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to solve Rubik's Cube. So we are it's just because the Shmup uh, part is so boring that of life and, death. and there is a lot of free time. We're going to squeeze like the Rubik's Cube speedrun first or some kind of punishment um, inside it. I, often think about the God who I used to solve Rubik's puzzle. Cube during uh, near speedruns and MGS speedruns at some point. So that's like a little addition to Dumpleton, I guess. This is uh, so Your there we finish the second Two layer. All units have penetrated the stratosphere. Autopilot systems green across the board. Plus layer this left. All units confirmed. We've passed the mm, I actually, threshold up. and are proceeding toward the I actually target. messed up, so Understood. not Once quite an insane skill. And hey, it's soft. I'm actually going to make sure that you can see me now uh, <laughs> properly. Uh, so yeah, uh, that was the first speed run of Dunfrithon, I guess you can <laughs> call it. Yeah, GGs. <laughs> okay, so actually to the run. Um, in this game, we have a nice sections called through the map sections. They are amazing. Every runner loves them. <laughs> and uh, uh, yep. uh, believe us, it, this is not how all four hours of the run will look like, but a solid bit of Alert. four hours will. So at the start, we need to kill enemies as fast as Requesting possible, to and for Ready doing that, we actually gonna kill the enemies. There is no like 
any like super magic about it really it's just you know all the waves and how to move there specifically we also move our teammate NPCs I guess you can call them like the, the friendly NPCs in certain places so they kill enemies for us and that speeds up the process a little bit but generally <laughs> yeah they can be like very mean at times but generally again like you can save quite a bunch of time by optimizing shoot em up sections like to the perfect level but there is really no magic you can also see like this way for example i'm killing enemies only on one side because to trigger the spawn of the next wave i need to kill only one side of enemies i'm also tanking all the lasers but that doesn't make me faster or anything it's just to waste recoveries of different kinds so the next menu i need to press one less input basically it's like super minor mm. Oh, okay, then uh, it was a nice showcase of uh, Rubik's Cube <laughs> uh, speedrun, but we have an audio desync because of how the audio setup is made, so I guess we will uh, fix that right away, very fast. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, I mean, the only important part was captured, like we solved the Rubik's Cube, Nothing else matters. Did we don't get to up see you the entire rest of the farm. Yep, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I was there to for the start at least. Okay, so we continue killing the waves. You can see that we are in a little different modes in shoot 'em up section, and uh, there is the only RNG part about it when you have to kill the spinner guy. Yep. And we actually get in the Alert. correct Alert. Large enemy group correct yes, gameplay. Okay, and there are definitely going to be things to explain. Starting from combats and combats and combat and movement. Yeah, that's, that's so I guess, the to here. Yeah, I guess someone can explain the damage glitch pretty quick. While I'm yeah. the weight. Pretty much the only attack we're going to stick with, up until we switch characters, is going to be the damage glitch, um, which you can see Dan throwing out a sword and it spins out in the air. Um, that's a damage glitch. You do it by dashing and then doing a heavy attack and you throw your sword out. It does way more damage than it has any reason to do. Way more. <laughs> way more damage. And we're pretty much always going to do that. Even even as 9s, we're going to do that. We'll just look yep. That's like super powerful and what is more exciting about it is that in this game you have two weapon sets that you can alternate and yeah. alternating weapon sets allows you like to throw two swords at the same time and both of them dealing the full damage with damage glitch which gonna make killing enemies under level much more exciting than it is normally. Okay, there we're gonna get slowly to like First skips, and hopefully I'm not gonna mess up too much on those. We're out of bounds. Yeah, like nice. this game has a lot of cool movement tag, and generally, like there you could so see. <laughs> mm-hmm. You could see me doing like the heavy hold attack to clip out of bounds, and then do some weird movement to get the enough heights. And on top of getting enough height, I was also like doing a heavy light attack to launch myself forward by a lot of distance. Also in this silo too, we are using slow-mo, I guess you guys, someone can explain the slow-mo a little bit. And taunting, I guess also. Yeah, nice. combat comes at you so fast in this speedrun, it's like, oh hey, so now we gotta get cool. Yeah. We can slow down time here. Um, so if you 
charge your pod program, there's a laser you can shoot. You might have seen Dan do that for the flyers. If you, when you're doing that, the enemies slow down. So if you do that slow mo, and then and slow with pod fire, you can just keep slowing time down. Why? Nice boost. Yep. Scouting out the hardest trick. I don't usually get a <laughs> the it's hardest kind of trick, but love out of bounds actually is harder. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. And another I'm... thing. Stop calling oh, me no, ma'am. Huh? Oh no, just look the right way. This All one's right, not then. too bad. There no, you go. No, no, no. It's not about looking the right way. I actually was dropping inputs. Oh no. Super badly. Oh, oops. Yeah, like when you can see your character, sometimes when you don't get the right input, with your first input, it can be messy. Okay, so there we have a three called God Laser that they luckily failed. <laughs> I mean, the prologue is the... Like the part of the run that can be very annoying when you're grinding for insanely good times. It doesn't really have too many a mega difficult parts. It's just so many small things that can go wrong in this like sections. Yeah. Plus you have four minutes long shoot em up section at the start. I surveyed the entire factory, no. but couldn't find anything that's resembling our very bad actually. Maybe they I think. I don't know. I think that's like somewhere. super mega bad. Uh, I'm not sure you, you can, can just get... you could just go forward and then go to the left. Go forward and left. Where you can go left? You can yeah. go forward up oh, onto the end bit. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, see, Ooh. that's why you have Allo here with you. <laughs> that was scary. I was like, oh god. <laughs> I'm so yeah. glad Allo is very familiar with the out of bounds areas around here. Yeah, because I have no clue what to do in this out of uh, bounds area. So there, I messed up the movement bridge. in out of bounds, of and I didn't cancel out. my plunge fast enough. Like and to get a yeah, off. like this streak saves <laughs> quite a bit of time. time, time huh? And that yeah, was so is... scary because if you fall there, I that yeah, is if you very fall, bad. if you fall initial, like fully, all the way down, you will not be able to do anything about it. Yeah, it's and just a reset. Has, yeah, it's just a reset, and this game has no checkpoints or anything that you can load from. There are checkpoints that you can get loaded. Adds if you die in certain combat, but if you yeah, load the save file yourself manually, like you can only load the, the save files that can be made on transporters. There are no prologue. bonfires. Yeah, no bonfires. Unfortunately, so that there was a marks, marks two segment. Marks two. Yeah. And that yeah, one's that one's pretty timed if you just know how to do enough damage, which Dan did. Yeah, so I guess we angles. have to mention. Yeah, that's angles. The previous guy was marks. This is angles. That already tells you much about the story of this game because basically there is some philosophy in this video game story that we will not see in this speedrun, but still. So right so, here, Dan's... Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. you want to explain the slow-mo? No, no, no. Okay. I was going to say, right here, Dan's doing uh, the slow-mo tech that I mentioned earlier in order to keep Angles doing this punching attack. Um, because if Angles is doing a punching attack into this cutscene that's coming up, he won't be doing that specific punching attack going into the next section. And if he does yeah. his remaining punching attack that's still in his pool of attacks he could do, that will lose t about 20 seconds. Yep, exactly. And then since I got the punching attack as the very first attack, I have to slow mo like the entire thing. Yep. Did I even get it? Yeah, I got it. Yep. Nice. Oh, and see, so like close. no punching attacks. Yeah, it was like very close. And as you can see, there is no health bar anymore on top of angles, and that's like another thing that is very big in near. Like most of the bosses, like ninety nine percent of the bosses are stage based sort of so you can deal more damage than you you have to you have to wait until the the phase will change and you will be able to actually proceed with the boss fight 
Because yeah, for now he will dive twice and crack the crack the rod or whatever it is. Yes, it's the rod. And I'm also I... in out of bounds there on the pipe. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, game. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Left Sigh. pipe. Best pipe. So yeah, there I'm in out of bounds on this pipe actually, and uh, it makes this place like super chill because you don't have to worry about angles at all. You can actually reach the end of this bridge. But we will not. <laughs> Packing in. Yeah, and you just have to wait there. There is nothing you can do. And as we mentioned, like with the punches, why it was important to keep him doing the right attack to minimize the chance of him doing bad attack that will cost us time after the cutscene would play. Oh, with shingles. Nah. Oh, I, I practiced it a well. little bit, but <laughs> I'm not. Heck. Classic yeah, these ninjas were not the greatest, but that's fine. Not the worst either. Oh yeah, Just we didn't explain up. taunt. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, taunt. We'll have time. <laughs> um, let's do it right now. So if you uh mash your flashlight. Uh, towards an enemy, they'll get all red and steamy, and that means they're taunted. Uh, and when they're taunted, uh, you there's a there's a buff applied to them, which makes it so that they deal 150% um, damage and take 150% damage. And it's very crucial that it's against the enemy and not you. You have no effect of like like it. It's not affecting you. It's affecting the enemy. Um, basically, you, uh, you hit the enemy harder and they hit you harder, so later on that will be scary. Very scary. Not really most of the times, but yeah, there optimally I need to, like, time the NPC voice line. I could actually, yeah, I definitely could shortcut menu that's missiles attack, but I was listening. Hello, you are too closely. Too, too beautiful. Oh, man, I miss you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, yeah, that, uh, like, there are actually quite a couple RNG moments in Prologue that can hurt, and that was one of them because you need angles to start the attack after end of the dialogue as fast as possible, and sometimes he's stuck in the other animation for ages. That prevents you from. From him doing the right attack, like the scripted attack. Ooh! Whoa! Forward. The double hit. Oh! The mythical. Wow! Well, now I was this like, run is a good run. I was like, normally people buff here so that you can kill them in two hits, but you kill them in two hits anyway. That that was actually pretty crazy. You can get the the arm there to hit twice if you do a specific. Input. I'm not. I don't know exactly what input it is because I'm not great. It's like. Dashing and attacking, you you need yeah. like to interrupt your attack with the dash perfectly, and then you can and for hit some twice. reason does double cool. hit. Yep. What if you buffed and killed it in one hit exactly? Yeah, what actually do no move? buff because I I'm too scared to mess up the buff, <laughs> and it saves like no time from what I can tell or like super little. This yeah, is the most is like point one. <laughs> So there we have the other like hardest enemy of the game, which is menus. Not specifically this menu, but menus in this game have insane delays. Like it's not funny how big some menu delays are in this game. It's awfully terrible, disgusting. Shout out to transporters. <laughs> transporters. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So there we have some casual chatting with Ninas, and then and we also have. Just unlocked the strongest thing in the game, which is self-destruct. Oh, yeah, self-destruct, sure. So we're going to oh. use it real quick here to stand right before a voice line uh, trigger and then talk to 9S and then walk into the trigger to skip 9S's dialogue because we don't really want to hear him talk if we can avoid it. That's actually a 
very important trick like across the game like skipping dialogues by interrupting them with other dialogues it's like super crucial i also picked up the chest here for the money like it's just three thousand whatever the currency is called just money money yeah money and we like in this route we need quite some money to afford all the gear all the starting gear that we're gonna use for the rest of the game unlike in a ending oh i actually can skip the cutscene it means that i need to not sd during adam pit oh no you That's got that it. thing i actually don't know like how you get this glitch when you do but it's like super weird yeah it's unfortunate it was not double hit not or we will have to watch uh, an amazing cutscene for like a minute See Adam Schlorp out of his QB, orb. You're going to have some new weaponry yep. installed from here on out. I'll put up instructions. So another shoot him up. Make sure to commit them to memory. Yep, another shoot him up. But yeah, I wanted to say that that dialogue overlap, small skip that we did with Ninas in bunker, is like very essential speedrunning mechanic. Because we're gonna abuse that, especially in E ending run, significant amounts. And also, like, there is going to be a very fancy skip called EDS that actually Alloyar found, which was pretty insane. It's pretty insane, Skip. You will love it. It really is. So there's going to be a really cool cutscene skip right here if Dan gets it. No, I, I actually don't go for it. You don't go for it? I'm you don't even go it. for it? Wow. There's a lineup. But I don't go for it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess there is. Like, I'm an old gamer, okay? I don't do all this fancy, None fancy of this stuff. I'm not stuff. The boomer yeah. showing. <laughs> I'm not even going to do the dialogue cancel. Oh, you're oh, gonna do this dialogue cancel? Yeah. Damn. Just because I want to pick up the medium recovery from a chest. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable, Intel, honestly. With money I mean, being so tight. In E ending, like every medium there, recovery counts, really. It's Since we weird. will need a lot of money for, for the gear, we will have not enough money for the heals. So Dan's actually done this. It twice well, already so this is the but he's been huh? doing an attack the into these cutscenes that are called discovery cutscenes so when mm -hmm. you find a new area there's a little cutscene that plays that shows off the area they normally take about five so or, and there's a slow walk actually that's the one there's a slow walk into the area and then a cutscene that plays uh, if you're doing an attack into the cutscene trigger you don't do the slow walk and it saves about five seconds each time yeah it's like very very annoying thing when you fail it. We're also doing dash punches time. here instead of dash you chaining, which oh, we yeah, were doing in prologue. So we're doing a dash, and at the very end, we're doing a bit of a punch to go forward. It's just the fastest form of movement right now. Uh, in prologue, we didn't have bare fists equipped, so we didn't do it, so we just chained dashes. Uh, but now we're going to dash punch for a bit and just pick up some quest items and do a little bit of required questing to progress story. Yeah, for required questing, we actually not gonna do part of this required questing in B ending. Because we're gonna just buy the the required items. Use the money to cheat. Okay, so we've got the good aggro. No, he survived. Oh, that's so scary how you do that. <laughs> yeah. He's it though. Okay, that's everything the supply trader asked right, for. So yeah, uh, the tricky part about this quest in particular is it's that there are like enemies boss, that aren't quest enemies and they will not drop required items. Them, but we, we know what ourselves. enemies are so, no, required by they how they aggro yeah, yeah. at you. Because the regular like idling enemies will not get aggroed at you unless you attack the quest enemies will get aggroed at you when you attack their friends or when you like 
shoot near with them. We see two. Oh yeah, we also upgrade our weapon, and now we're gonna switch to. Oops, we're gonna switch to a different movement type, which is called dash swinging. And we did that because after the weapon upgrade that we've got, it gives you a better attack speed, and that attack speed makes it faster to actually do dash swing. Doing dash swing with VC1 is actually slower than dash chaining. Uh, it's actually the same speed. As dash, you have to do it. Uh, dash, uh, chaining? As dash chaining, yeah, actually, it oh, is the same speed. The same. It's the same speed, but you have to be press another button. Perfect. <laughs> and yeah, that as well. Okay, so there we're gonna do like more fancy movements, climbing buildings, going around the enemies. And for now, you can enjoy the comfy dash swing because relatively soon we'll switch to another movement tag that is even a more little bit more <laughs> well, I don't know how much more comfortable it is. Probably it is more comfortable. So there we will buy some necessary items for us. Um, it's like heals, it's weapon buffs, uh, not weapon buffs, but damage buffs. Oops. Okay, so there, there is another out of buns clip. Actually, 9S managed to clip out of buns faster than I did. It's lovely, <laughs> and I didn't switch the weapon sets. Okay. Some spaghetti. But yeah, now we are in out of bounds, and in this game we're gonna be in out of bounds a lot, as to be as for sure. Yeah, walls and are very easy to get through. Yep, and this game is very liking to have triggers that don't allow you to progress the story unless you take them. So even going through walls can can't like uh, stop you from way, collecting right? those so like very often we will like our curse will be determined by the triggers we have to pick up in like order right to there. progress the story yeah yeah that specific out of bounds movement um you're kind of like running along the edge right there so if he was a little more to the right he would have fallen but he also wanted to get the triggers and he wanted to avoid the enemies and he wanted to avoid some other triggers like that discovery cutscene I mentioned. There's one right back there, but he just ignored it because it's optional. But he got the required ones. So you saw the dots move on the ground and then he's going to pick up this pod and slide his way to victory, hopefully. Yeah, in desert we're going to use sun slides a little bit to Careful. accelerate the movements. Yeah, these pads are really optimized around these sand slides. Well, not in my case, probably, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they it are. looks optimized to me. And then we're gonna kill Probably some Probably Aliark is here. already like crying. <laughs> no, I mean, Looking one of them slow. was slightly slow, but I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> so. I mean, my very no, first most of them are fine. Sense slide and second sense slide and Mister. I'm being mean. Uh, oh, I'm just oh wow, he's being time. real mean. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was like very mean. That's so like... that robot is named Don. It's heading for that and he took his time. He took like a lot of his time. So I, a little, I messed up Good. a little. Oh. Yeah, that's actually the discovery entering cutscene. Like nice. you see the... Now we can see it. So like everyone knows. Yeah. Good showcase. Yeah, it's a showcase after all. What's that? So yeah, that enemy is like RNG-ish, and we had to plunge along the wall to make it closer to the discovery cutscene, but because he was as mean, oof, that was a terrible jump, actually. I don't know why I jumped so early in the first place. And we're out of bounds again. Yep, and now it's gonna be the other time we're gonna go in a weird curve just in order to reach out the story triggers. Right and out of bounds. 
Yep, there's a trigger over here that's in a tunnel, but we're not even remotely close to being inbound here. So we're just gonna kind of hit the trigger from below, I believe, is where the tunnel uh, is. Yeah, right it is below. And then we're gonna go hit another trigger or fly right under it. Hey, platform or... nice. <laughs> Yeah, we flew right under it, nice. Okay, and there we equipped. What is this? So right here, now we've just switched to doing double damage glitch. So Dan equipped the other sword. He's not no, using it for that exact bad. thing. He's going for early dawn and almost gets early oh, dawn. Oh no. It was this so really bad. Close. I don't know why I threw it so far left. So that's a really small optimization where if you're Actually, really... not very small. It, well, it's... Surprisingly. Yeah, surprisingly. But it is an optimization about throwing your sword where dawn's going to spawn. So it kills him in that little cutscene. So you don't even have to do anything. And it starts the timer for when this whole section ends. Yep. Really. So like, instead of waiting for the cutscene to play and then kill the enemy and timer to start, you kill the enemy at the start of the cutscene, so the rest of the cutscene timer is already like started. Which is very nice. There we have like, just kill as many enemies possible as possible section. And it actually kind of matters how many enemies you kill, because like you get resources from killing them and also you get the experience oh i forgot no, no you forgot no you don't watch i the forgot sword. i forgot we're gonna watch the cutscene <laughs> because i got a rare rare glitch that doesn't allow you to skip the cutscene so after you self-destruct game doesn't allow you to skip the cutscene with pressing start button for some reason i actually don't know why and i got the glitch that doesn't allow me to skip the cutscenes with the start button. Yeah. I believe it's because you can't pause while you uh, are yeah, uh, SDing. <laughs> After SD. You can't pause like while the stand-up animation is proceeding. We do get to see Adam's butt now. <laughs> nice. Showcase, guys. Showcase? <laughs> yeah, all cutscenes per <clears throat> No. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, this is like this is super machine. unlucky to get, to be honest, it's, but I yeah, just forgot with all the commentary that I have to... Like, this is avoidable, but it's just annoying to deal with. So this fight's super optimized for what we want to do here. Um, we want to damage him down enough that we skip a voice line right uh, here. So he doesn't say sword dodge, hopefully. Okay, he says sword dodge. My, my first damage glitch <laughs> flew like it all was, the way. Yeah, it had a mind of its own. Projectile. That's not a huge loss, but it's unfortunate for sure. I mean, compared to like having a cutscene, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not a huge loss for sure. And then we're going to laser twice, which ends this phase where he's up on away from you, which is annoying. And then we're going to hopefully buff again and then damage glitch him and taunt him. Uh, okay, I nice. didn't get the ranged shield, but I didn't get the stagger either. So nice. whatever. That was, that was an okay, clean ending to it. Considering how it yeah, started. Not the least. worst, not the worst ending you can imagine for sure. Yeah, especially compared to what someone who would only have played this casually normally does for this boss fight and takes forever to do. Uh, this is significantly faster when you know just how to do enough damage to the bosses and how to skip things. So yeah, also we did like Stop. some slow mo like during moving, what so we the have the I know. parts of the buildings like not collapsing beneath command. ourselves. Let's move to an area so with we better could just move so in a straight line command. comfortably. And there is going to be another out of bounds skip. We actually took There's transporter. Yep. We picked out the. Transporter beforehand, not only for this, but not going to be useful only for this, but specifically for this. And also, we're going to pick up the chest for materials. I'm actually not 100% sure what you pick up this for, but I think it's for the B ending supply trader quest. Yep, it's for the small gear. Yep. Yeah, but we also get fun. some. You will also get like some other materials from there that might be useful, maybe for supply trader quest. I don't know. I actually have no clue. Is this glitchless? Potentially. And, and also, 
we did a safe scam. So this game is ran with RT no load. And every loading screen is not counting toward the timer, right? Maybe we should run. Yep. So, <clears throat> I mean, in this case, when we go really far away from where we have to go, safe scam would save time significant amount of time anyway, but in even in A ending speed run where you have to just go forwards toward the desert exit, it still would save time because the loading time wouldn't count toward the, the final time. And yeah, the every transporter has the significant area where you can save through the menu, and we're gonna use that as well in the ending. A lot. Well, uh, there's a dialogue here where 9S says, it looks like we can't pass this, uh, but clearly 9S doesn't know how to jump. Because yep. we can easily go over this. And yes, we again have to go all the way backwards, kinda, to just activate the story trigger. So we can progress the story even further. And Dan's going to go over the triggers for a discovery cutscene right here instead of going into them because they didn't make the trigger very tall. What are those? Yep. Trigger is... Actually, this trigger is kind of wow. not this high. Weird. Not high at all. This way you can skip quite many things in this game. Ooh, that was a smooth clip. Oh, oh wow. Surprising. So now we're going into what's known as super risky coaster skip. <laughs> uh, super risky. Oh, yeah. because of the transporter? Oh gosh, yeah, I forgot it's even different in E. Alo, do you want to try explaining it so Dan can focus? Um, okay, so normally what you would do... Uh, I'm actually going to shut up for a sec. Clean. There you go. Okay, so normally uh, what you do is uh, what Dan just did. But instead of uh, going um, on the rails for a little bit and then to the side, you would normally just go through the rails. Um, but Dan went to the side so that he could avoid a dialogue uh, so that he can pick up this transporter over here. Uh, and we can do the save scum that he was uh, talking about earlier with 9S. And then we uh, go do normal ending stuff, which uh, we're going to go get the spear because the spear is pretty cool. Oh god, why are you doing that clip? <laughs> I don't know, doing I always scary do. way. I don't know, you you make it like very uncomfortably with all this clip, I feel like. At least when I tested it back in the days. When I was yeah. copying the Amaze run. <laughs> okay, so I actually like not messing up roller coaster is one of the best things you can do in a marathon. Yeah it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if you mess up this skip in any part of it, it's terribly awful to back up. Because you will need to go to take this spear without being teleported all the way back. That's first. And second, if you mess up the roller coaster, the backup also involving not picking up spear, and it's a little annoying. Okay, so there we do some... Meeting. I actually didn't equip the... I mean, I could do it later hell? since I didn't equip it, but whatever. Sticking to the muscle memory. Well, don't say anything about a in this like case... This. Oh my god, why did I dash right in, into her? Okay, nice. so that's another case when you have, like, uh, prescripted, like, boss phases. So after you deal a certain amount of damage, she goes back on the scene and hacks you, and that's the first hack actually in the game. The first and the only as 9S. Uh, sorry, as 2B. Gonna be more hacks as 9S, the hacker man. Damage, it'll affect our bodies as well. And there, one thing about I'm that actually... first... <laughs> uh, One thing about that first phase is that if you deal too much damage, the attack she does is random. So you wanna time it so that you don't do too much damage. Uh, so you get the same attack every time, because the same attack is almost the fastest. Yep. Oh my god. I don't even know how you made it over that one <laughs> hack. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I jumped so low. Oh. Uh, what? Oh what my god. That was lucky. Oh, what? God. How did neither of those hacks hit you? Okay. <laughs> that, that was, was lucky. Crazy. And lucky. So oh, Buvor comes back down to fight, and we immediately threshold her into her next phase. She's not really having a good time fighting us, um, and it's not she's not going to have a better time, because we're about to immediately kill her again. And then once she's dead, we're going to just explode. Not for yeah. damage, but... Well, yeah, for damage, but not for damage on her, for damage on us. Yep. There I'm also pick up the cheap, but not to use it. Oh, it's a wow, too. But Damn. to sell it. <laughs> so right there, uh, Dan clipped into a door as it was opening and used it to push him out of bounds and skip a bit of dialogue. Yeah, I'm glad the door clip worked because I had some issues recently with it. Well, relatively recently. So that's nice. And now we are doing the Pumpy movement. Fastest movement tag in the game, probably. Maybe there are actually faster movement tags that aren't used in speedrun that I don't know about, but... Yep. Spear dashing is like combining the spear combo attack into like... Never-ending combo. It makes you... Move fast. Combine spear and dashing. It doesn't actually use dashing at all. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, it's just. It's all attack animation being interrupted and being done again. Yep. So you got to do a light attack and then you SD and then you do heavy. I believe is the start. I just. It's just a muscle memory thing. You get so used to it, you never think about it. You're like, okay, cool. Spear dash. So yeah, there we it. took Transporter, and you must save there, as Rod mentions, because we're gonna do some nice that warp. So here Pascal gives us the quest to exchange the like one item on another from the Resistance Camp leader. We can get into the city ruins if we move that box. And the thing is that if you don't get the... Oh, that's a weird... That's so... Uh, okay. Okay. That w that terrified me when I was putting it in the rock. I'm very surprised yeah. that works. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I didn't expect it to be on a rock, to be honest, but okay. Uh, but the thing, like, the, the reason why we take the animal here, we actually bought the animal bait and animal thing that doesn't make animals scared from you, just for this moment. Uh, from the desert merchant. <clears throat> and the reason we do that, not to actually ride the animal and have a nice view from the back, but also to die faster. Yeah, because the animal the will kill you. Yeah, since we place the animal right where the oops, uh, right where the resistance camp is, and we don't have to rely on stupid enim uh, enemies that deal like even not enough damage to one shot you, unlike yeah. the animal. And Dan had to leave the animal just outside of the resistance camp, other because otherwise it would appear even further away if he rode it into the resistance camp more. Yep. So, another thing to mention probably is the dialogue skip coming next. So there, if you shoot the pod, at the right time, you actually hit some machine. I actually have no clue who you exactly hit. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> you just hit someone, and that interrupts the insanely long Pascal dialogue. Like, that dialogue starts as What's soon as you uh, finish talking with Anemone and exit the, the resistance camp. And because we died, that dialogue transfers to, like, when we respawn. So we have to cancel it ASAP. So yeah, there we're gonna take another transporter. We're actually gonna use it for so-called mom skip skip. I'm gonna make sure that moves isn't in my way before I lay there those 
machines. So yeah, we're gonna take this transporter to use it, actually both as 2B and as 9S. Like in the A ending you don't get this transporter because mom skip is faster than taking it and warping. But because 9S don't have enough uh, aerial movement yeah, no. possibilities, <laughs> mom skip isn't viable as 9S, so... Yeah, he's got short legs. Yep. So it's gonna be much faster to do it uh, in B ending than in A. Be on the roof of that up ahead. It'll be dangerous. We have the hope hardest clip in the game coming up. Oh yeah, I hope I don't fail it. <laughs> I mean, I don't really care when I fail it as 2B, but I just hope I don't fail it as 9S, because 9S high jump can be annoying. Yeah, the high jump as 9S is so much harder than the one as 2B. Yep. Oops. So yeah, there we climb... Uh, very, very, very long ladder. I'm curious, like, who actually decided that putting a ladder in elevator shaft like that is a great idea, but... Yep, I didn't get it. So, but since we're playing as 2B, we just do some fancy Easy backup, nice. Displaying data on central wiring hub. It's, like, very simple. I guess we can just, like, describe the double lift. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. So you might have noticed that Dan did something that normally seems impossible. Um, he lifted twice. So a lift is when you jump and then immediately do a heavy after. Uh, you can delay it a bit. But Dan did two in a row. So to do that, he had to, in the process of his first lift, he wanted 2B's feet to touch ground somehow. So he went up against the slope and did a lift. Her feet touched the ground and then he could do another lift immediately after to get bonus height. He's just gonna casually beat city angles really fast because you can just buff yeah, there, him in his armpit. There is a there is a convenient pla place where all your missiles will hit him like very immediately. So you and also like uh, when you're in a shoot 'em up section like that, every pod has independent pod program cooldown. So you can actually use like pod programs back to back very conveniently. Hey, Alor, yeah. now it's you want to describe this ideas. thing you've discovered? Uh, absolutely. Hope I don't fail it. <laughs> nah, you'll be fine. So, um, first off, before we even start the trick, uh, we have to go down and get this trigger right here. Uh, cause, uh, for one, because it's a story trigger and we literally need it. Uh, but for two, it gives us Skype glitch. Which, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But basically, the gist of it is, uh, calls are faster because there's not the ring in, uh, at the beginning and the end of the call. Um, but right here, Dan is not going to the, the cave. Where is he going? Oh, he's going up to the, the stamp guy right here. Gonna have a friendly chat with him. Oh, just taunting him. Okay, I see how it is. Okay. And then he's gonna fucking murder him. <laughs> And, uh, he has this dialogue here. So, if you talk to that guy specifically, uh, there's a few enemies in the game that let you kill them and talk to them at the same time. Uh, and that will actually leave the dialogue up on the screen, and you'll have full control like this. Uh, this is called dialogue storage, um, hence storing the dialogue. Uh, but what you can see here is, uh, we went into the cutscene, and there's, uh, this little stamp card prompt right here. And you can um, actually bring the dialogue through the cutscene, hence the extended dialogue storage. And that is very useful for this fight right here because it is dialogue based. Yep, so, it's exactly you know. fake fights that we. Welcome. It's like fully based on dialogue length. <clears throat> And as we like use it a couple times already, we just like overlapping one dialogue with another. And by that, it annihilates both, which is uh, very convenient. Yep, it's just it's the only downside. The only downside this dialogue has is that you can skip the cutscene. Like when the stamp card thing is on the screen, you can Back skip the cutscene. But it saves so much time to skip the fight yeah, yeah. that watching the full cutscene without skipping is still significantly faster. Yeah. 
it saves a ton of time. And it's it's skipping the dialogue the exact same way we do when we talk to 9S and walk into a trigger. We just have we just can't do that here because of the cutscenes. So we had to store the dialogue. Now we get the access to fast traveling. And we have to embrace the slowest menu delay in the world. Totally not just so. Dan just had to think about where to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually like super awful. Like it's it's terrible. <clears throat> but yeah, like there I also took a ladder. Not because I wanted to climb up, but because that way... I mean, you can actually don't take the ladder. For example, as 9S, you do that. Because 9S uh, ladder animation is scuffed. But you get the jackass dialogue activated that way automatically because there is like a sphere around the ladder that makes her talk to you to introduce the transporter fast traveling. But yeah, now I also did like another dialogue overlap uh, to be able to use the transporter a little bit faster. So yeah, now we bless RNG because we have our first money check. We talk with the Pascal that we have to go into the forest. And now we do the menuing. And bless RNG. Bless RNG. Okay, we sell machine cores, we skill, uh, sell skill gauge, everything below minimap. Ooh, yes, we've got enough money nice. for sure. Crits. I can already tell Just you Just getting by crits. Oh, wow. Yeah, we even have for VC3 check, which is rare. And we didn't get it. Yeah, we didn't get the, the third element. Yeah, oh, cable. Man. So no VC3 in A ending, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, the money are amazing. It's Big very sad. rare when you don't get VC3 in B ending, but it still happens, but it's like super rare. Usually you don't get VC3 in B ending only if you have to sell like the pieces of that you need for an upgrade in A ending. So why VC3 is actually important? It's not only the damage you deal, because it increases the damage you deal, obviously, and it increases the attack speed that might be... Like, it's actually very useful in A to fight, because it, like, you have the same amount of iframes during the animation, I bet, like, on the... Well, kind of less, because animation is faster, probably, but you, like, you have a lot of iframes uh, doing the heavy attacks, but what is most important about having VC3 is actually moving faster with spear dashing because that attack speed buff makes spear dashing proceed faster as well not only make you attack faster There we killed four enemies. Uh, I use slow mo like normally in A ending, for example. At this point, you already have your resilience chip Looks like the forest uh, is just ahead. installed, so you don't get staggered while you're full health, and you can just wait. Like you, you, you can make them gather better to share damage from the same damage glitch, but without resilience, I will get staggered by any hit, and that's why A2 fight is very annoying in this run. Like, very. It can, it can go, like, super badly. Because, like, specifically because A2 is just attacking you very fast. Yeah, I always equip resilience, even when I'm doing E. That fight's super annoying if you don't have it. Yeah, it's like, it's it doesn't take too long to do it. It's just, it's, it's annoying. But with VC3, it's actually not as bad. With VC2, it's significantly, like, it, it's noticeably more annoying. Okay, I, I think Ali Arc should close his eyes because I'm doing, like, the peachiest of peachiest, like, uh, rainbow rod version man this is rainbow road which oh. might seem weird until you realize that our old version of doing this is called mario kart and by old i mean like super old 
like original way. Rainbow I actually, I, don't, I think I actually have Mario Kart in my current PB or like <laughs> one of my recent PBs because I failed Rainbow Road. Oh man, yeah, you just do a long jump there instead of doing a, a void out, and then yeah, once we're up is... by the castle, we go out of bounds and just skip the castle. Yeah, that's a massive skip, actually. Like, it's, it's it, yeah, this that's place one is of huge. <laughs> That's one of the skips that made me speedrun the game. Like, I've watched the speedrun. Like, this skip was found, like, super early after release. Like, very early. And when I saw it, I was, like, pretty impressed. Whoa, dude, that was, like, frame perfect. Whoa. Oh, so my God. Late. It was so late. So, yeah, there you pod launch before the That's game takes an control from you, oh, and that way you reach the, the cutscene trigger significantly faster. Annihilation Annihilation? Okay, so the Let's go, awful A2 so fight comes. No. Oh no, that's unfortunate. Is your enemy. She ran away. But she's... She deserted us. She's destroyed multiple pursuit androids. Mm, I mean, now this is not the absolutely worst fight, but that was a bad fight. I also, Let's like, dropped some team. damage glitches. And instead of pursuing A2, we just jump over the... another trigger. Yeah, that trigger that Dan jumped over is a trigger that makes 2B walk the other way, and she yeah. goes... We have to follow her or something like that. But we just and, don't have to. And this way we can just like transport with transporter. That's actually the reason why we kill the enemies in front of it. Just to to use it right away. And it's uh, relatively like precise movements for transporter to not be blocked by enemies. It, I actually sometimes can't tell why they block me, like block the transporter, even with the perfect movement, faster. but I think it's like a bit of RNG. I see. How they like spawn Let's stay sharp in that area. To the resistance camp. We should run a so Dan picked up a skill there. salve. Yeah, you pick up the skill salve uh, because I'm gonna do the ranged attack up uh, ground segments. I think actually Alaric is the one who came up with this. Routing idea. Um, I completely forgot about it, but then I recalled it. And is I it think the skill self for or Goliath core one? Flyer. Oh, Goliath Flyer. Flyer. Okay, Flyer. Yeah, I. Okay, yeah, because Ame came up with the one for core one, and I did the one for Flyer. I'm sorry. Though I suppose such intense curiosity can be. Okay, so there is important dialogue skip, like. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll lose another minute, Thanks and we lost like many Still minutes already in this run. Okay, so there we have Emil. This Emil is 100% consistent, and what he sells is 100% consistent. So their important part is to buy Ton plus 3, because I'm going to use it. Well, we actually have no both, like circuit and key. That is like super rare. And... Um, I'm going to use both Ton plus 3 and Ton plus 6. The only place where I'm going to use Ton plus 3 is going to be Koroshi fights at the very, very end, just because that was his very annoying with Ton plus 6. Like, incredibly annoying. But the rest of the run, we're going to use Ton plus 6. That is 100% RNG to get. And that's the pain. That's like the... the the most RNG part of the run, and you are going to witness it. So after we talked with Emil for the first time, all right? Now he will, like he spawns at multiple spots across the city ruins. And we need him to spawn at the very specific one. And on top of that, there is like a 50% chance that he is going to sell the wrong stuff. And to recycle the RNG, we want to void out. And actually, we got a very fast Emil. And now it's 50 50 chance. And we've got the wrong shop. Classic. So now we go to another place where you can go out of bounds. I'm not very good at this clip. 
Oh yeah, this one's a pain. It's weird, yeah. And now we wait out from here. This also shows off how easy it is to just get out of bounds whenever we need to. It's not a question of if, it's a question of where. Yeah, for sure, but this is like a very annoying part of the run. Okay, we were at second try. So nice. we buy weapon attack nice. ups, range attack ups, plus six, and we buy taunt plus six. And now we also gonna buy um, extra space so we can fit our taunt plus six with resilience chip in one chipset. No, that's not what I... Heck. That wasn't what I wanted to press, but fine. Okay, now we do some menuing. So we equip Resilience, we equip Don plus 6 in first chipsets, and then we equip... No. No, what am I doing? And then we equip Resilience chip and range attack up plus 6. And since I equipped the wrong chipset initially by misclick, I have to change it back to Don plus 6. Oh, so we're gonna use this range attack up plus six just for the grunt segment, and that's it. We're not gonna switch to it ever again during the run. We're gonna buy all the space possible to fit our chips in the ending. And uh, starting from there, we only gonna change the taunt plus six chip to taunt plus three during Koroshi fights, and that's it. Let's and now you will so probably be able to see like the power of Oof. the power of Androids don't need to Don plus six because all the enemies are gonna die like super quickly. Yeah, Don plus six is insanely strong, but on the flip side, it means you take significantly more damage. But it's worth it. Just don't get hit. Yeah, that's a terrible combat, but that's fine. So there we're gonna do another dialogue overlap. So we, since we did some finicky out of bounds to trigger the cutscene, and that was again like about um, taking the necessary triggers to proceed the story. We actually haven't went through one of the dialogues and if we go in that place where dialogue's supposed to start, it overlaps with the other dialogue that started already and they annihilate nicely so you can imagine like dialogues in this game as as like mother and auntie mother or whatever it's called in english actually it just annihilates each other Can and yeah we got it oh i actually didn't equip the range attack up chip so uh, all the preparations uh -huh. we did were absolutely useless because i forgot to switch uh, chip sets but that's fine Still gonna be i mean actually good. that's not really fine but that's fine <laughs> it's not fine but it's fine yeah we just we just spend time doing comp menuing like uh yeah, that, i thought that was a relaxing menu I mean, that's pretty classic to forget, like, I'm still not 100% used to it, but in the runs at least... Uh, usually in the runs I forget to switch back from that uh, cheap set, Attention, this is Carrier Blue Ridge but not two. to equip it, but yeah. From any friendly units in range. Describing stuff distracts too much, Our chip is sometimes, but luckily it's like, it's, it's like very minor. It mostly is valuable that you get less annoyed by core one rng <clears throat> and you are also having much comfier goliath flyer overall so yeah that's it and yeah this is like uh like i don't know 15 minutes long out of scroller sections with like Switching to fully RNG uh, boss fights, if you can call it that way. So yeah, Grana is absolutely the best part of the any near speedrun. Any oh, speedrunner sure. can tell you that. I'm 
picking up a large scale enemy inbound. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing like an RNG auto scroller in the middle of your run. It's 11 yep, minutes long. That is. It's just that's just it. That's like that's peak. So you're gonna buff up, use pod programs, and hopefully obliterate Goliath fire. I don't know why they still solve, but why not? I guess. One fact: you can actually light attack the flyer if you aim in a very oh. specific direction. So you aim um, to the left and slightly up, and you're able to light attack the flyer because this, I believe it's the side of your hitbox that hits um, uh, the flyer. Is it actually saving a lot of time? Yeah, it does. It's pretty cool. it, it saves. It lets you. It, it makes flyer consistent. Like, you can consistently get the kill, or at least. Oh, very consistently. I see. So uh, I guess with the like no range attack up three, in A it was level twelve. You can just uh, do the second, uh, second pod program earlier as well. Yep. Or you, yeah, I guess that's what it is. I need to check it out. I know there is like a Percy clip that I was like super lazy to practice. It's RNG based. Like you can clip through Goliath flyer, but it's. It's and like all your missiles will hit him because you are like inside him. Yeah, but, but it, you can also have all your missiles not hit him because oh, you're yeah. inside him. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds amazing. That part I never. Um, yeah. Got. Yeah, that's why we do the light attacks. <laughs> yeah, we'll need to check out the light attacks. Like seriously, it's super easy. Or I guess it, it literally I, is what I told you. Because you anyway use like range attack up plus six and you just use to put programs back to back. But yeah, I will need to check it out anyway. I mean, there are quite many things like in this game. There are so many small things that are getting being discovered by other people that I often like just don't catch up because I'm too boomer. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of zoomer things. Too many. The hardest part about Grun as a new player is learning where all the cutscene skips are. Because yeah, there's a probably. lot of things in here you can skip, and there's a lot of things in here you can't skip. And yeah. they don't really look any different. So yeah, in this part, it doesn't matter how fast I'm killing the enemies. It like, doesn't matter at all. The most it gives me is that 9S doesn't steal my experience. I actually have to mention that I personally never start with passive 9S in E-Ending because you arrive on uh, Spear late because you have to take the transporter so I just have long range 9S for the, for the whole run and it doesn't really hurt you unless you fuck up in Adam Pit because yeah. if you don't fuck up it like never hurts you really. Yeah, typically in A, you start on passive just so that Dynas doesn't mess with you in Adam. And because we have some free time, just talk to him and switch him to long range during Spear, but it's way tighter in E. Does that make sense? So here are the yeah, cores. This is the first RNG part, and the most RNG part actually, of the cores fights. Because there you can use the bot program to kill one of the nice. cores on the second wave. So Dan made it look very not RNG, but those cores can just spin so that you can't hit them. If they yeah, they like can like you. do the full cycle and then like vulnerable cores will just stay in, a, in like you, you, you can kill like both sides cores and it will like skip the cycle fully and the invulnerable cores will keep invulnerable. Yeah. It's, it's really like funny to watch. It's really mm, dumb. It's 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 very annoying and stupid. And there is certain like non RNG part of it. Like if you kill the last core, like after core already started moving, there is a higher chance that they will do like the full spin. In my opinion, like from my experience. But even if you like kill them fast enough, it's just like whatever. It's, like whatever game decides to give you. You have no control over it, like absolutely, so you can make no mistakes, so yeah, 10 plus minutes long segment with completely RNG-ish 
fights is what you are looking for as a speedrunner, of course. And especially like 50 minutes in a run or something. This thing's armor is too thick. We need more yeah, because so there... we're close to the end of A. Let's good. For a more direct uh, we have to like hit right. Right. Gron in his stupid mouth. And, stupid and mouth. actually like fast people doing it a little differently from what I do. Because I just spam. I know you can time it by the 9S lines, and it saves a little bit of time, but I'm just old man that used to spam. So I or one spam. go burr. But yeah, like it's. Uh, you actually can annoyingly lose time there, but as soon as you hit your first projectile, uh, the rest of them will hit if you just spam, especially if you slow more. There was some issue that I had like without far, like I used to speed around this far, then I switched to no far and suddenly I was starting like with the spam without slow-mo, I was getting like a very weird miss when it's like literally inside his mouth but it misses. Oops. So then I started slow-moing but yeah I just slow-mo now all the time. And there is like the famous cutscene that is unskippable as 2B and skippable as 9S. Like, the... Very, very nice consistency across different routes. Makes a lot of sense. And we just continue with killing all the waves and um, it's gonna be two more core fights. Those will be easier because the main core that we'll have to kill will require only one bot program and that means, like because I fucked up and I didn't equip French attack up plus 6, I actually will use bot program on my first wave, like on the first cycle on core, to make sure I kill both cores uh, during it. So yeah, hopefully... Hopefully we don't get unlucky much. So yeah, use spot program, make sure that you kill the four. So why the first cycle is scarier? Actually, because the attack they use or maybe it's just from my experience, but I think like the first cycle attack is just shorter. Like that's literally oh, yeah, like the is. second attack they do is much, much longer, significantly longer. So um, yeah, that's why you want to use your fourth program on the first wave, uh, first cycle. There's actually variance on how long the first attack is. Sometimes it can be really short and you're just screwed. And sometimes right. it can be much longer. <laughs> I I know that on core 1, it's like with level 14, like I haven't been able to ever get the consistent like destroying both cores before they start moving, if you get like the instant cycle, because game doesn't put you in a position to damage the first core as soon as it stops. Like it stops before game places you in a place where you have to like be for the fights, you are still like moving from the auto scroller part. And because of that, first bits of your pot fire just whiff, but the cycle already like started, and that's like super annoying. I don't agree. And because you can you can use you you can't use your first pot program on that cycle, because the the main core requires both. You are just screwed, and you have to like blast RNG as hard as you can if that happens. Yeah, we're on the last core here. Fun fact, I've lost 40 seconds on these cores before. On one core, actually. <laughs> nice. So, we see, like, uh, core is, like, doing the full cycle, like, oh, full man. spin, and getting in an Oh, two spins. Let's go. Two spins. You, you jinxed it. Plastic. Yeah. Three spins. You actually oh, jinxed baby. it. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh, getting some deja vu right here. Four. No oh. way. Rune's really giving it to you today. Okay, no five. Oh. Actually, do one with the range buff. That was an impressive yeah. number. Let's spend. go. You actually you jinxed it, Aloy, with your 40 seconds time loss story. 
Hey, you didn't lose 40 seconds. You just well, lost. Well, yeah, sure. I haven't lost almost 40. 40. I, lost, <laughs> I, I lost like, no, I got like four cycles. So that's like, yeah, almost 40. I mean, I had to rebuff. So it, it was actually probably around 40. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's like super mega rare. So there it's like a tricky part. Well, it's not a tricky part. You just do the void out. But the, in E ending, like I know that, for example, like you can do the out of bounds movement just like just like to be as 9s but i prefer taking the transporter for the warp and if you mess up the void out you get the dialogue and you can take the transporters then you just must switch to then you just must switch to backup and skip this transporter and do the movement as 9s in the ending because this uh, transporter like all the transporters we pick up across a ending will be preserved for like for the rest of the game so that's gonna be nice oops and then we're gonna do some out of bounds that i use like keyboard for one of two places where i use keyboard like this and EVS. And yeah, we just like instead of going all the way down through the through the hole and through the corridors, we just launch straight from the sewers. Actually, it doesn't save as much time as it looks like. It looks cool though. But yeah, because we are taking transporter, we could do the warp, but I believe because of Emil revisiting you activate some some quest that blocks the transporter that you could you can warp to in a ending or something so yeah there is going to be another dialogue skip in adam fights this is absolutely massive bonus have a keen interest in humanity uh this is man religion i'm actually like holding my analog stick super badly apparently because yeah i just got the first hit clip okay i'm actually gonna lose time there and i'm not gonna do the bot pad because I, when i'm slow i'm just uh, like it's pointless to do. so adam here talks for forever like actually certifiably forever but if we clip out of bounds and go to this elevator we can skip him mansplaining to us about whatever he's trying to talk about so we're just going to walk into the elevator but not so, ride it yeah like optimally right now i should have been already like skipping the dialogue but because i messed up i actually have to do it a little later which is a shame like i just played very badly with my analog stick like my camera was sort of okay but my angle for the clip was far off yeah that one's really precise it's not like super mega precise Let because you can clip death. with like entirely two different angles with first and third cli uh, hit. Oh, I got the worst attack. Yeah. I but am. because of Ton plus six, I we don't care. To find nine S. Ah, nine uh, uh. S. <laughs> he tried to mess me up. So they, yeah, that's another phase based like uh, boss fight where you have to wait for him to stop to talk. And only then, like, start attacking him again. Oh, no, he went for the bad attack again. Oh, my God, he just likes doing he that. Really... That attack, like, can just never show up. Or it'll happen three times like that. Yeah, like, it's it's annoying. He becomes just invulnerable for the time, and... Bang, you lose time. Okay, so there is another very important dialogue skip there. That saves, and like, 40 one... seconds. And the other one that is much less important you like to skip a short uh what dialogue line that Animals doesn't allow you to interrupt with the merchants oh, devil and popola yeah that that first dialogue skip saves a hilarious amount of time for how short that yeah. skip is it happens instantly but it saves so much time because there's a huge voice line that plays there and you have to open the mail in transporter and you cannot interact with transporter because of the dialogue that happens at that time yeah it's like super annoying and now we are like on the 
contacted by some machines that basically we shouldn't really go as fast as possible there no kidding but like the fastest movement is not much faster than the length of the dialogue line here the display because we have to wait for the current dialogue line to finish to continue the storyline Please. Well, so it's just cool. Yep. I actually have no clue how you do this, uh, this like uh, weird dash lock attack in time. Yeah. Like I always uh, get uh, locked on on Pascal and I roll backwards. <laughs> oh, do you hold forward when you do the roll? Oh, you have you have to not. Hold you have to hold forward. Oh, you have to hold forward. I'm not sure what I was doing, but I just remember that both times I tried it, I rolled like backwards because Pascal spawns there and that's it. Yeah, the roll okay. isn't based on lock on. It's based on the direction you go. Mm, I see, and fun I see. fact, the uh, the direction the weapon go is the direction your camera is facing. Mm. That's why it's like disconnected from from like the the actual movie yeah. so there we have to wait for this guy to actually press the button on the elevator unfortunately to be isn't skilled enough to press buttons yeah we can't skip this out of everything we skip we can't skip this we yeah, have to we wait. Just wait and there is gonna be another two dialogue skips it's actually a dumb one like this like, this dialogue skip makes your elevator, like, reach factory faster. <laughs> and it's pretty dumb. I'm actually not sure how it works, like, like why it works like that. Same zigzagging. <laughs> I mean, as long as you don't hit, like, the enemies here. Because, like, for some reason, if you hit enemies during spear dashing there, Pascal just disappears. And if you hit the enemy, like, very close to the trigger, he will just not spawn fast enough for the dialogue skip. It's kind of dumb. And there we're gonna do some... Like, Factory is generally one of the most, like, skipped areas. It's, like, very vertical, which gives you a lot of possibilities for cool stuff. Let's hope I will get... First Legendary. void out there? Are you going Legendary for it? Hmm? Just Let's check it out. No, I didn't get the clip. Sad. So that mm -hmm. first void out was to despawn the enemies and that counts as killing them, basically. So that we move on to the next part. Uh, and then Dan went for a clip there to try to stay on top of this elevator, but that one's pretty hard to get. And he didn't get it and he only got one shot. So here, you're expected to progress through factory more, um, but we don't want to. So we're going to reset the elevator by voiding out again and then riding the elevator back up. Because right now we're really low and we want to use, we want to be high up so that we can travel around factory easier out of bounds. But we needed to come down here anyway to get a trigger. So yep. from up here, we're going to clip out and then we're going to plunge at another trigger, but we don't want to actually end up low in the factory again so dan's gonna try to trigger a void out right as he hits the trigger okay the door's open. nice you got Keep it moving. all right and boom we are at the end nice. of the factory yeah so then after he got that trigger he just went and plunged straight to where he wanted to go it's clean. Secured. Luckily, there is only one trigger. Yep. Ooh, that was very weird. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness! So this is the whole I, I, for, I, for some here. reason, I for some reason like did a light attack before second jump, and that was like super weird. So yeah, that's basically what I wanted to do for the first elevator as well. And the thing about it is that, like, elevator moves you up even if you are outside of the elevator, which is very convenient. Like, it moves you not only up, but 
whenever elevator goes, it like transfers you the same direction and the same distance. Physical defense shield detected. Analysis. This is Soshi. Yeah, that's a Soshi, and we actually doing like the lazy stuff. We are just we we just got stuck in like uh, weird. Like I don't know how to even call this place. Technically, like the yeah, the infinite fall spot. Yeah, the infinite fall spot that will actually bring us back on the ground at some points. But we're just waiting for the trigger when enemy becomes vulnerable back. And then we're just gonna make him die very fast. The knife frame the hit and I will also be GG immediately. So I will just slow more for the Like normally if you I actually didn't have to heal because I I would level up. I forgot to attack well anyway i'm glad i healed because otherwise i would be dead um so the thing is that uh, you have to still do one lethal like any like any damage hits there uh so the thing is normally you don't even need to slow-mo for this fight because of how much damage you deal but there because i was a bit scuffed on my damage glitching i had to slow-mo throughout the the fights to get like the zero cycle Oh, is this on and there, I'm going to flex the 101, 101 minimap on nice. everyone. Oh yeah, this is 101, it's E, duh. Yeah, in 1.02, the current amazing. patch, oh no. Uh, you can't, this is harder because you can't see the minimap, which we use to line up. Um, this is called Shabu Skip. And it involves just leaving the factory as fast as you can. It's very similar to what you do in Prologue, it's the same set out of bounds. You just start in a different place. That was very was, soft movement, but it made I it. thought it was it was art. It's called Shabu Skip because it skips Shabu explaining something, and he discovered it. Nice. And yeah, now we have like the final bit of a ending left, which is basically like a boss rush. At this point, we're gonna fight like a, a lot of enemies and bosses back to back. And that's going to be the resistance camp. What about you? Oh, I'll probably wander back to the village. I have plenty on my plate there. I see. We're going to flex the spear dashing with slow mo. Yeah, Dan doing the spear dash slow mo here to prevent enemies from spawning. I mean, Say this I enemies see. wave is like very annoying to yeah. prevent from spawning. Like, they. You don't really prevent them from spawning. You usually pray that they spawn like in a good <laughs> place that you can get around them. Why are their numbers increasing like this? Go around one of the waves at least without. System. So uh, like the the whole camera movement thing here and slow mowing is because the game picks up automatically like enemies that you attack with auto lock on function. And since we are moving with attacking, it will direct our move like toward the enemies, which is not what we are looking for with the movement here. So there, it's like one of the places where VC3 actually saves time even with stone plus six, just because of attack speed. It's not like very significant, but well, I'm actually. Oh my god, you... Oh no! Oh, I was like, was oh no, he's unlucky. at the perfect health for dying, and then you died. That's That was very unlucky. That was like super so, very unlucky. There's normally a mechanism to prevent you from getting one shot. Um, if you're at full health and you take like a hit that would have killed you, it will keep you alive. But if you're not at full health, it won't do that to you, and you won't have your one shot protection. It's not so, like even that uh, slow mo was the reason why I died. It was just unlucky that that one guy that yeah spawned in behind was in the like attack perfectly where I stood. Yeah, it really was. So he got hit by the shockwave blast, okay, which put him I really low, and then he got one shot. On because I died and I have to pick them up first. So we are dealing like you can see like the damage difference. 
between like no chips and chips. Okay, we're gonna retrieve our body. So whenever you die, you lose like all the all the chips. They fall on the grounds. So it's similar to like how you lose souls in Dark Souls. Why? What? Why I got? Oh, Anemona actually spawns. Like she stays where the where the enemies are. Like I've never I, seen. I've never seen that. Yeah. Oh, like really actually. Weird. Yeah, we've got a good attack, actually. So we will do the core one SD. And we will get no knockdown animation. So this boss is RNG a little bit. I mean, not a little bit. Like, not only his attacks take, like, different amount of time, but also... has a stupid knockdown animation that is very stupid. And there you do like SD, and the thing is that if you get, like there are two attacks that he can do, that uh, uh, Roshi can do, not Roshi, sorry, uh, Bokushi can do, that will make you run out of buffs. They're still coming. And like rebuffing, if you if you have to rebuff, it's already like not worth going for SD kinda. Yeah, that's an E ending strat, the SD there, and the A you don't have enough Yeah, damage. like, yeah, only taunt plus 6, like, gives you enough damage to one-shot the core with SD, so you have to, like, actually, as 9S, it's much easier. I figured out, like, how to do it properly in A ending, not so recently, but you actually have to stay further right, because if you stay where to be initially stays on the left, it's not consistent, it's not killing the core. You just deal, like, no damage. For some reason. Okay, this is like one of the comfy places because there are like no one shots in this area. Okay, in this core you want to kill like before the core is actually falling on the on the ground, which you can do by like dealing too much damage to the core before it triggers like the the tiger animation. Which saves a lot of time, actually. And also there, I talked with 9S again to get the overlap dialogue annihilating, and that way I don't have to wait for the dialogue line with Pascal waiting for the Eve to come down. Everything must die. And there we have some... Each combat to save more medium recoveries. And there we have a phase 2 skip. That's actually a very weird skip. So what Eve is doing, he's like becoming invulnerable, sort of, and like rehealing himself. But if you not, if you don't let him to stop healing back before dialogue line ends, he is like considered defeated in second phase. It like never switches to phase two fully. So that's like pretty nice. Okay, so there we have... We wait for Eve to attack and if he doesn't do like a super bad attack, we just make him taunted and self-destruct immediately. And Eve doesn't one-shot us in... In A ending there so we can take hits and also unlike in B ending you have to stay actually save medium recoveries by entering nice. the menu here with iframes just for safety but I guess it wasn't worth it because I stopped like shooting so the uh, S2B you want to stay as close to if to pot is as possible just because you have to be like right next to him when he's dead Unlike with 9S when cutscene starts whenever you are on the field, which is like very, actually like very convenient. Because in B ending you get one shorted with Stone Plus 6. And that's so the game, that was, it's over. Yeah, that's the game, it's over. <laughs> GG. Yeah, poggers. Sub 130. I can't believe it. Uh, is it sub 130 though?
Uh, it was 131 sure. RTA. I mean, so uh, what is so. the RTA? I mean, barely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, consider considering that we watched cutscenes, enjoyed yeah. uh, time at Gran with like 40 seconds time loss. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So we have to save. This is like very important. <laughs> Because if you don't save, well, uh, good luck. Pre reset. <laughs> yeah. And we start the B ending. And B ending is the same events as A ending, but from the 9S perspective. Now, and first thing we do before we start, we utilize the voice changer um, setting that we've got by completing A ending. And as you could notice from what we described, in this game, many things are based on like dialogue lengths and with the and yes this is not a 9s uh, actual gameplay don't worry um so <clears throat> many things are based on dialogue lengths and voice changer at certain like option speeds up the dialogues like a lot like very a lot. I think voice changers saves like I don't, I don't know how many minutes, but it saves minutes in this run, for sure. And there we actually have to get the bucket of like some random like I don't know oil for our brother, friend. I mean not friend, brother, actual brother. But instead of actually carefully like bringing it to him, we're just gonna like um, just put it all on his face right away because like part of the game yeah absolutely best part of the game so we just jump in a range of cutscene and then it activates cutscene because game still thinks that we're carrying the bucket carefully so yeah there I will also it's like a very weird optimization but you can move while falling there and that way you can fall right where the Yorha flyer is and you just get inside during the the dialogue section and we get into 9s prologue and 9s prologue is just one big schmuck like very big shmup. And unlike Gran, it's actually like like actual shoot em up section. And you have to sort of kill enemies as fast as possible. We luckily have enough medium recoveries here. Like usually uh, sometimes after A ending you can have like very little left. And that can be like super annoying because if you die in this section, you lose a lot of time. And by a lot of time, I mean a lot. It usually puts you at the start of like the is now of, of like a One section, and it takes like minutes to complete them. It's not in the like a ending prologue where it like kicks you to the main menu entirely, but. Or maybe there are moments where it doesn't kick you to the main menu entirely. I'm not actually sure. Is it like game over everywhere in A ending? But I think it is. Uh, in A ending, it always uh, gives you game an over, W yeah. in prologue. Okay, so we utilize like bot programs as much as we can in those waves just to like wipe enemies easier and more consistently. And we hack those like towers like I don't know how to call it but you have to hack all four and after that you get into the next shoot them up sections this is like a pretty chill part of uh, the ending prologue I actually don't find it boring or anything I actually the ending, like shmup actually in, uh, in this shmup I mean in any shmup you can have enemy levitating in invulnerable spots I'm not sure what exactly causes it. It's usually happening when enemy spawns right above you and game for some reason decides to keep the enemy like in the invulnerable spot. That way it can lose you like a lot of time. You have to actually hack that enemy, that flyer. And I think that's the fastest like consistent way to deal with it. But it's like super rare. So hopefully it doesn't happen. And yeah, it didn't happen actually. 
Killing these flyers can be a little bit annoying because the wall can uh, absorb some missiles, but if you like make sure that you press the pod program when both of the like spinner edges are not in walls, not inside the walls, it always is fine. So yeah, we're done with this part of the shmup. With hacking, now we're back to like regular shmup. Well, regular 2D kind of shmup. First one is very short here, it's right before we reunite. Well, not reunite, we actually meet with uh, to be for the first time. However, there is only one unit remaining. It's pretty fast one. The enemy's defensive weapon is making things more difficult than we estimated. This shmup is good, okay. Especially the part that Dan just did. That part's super fun to do, actually. I don't know. At this point, I just like... I'm so used to it that... I'm not sure how fun it is. The good part about it that unlike Grun, it actually like matters what you do there. Like you can lose time, you can die if you have not enough medium recoveries. So this part kind of requires you to play decently. And yeah, now we're going through the longer parts. So just wipe like all the enemies as fast as possible and even though I'm not actually doing as fast as possible because I'm not playing very well right now, but fast enough. Ash, uh, don't say that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. I've never actually seen this done any faster and this is kind of amazing. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable speed. Old log. I'm gonna finish with the quad program. And I actually missed. <laughs> I, I don't think I ever missed with Classic. quad program. I, I guess I mostly like mistime it when I do miss it rarely, but yeah, that's uh, It's all the showcase, guys. It's all for you. All the never happened before moments. Like this shmup is this shmup part can be like annoying because the way how camera moves during it moves like enemies spawn points a little bit on the screen. So they become vulnerable in a bit different places over time and it's like it's weird. And the next part of the shmup have like very weird like angles for how you aim your pot fire. Also, probably because of how camera is spinning during it. But yeah, we're almost done. So there are two last waves. Yay, poggers. And now we are gonna go and fight angles well fight hack since we are a hacker man we are gonna hack and suffer this one so angles hacks are four hacks three simple ones and one not as simple one i don't know how else to describe it So simple hacks are just when there is a single core to deal with and it's like super chill. The more complicated hacks can be annoying because the like it's full RNG, right? And the more complicated hacks they can differ from like really nice ones to very annoying ones where you have to wait for all the enemies to spawn before you can even get like the main core vulnerable and stuff. Or just the places where you have to like do a lot of movements across the arena. Like this is the perfect one. Actually, I don't think there is a better hack than this one. It's like an easy peasy one. Yeah, they can be like much worse. And 
and there we get uh, punched by Angle's heart, but we don't see it, and we have to recover our uh, to like reboot our system from the menu. Nice, I got the Discord uh, message because I don't have a. Oh, you actually don't hear it on st on stream at least. That's nice. Oh, nice. So I'm getting annoyed by other people only because of a. Uh, only, only for for myself. Okay, so there we do attack up, a range attack up, and we do a lot of taunting. Like this whole segment is just taunting and locking on in the right time. Yeah, I tried doing this at one point without taunt or a range attack up, and I was like, oh, wow, this is way harder without those two things. It's just longer. Yep. Okay, then there we have to do three hacks. And after all three of hacks, we have a cutscene playing. It takes some time. I told you to shut up. And you can't just say that to people in Discord. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Heels good luck, man. So we continue the hacking and locking on. And they just melt, they're just butter. Yeah, with some plus six, they're dying like super fast. Like the most annoying part about it isn't even taunting, it's locking on at the right timing, like right when the enemy you just killed died. Yeah, taunting is pretty straightforward. You have two button taunting, right? Yeah, I have two button taunting, of course. So for a lot of people, the default bind for flashlights left stick in, but if you have two, uh, flashlight binds. You can actually mash both of them and you taunt significantly faster. Yeah, like I have fully customized like uh, controls. Like I use pretty much Canaris's controls. Like very slightly changed one. I had to change my controls Morning. when spear dashing became a thing. So that was a little bit painful because <laughs> I couldn't spear dash like uh, and move my camera without double claw, and I actually did speed run for quite a bit, spear dashing without moving camera at all. So that was quite an uh, impressive uh, experience. I mean, I actually was saving time still with it, so I got used to it. Like when you know where you have to spear dash, it's just not as bad. Yeah. But yeah, it's ob it's obviously not the way how optimally you should like approach it. So okay, now we have the 9S gameplay for the first time. 9S have no any fancy speed tech, unlike 2D. All we're just gonna do is dash chaining. And 9S has only light attacks, and because of that, he has significantly less amount of combat variety and movement variety and all of that, right? So, yeah. Specifically, it hurts for high jumps. Like, high jumps is the main issue as playing as 9S. Yeah, short leg, Actually, man. but the lucky thing is that <laughs> just like 2B has da damage glitch, 9S also has damage glitch. Which is insane, because it's on light attacks, he has a damage glitch. It's like, what? How'd they manage that? Yep. It shouldn't even happen for 2B. Like, it's not a intended mechanic as far as we can tell. It doesn't know. It's like, it's kind of weird. It doesn't seem like it's intended, but it doesn't seem like it's unintended because it's a whole different... I think it's a different animation, even though they're identical. Or There was something where it's like, it's in the code to do that. It's not... Like, uh, cool. And actually, like... Ooh. Dang, I, I, I don't think I ever got the kill like that. Ooh. <laughs> that was close. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I don't think I ever actually got the kill like that as uh, with like code program, but yeah, you're about to enter the blender. Super fast. 
heck. So yeah, actually, since we have two pods there in B ending, unlike an A, this spinner giving like the the bad attack costs you more time than in A ending. That's annoying. Oh no. So yeah, now we're gonna do the same resistance camp NPCs quests just as we did for A ending, but this time we're gonna we already have materials for um, whatever his name is, uh, the supply trader quest. We just need to do the quest for the second guy, the blacksmith guy, and hopefully it's comfy. And we also need to do like uh, some shopping because now, I guess we can mention like the dupe in this game. It's like impossible to notice but we actually dupe like all the items that we yeah. receive from enemies the entire time we've been duping yep there's a couple places where we haven't duped when we picked up the items like from the ground but yeah the entire time we duped our our enemies drops yeah and the, the reason dupe? for that go yeah go go ahead I was gonna say the way it works is if there's an item on the ground and you enter a cutscene the game doesn't want to rob you of that item some of the cutscenes you might not be expecting so it places it in your inventory but for some reason it gives you two of every item that's on the ground so for example in the pit when we were killing a bunch of enemies and then a cutscene plays it duped all of those items into our inventory so that's why you'll see when we have things that we picked up from the ground via this duping there are always an even number of them the resistance yep. is a valuable ally to your house by helping and them, we also help ourselves. that's very and convenient yes, specifically for machine cores because they cost a fortune and they price change based on the stage of the game oh my god this is a weird oh god spot <laughs> so yeah what i bought as 9s from the merchant was the space like the cheap space and also I bought the Mirage as the pod program. The reason I bought the Mirage is because it's the pod program that gives you some height and that is going to be used for a couple skips. Yep. Manus needs all he can get when it comes to height. Yeah, he's so bad with like height so that Zero in a couple places it's super crucial. Actually, I haven't mentioned that before, but this door that we interact with, like, second time already, is also, like, a dialogue we can get once per playthrough. And it's actually very convenient. Yeah, it's just a free uh, interruption. If anyone's talking yeah. too long, you can just walk over to the door and it shuts them up. And... We're gonna do the desert part now as 9s. That's actually kind of an interesting part because we still have to do the Operator same kind of movement as we did as 2 mm -hmm. but without all the fancy TV stuff. And we're gonna do a different apart like um, apartment clip, desert apartment clip. And thanks no, to all of yard, it doesn't top. fucking suck ass <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Like Alayark is a lifesaver when it comes to this skip because it's it's such a such a great addition to the run because we used to do a very terrible inconsistent clip that was like just absolutely awful and then Alayark found like a very reliable 100% consistent clip that is very nice. And it's even faster, like, by itself, I think. So, yeah. But yeah, there, we're gonna use, instead of the heavy hold, as I used this 2B, I'm just gonna use the pod launch. I mean, to be honest, using pod launch as 2B also would be probably yeah. more comfy. It's just because you have to take the transporter, you do, like, a very weird curve around the transporter yeah. to get in a spot, and during the wind up of the animation oh nice ledge grab um, <laughs> during the wind up of the Whoa. animation you can actually like adjust the angle and stuff and it's it's just more convenient yeah. it, it looks better and it's more straightforward to do the pod launch is like always free though yep 
club that I got barricade clip for strike. Nice. Just dash. So also, as you could see, like uh, to fit all my chips, I had to sell mini map and health bar. So we don't see actually like anything on the screen except uh, the enemy health bars. And that's actually the only important information really, because with taunt plus six, you don't really need to know how much health you have. Like you always heal if you take hits. Yeah, because it'll just kill you if you're if not you, well. If, if you have enough health, to survive one hit, it means that the second one will never be not lethal. Unless it's some meme like projectile or something, but 99.9% .9 of the time you just heal as fast as possible if you take hits, so... You really don't care about not having health on your screen. Oh yeah, of course, as 9S I get this guy to behave like... <laughs> yeah, of course, when you can't plunge. Yeah, that's nice. And there, instead of the, like all the discovery cutscenes we've had uh, in A ending, they don't appear in B. But there, we've got a different kind of uh, cutscene. Actually, gold time. Yeah, gold time. But we'll ignore them. Actually, if I will mess up the clip too many times, the small guy will come <laughs> harass me. Party. Hopefully, I just don't. So yeah, there is just another pod launch clip. Yay, first try. Ah. Nice. Boggers. Thanks, Alayar. Mm. That looks so clean compared to the other one. The other one was so jank. The other one <laughs> is just, it's awful. I you, just, yeah, it's close to what 2B does, memory. but it's so bad. It's, it's mega trash. Yeah, it is so yeah because Nina's uh, movement is a little whack, to do no void out movement here, it's kind of annoying. The movement's always scary for me. What is this? Is this the first time you're doing the damage glitch? Uh, uh, I remember yes. if he was doing it earlier. Yeah. So that's uh, this is what 9s damage get glitch looks like. Oh my god, just yeah, I scuff. Uh, like that was a pretty clean fight outside of the very last bits of it. I also made sure that I buy like I always buy 11 medium recoveries uh, from the supply trader because it takes like so little time because he opens the menu for you during dialogue. It's like very minor, but it's like it and I like it removes significant chunk of RNG from the like the ending. I don't know why people weren't doing that initially, like Ame and others, but. Just, it's absolutely pointless to not do this. Considering how easy, like, you can get wrecked in this run in combat. Yeah. Okay, so this the... time I can actually SD safely. Nice. Will not watch no cutscene. Yeah, see? Like, it's. Yeah, it's like very obscure glitch that I've got in my A ending, but. Like, you always know when it's going to happen, but it's just hard to remember because it's not your usual course of action. Okay, so there you do damage glitch, it knocks him down, but then you immediately trigger the wrenched uh, shield, hopefully, and that is faster a little bit. And, like, Adam level isn't scaled at all, so we one-shot him, like, with everything. Yeah, he's just deleted, he has no, no chance. So these nine, these damage glitches as 9s are the same as 2b's, except you have to do them in the air, basically. Yeah, you do like instead of doing dash heavy. Well, 9s have no heavy attack. He has mm -hmm. the he has the buff. Uh, sorry about the hack. Instead of heavy attack, uh, but it's just doing the dash light attack while being mid air, which is, is very that? powerful in some occasions. I guess, uh, for example, against flying enemies, it's like super nice. But it can be annoying against like the 
the ground enemies because you need like you need a lot of distance uh, for your damage glitch to like like you need the big damage uh, sorry distance difference between you and enemy to like actually put the damage glitch in the sweet spot and actually double damage glitching as 9s is very inefficient like his animation is just too long to make it worth it because you also have to like stop falling from from the jump it's one of the reasons and you also have to jump every time because nine like when you play as 2b you don't you don't have to do the dash animation pretty much at all you just press dash and heavy simultaneously and you it looks like you just throw regular heavy attack while in fact it's damage glitch as 9s unfortunately you have to like jump before you dash because of that you can chain damage glitches as efficiently though there is one place from my experience where double damage glitching as 9s actually saves time rather than doesn't and it's the last fight because it's like an absolute like dps race and i think it has to do a little bit with like how game switches like 9s to a2 and back and forth it like makes sd a little bit oh my god i actually got the okay. so the thing with the 9s ladders is that when you are moving down on a ladder as 9s you can't release it it's very stupid but because of that you never want to like regularly grab the ladder instead you want to like just fall over there and you don't have enough height with your jump to jump over the barricade as you do it in S2B. Anyway. And there we actually jump over the... Like, um, in A ending we jumped over Discovery cutscene here. But this time it's not a Discovery cutscene here. It's like the picture book cutscene in there. But we still jump over it. And then we save scum like we did in Desert in A ending. And again, this is worth it even with RTA timing. But again, with speedrun game was using RTA no load, so every uh, loading screen we have doesn't count to, toward the final time. So this kind of uh, save file man uh, save, uh, save filing manipulations save extra time because of that. And as 9S, there is no reason to skip roller coaster, but also it's just... Uh, Actually, I don't know. I mean, we use safe scam, right? And uh, because we use safe scam, we spawn where transporter is, and that's already like very far away from where you get the clipping out of bounds. Mm -hmm. It probably could be still worth it without um, without the safe scam, just because roller coaster by itself saves like five seconds or something. Just doing it, and as 9s you can get it because you like you don't need the plunge or anything. I'm not sure like how height would work out getting on the railing, but I'm pretty sure you I well, actually I'm not sure how you would get an out of bounds since you plunge as 2B, but probably there is maybe you can actually plunge as 9S with Fips <laughs> uh combo hits. And that would let you do some stuff like fight tank, right? I'm assuming that would be why you'd want to do coasters 9s. Yeah, probably that would be the only reason why I would do it outside of saving time. I mean, remember marbles? I mean, of course, Alayark doesn't. <laughs> Zoomer. But marbles was never doing like spear, and he was just killing the tank for all the juicy XP points. Okay, so actually, as 9s, Bovoar fight phase one is a little scary. And by little, I mean it's annoying to deal enough damage to get the fast kill, but to not get the zero cycle. And I always use melee defensive buff here because... Yeah, okay. I always use melee defensive buff because that way you don't get one shot it and you just have enough... Uh... Okay, I actually always mess up this part with like dialogue skip to be stay close. 
I actually don't know what, if, like, I am actually standing probably too close, so I will spawn, like, too far away. There's something I wanted to mention earlier. I don't know if there's yeah, something I'm, like, that you're going to explain. Away. Um, but you'll notice pretty much every time Dan's wanted to talk to someone, he SDs. Um, that's not only to, uh, just stop in a specific spot, but it's, you don't want to continue staggering. If you're running past someone and you start talking, uh, whoever you're playing as will just keep walking and they can sometimes walk you further away from where you really want to end up. It was pretty okay. I don't know why double damage glitch, but... Like, honestly, double damage glitching as Ninas usually hurts you. Other than saving time. <laughs> it's just so annoying. Oh, Ninas. No, why did I open the menu preemptively? <laughs> okay, so there we get like a Nina special like visual novel. Yay! Part. And luckily, luckily, you can just hold B button and it will auto skip. Because mashing through all of those would be like super annoying. I actually never go for door clip as Nina's. I practiced it. It's like I tried to figure out the consistent setup for it. I failed miserably and I just gave up. It's nice that because they let you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like in B ending, like clipping as 9S is very annoying because you have to use dash and it's like super terrible, unlike the spear clip as you use as to be. And the thing is that in B ending you have voice changer, so the dialogue ends faster than in A ending anyway. So that's not a big, not that big of a deal to not go for the skip that is a mega inconsistent. I was gonna say it's nice that they let you hold down B in this game. Uh, in the original near. They don't let you hold down B to skip visual novels, and there's significantly longer visual novel text things than that in in the original game. So speedrunners for that have to mash through like a minute, over a minute plus, I think, of text. Oh, I see Jano actually proposing me to go for the factory thing. Uh, I think I can <laughs> go for it. I haven't touched it in a while. Like I thought that it saves more than it actually saves because I'm stupid. But there is like a super YOLO 9S factory strut. I mean, for the showcase, I guess I can go for it. Yeah, Even it's though it, it, it hurts Dunfrithon's spirit, because Dunfrithon is supposed to be like actually fast. Like as fast as possible. But I guess we can make like a, an exception in this case, <laughs> because uh, it, it actually saves time if you do it right. So. Technically, still gonna be going fast. I mean, the chance that I will get it is like zero percent. But hey, you might get it, and that'd be pretty crazy. It's not gonna happen, <laughs> believe me. Like there is a zero percent chance I get it. An absolute zero. It's like so easy to fail that it's not funny how easy to fail the thing is. So um, unlike to be there, we can't SD during um, the end of Beauvoir because cutscene starts immediately after she's dead. Like, you just have not enough time to self-destruct after level up in the fight. So because of that, we don't use animal and don't suicide uh, for the death warp. Well, not suicide, but uh, don't use animal to kill us for the death warp. But we're still gonna perform in the ending. We're gonna use the enemies and... So the, the funny part about taunt mechanic is that taunt mechanic, like when you taunt an enemy, the like while it's taunt, it reads like the, like I don't know how to call it, like based on what chips you wear when you taunt the enemy, it will deal the damage based on that. So if you taunt enemy with taunt plus 6 equipped and then unequip it, do not lose it. The enemy will still deal like the same damage as with stone plus six. So it works respectively, which is very nice because you can actually use stone plus six for a nice comfy death, but beforehand you have to equip, like unequip all the chips. Because if you, if you don't unequip the chips here, we, we would need to go there to pick up 
the chips from our body. In uh, in A ending, we specifically don't equip any chips before this moment, just so we can that warp without losing any time with the menu. Yeah. And there's no reason to equip chips in A before this, because, I mean... Why would I mean, we? there is a reason. But it's, it? like, very little time save. And you still, like... I mean, if you get Taunt Chip, you can use it for Adam Pete and for Beauvoir. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then you have two of them. Yeah, and uh, because uh, of how we explain the dupe, because you get those chips from enemies, they oh, yeah, 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 yeah. are duplicated. But we don't do our second equip, I guess. Yeah, but it, it, it really doesn't... I guess it saves time with Stone Plus 2 optimally, but I'm not sure it's a lot, to be honest. Yeah, it makes Adam a little quicker and it makes Beauvoir... You don't have to buff during it in A if you do equip Stone Plus 2 in Pit. Yeah. But yeah, because it's duped, it's no problems. Unlike in this route where we buy all of our chips, like we buy all the chips we equip, we don't have them duplicated to, and it just equipping all these chips back would make it not worth it already. And uh, as we said, like in ANZ, we just don't equip any chips beforehand anyway. So yeah, I just hope that angles hold, like we have a second time to get the angles hold to work, showcase it. Otherwise, if I'm getting unlucky, by angles and I don't get the first try jump I am mega screwed like I'm super mega screwed because if I get the melee attack it's like it's over <laughs> you just can reset if this happens in an actual attempt <laughs> yeah and my angles hall had like many like I had many issues with it for some reason recently and I kind of fixed it but since I haven't played near in quite a while before today not perfect, but we'll see. Just gotta hope they haven't patched it. No, they did. No, dude. Okay, we didn't get the first try. Ooh, I got it for a second try. Woo! Nice. I got the... I got the good attack. It's a shame that we don't show you angles fall, but I just, I, I, I don't know why it doesn't work. Yeah, like some, brain, some days it's patched, some days it's not. Like my brain just can't, can't handle the, the timing anymore. <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's very not difficult skip when you know what you are doing, but when it breaks, I feel like I didn't need to use skill solve tonight. When it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and it's really annoying. It's it's very annoying to fix because at this point, like I know exactly what I'm doing every every bit of that skip, but it just doesn't work sometimes, and you start to like overthink it, and it gets even worse. So yeah. you need to like it's it's very painful to relearn it when it breaks, and it did break recently for me. So yeah, I'm still didn't fix it entirely. It's like very So what's supposed to happen? Like what angles hole is? It's a you can s go through that gigantic like invisible wall by going through it. I actually don't know what like how exactly it works. But you can go through it with like very specific jump timing. And it's not like it's pretty precise on positioning and heights and timing and everything, but it's it's not precise enough to be like super inconsistent or anything. I actually used to have like an amazing angles hole consistency, but now it's all lost, and even my own guide doesn't help. <laughs> What is this place? So yeah, this time we don't use EDS shenanigans. We couldn't really as 9S, I think, super comfortably. But the thing is that we have Picture Book, and that's the first time we're going to utilize it. So Picture Book is, is just Adam. like some the data storage from the previous cutscenes we got as 9S. And it works like overlapping dialogues, like absolutely the same. But in your pocket. So, Perhaps we'll wipe yep, out the exactly. Like, next. it takes some time to to do. Like, it's 
costly to skip like every single dialogue with it. But since this whole section is dialogue based, you just overlap the Adam Eve dialogue with the picture book cutscene and boom. Yeah. Annihilation happens. Already them. leaving. Stop complaining. Yep. And it's free, you can do it whenever you want, any dialogue, so it's pretty great. Yep. It's very... It's also another thing that saves a lot of time here. Like in this run. No. Okay. You, like, as 9S, you really don't want to touch this ladder. Because of how wanky, like, releasing ladder as 9S is. And there is going, like, the, the cutscene that I feel good about skipping every time because it's right after the transporter fade out. So you actually have to remember about it. Skip it as fast as possible. But yeah, it's a shame that Angle's hole didn't yeah. happen today, considering that it's a... As I said, like it's a trick that used to be like very consistent for me and now it's just... Well, hey, all the oh, other no. ones have been going really great. Ah, mm. uh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Immediately I mean, actually, launch into the dialogue. Actually, in B ending, messing up this saves less, uh, sorry, loses less time because Nina's dialogue part is yeah. faster because of voice changer, but it still is annoying. I mean, generally doing this dialogue is much more annoying as Nina's because you you jump into where you have to, to do the dialogue overlap, right? <clears throat> and yeah. you have like all the momentum going, you, you you can't SD on the ground like you do as 2B. So it's kind of annoying. So unlike in the ending here, we don't care about money at all. All we care about is actually having enough materials for VC3, which is the case in 90% of the cases. Uh, I can menu. So we just say, uh, sorry, sell the cores, and then we just buy a bunch of buffs. I think we actually didn't explain how buffs work in this game and how important they are. Yeah, we've got these three hoggers. Nice. So the buffs in this game are like super powerful. So every buff, like uh, all the melee ranged attack, uh, attack buffs and melee ranged defensive buffs work the same. They have different tiers and those only change the l duration of the buff. It doesn't change the effect applied, it only changes the duration, right? And the effect is 100% more damage. If I... Is it 100 or 100? I guess it counts as like 100 since you do like twice as damage, right? Yeah. 100% damage buff and 100% defensive buff. That's how it works. And that's incredibly powerful. Like that's... Yeah. We've that's... been using buffs like every combat section in a game. Yeah, yeah and point, well, when you stack yeah. up all of the modifiers we put on our damage, it's absolutely insane. Taunt plus 6, damage yep. buff, damage glitch. It's We have such a crazy multiplier, we're just shredding anything that comes in our way. Yeah, the enemies, that was like, what, three ticks of DG? You're getting distracted. I actually made a mistake. You never slow-mo for the third guy, but I... You actually never slow-mo even for the first guy, but... Whatever. It's just, you always want the last guy to be, like, very close to you, that you are able to... Mm -hmm. just, just run Annihilate him fast away, but... Yeah, I messed up a little bit with my taunting, and... I messed so up anyone's, the taunting because if anyone's the, been wondering... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I just messed up my uh, combat and because of that I messed up the taunting for the last guy. Mm. So what I was going to say was, if anyone's been wondering why sometimes the shadows look a little funny and 9S, 9S has like a crazy skin color change, uh, that's because we're Dan's running with Far on and he has global illumination turned down. So that's that's just what's going on there. It just makes the game run more consistently. Yeah, like, I'm actually running far because of the <laughs> rules yeah. at this point, but um, actually, like, disabling global elimination with far gives you a little bit better performance. 
Like, it, it stresses your GPU a little bit less with the game. And this game is, like, a mega imbalance when it comes to, like, how it stresses your PC. Because the CPU stress with this game is, like, so minimal. And GPU is. stresses, like, all your GPU. And then on top of that, it's not very great PC port in general. And on top of that, I'm playing on the old patch because of e-ending. We actually can probably talk about that a little bit. And yeah. like uh, near God's very recent updates uh, for Steam version that according to people improved like the performance significantly, like game runs with much less stutters. Oh, yeah. because Normally game oh, yeah. stutters a lot. I, I'm just like super used to it, so I don't notice it. I mean, I'm running DS1 that runs 30 FPS. I'm used <laughs> to stuttering experience. But uh, all the people that played 102 just uh, suffer in 101 whenever they need to play it. And they basically never need to play it because only E ending and long categories that actually go in like C ending stuff got affected because they patched um, like the the patch fixed the tower key glitch like I don't know how to call it really early tower, tower yeah yeah early tower skip that saves like 40 50 minutes roughly which as you can guess um, a lot it's, a lot. <laughs> it it's like a a, it's like the uh, it's the only it's one and only major sequence break in this game that isn't just optimized triggers collecting yeah it's crazy and not only does it skip 40 or 50 minutes of gameplay that's some of the like that that'd be really difficult gameplay to go through because that's late in the game everything one shots you and your 9s yeah it, w it would be pretty annoying but we would play m more as a2 though yeah, that that but it is would well be it, it wouldn't be pleasant gameplay though <laughs> as an A2. That's for sure. A2 gameplay is so cool though. I don't know. I hate it. Like because <laughs> healing while being in Berserk with my layout is just horrible. Yeah, it looks Maybe cool. It's like you have a higher attack speed and you also have to heal. No, thank you. But we'll get to that point soon. Well, relatively soon. Not quite soon yet. So yeah, as you can see, like, um, Forest looks entirely different from what it, it's been in A, just because in B ending, you have to collect all the cutscenes across the forest, and it's horribly terrible. So we actually have to go through the through the forest, and I hope I will get. Let's go, No. Okay, she didn't. Oh my god. Bunker to two B and nine S. We've picked up a signal from the black. Not even gonna heal. Heal is for pussy. So I messed up there. Like I threw my damage glitch a little bit early. So the thing is, you can get an insanely clean fight with A2 as 9S because the reason for that is that... Oh, well, actually, good first try high jump, which is nice. Pogers. This high jump is, like, super annoying because it's very annoying to get double lifts from those stairs. It's, like, it's, it's just annoying. So, yeah, like, uh, A2 gets knocked down with your um, damage glitch as 9S. And you can like infinite stun lock her, and you just need like two damage glitches to kill her with with this damage. But you have to throw your very first damage glitch like accurately to make her uh, knocked down. And there I messed up, but I got lucky that she didn't uh, immediately go for um, for an attack when she's invulnerable, so it was recoverable faster. Let's stay sharp and head back to the resistance camp. Though the way I did it, I could actually die, which luckily didn't happen. So there is that at least. Actually, I have to drink at least some water. Yep. Hydrate or dehydrate. I'm just gonna die miserably. <laughs> and yeah, so because it's Dunfrithon, it's 
implied to be like speed oriented which doesn't seem like uh, during this run but <laughs> yeah like uh, fast yeah. I mean <laughs> if sub 130a is fast then yes <laughs> and it probably like it could be even not sub 130a like very barely anyway um Yeah, like, I'm just gonna switch across games, like, immediately. Like, I'm just gonna... I'm not no even gap. gonna, like, leave the message or watch the cutscene in near. <laughs> I'm just gonna alt the 4 immediately and switch to the next <laughs> game, so, yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be great. Right cards. So, did, did you route in bathroom breaks, or...? No, it's it's pure them. RNG. It's, it's RNG. Bathroom breaks <laughs> are time loss. So we hope for them to not ha to happen. Okay, yeah, actually, as you could see, like I just teleported, like I used transporter, I picked up an A again to teleport here. Alternatively, you can do like if you don't pick up this transporter, you can go for all the out of bounds movements. The issue with out of bounds movement as 9s that it's a little bit like it's just much more annoying to to do it. Well, actually, it's not much more annoying because you get inbounds anyway, but yeah, it's just... Don't jump at me. Nice lock one. Yeah, lock one, like, locking on in this game is a challenge by itself many times. And yes, every flyer is, like... Like, as the 9s, the most pleasant part about all the combat is fighting flying enemies. Because unlike to be, you just melt them because you can actually jump. There I'm gonna do a picture book uh, skip that saves, like, placebo amount of time. From my experience, like, <laughs> I never noticed, like, an actual time save and I'm actually standing at the right spot. Uh, sorry, at the bad spot. So I saved nothing. If she didn't order others around, what kind of leader Which is very lovely, be? isn't it? Okay, did it feel fast? But yeah. And we get in the... Second shmup. And actually, the good news is that... 9 shmup is faster than 2B shmup. It's shorter. There is less auto-scroller part. And what can go wrong? The problem is that right after the shmup, there is a hacking section, which is an absolutely worst part of the run. It's like nothing happens and it's terribly long. Oh my god, why? Okay, nobody's seen that. I don't even know how I would the, the left side boots with my swings. But yeah, 9S part is gonna be shorter because 9S leaves to be like right before the second. Well, not right before, but uh, nice. I'm doing like super weird stuff right now. Um, 9S leaves to be right after core one, and you have a shoot 'em up section which is much faster than, like significantly much faster than. Um, Killing two cores is to be. But as I said, then it's backed up with like a mega long, terrible hacking section before Factory. It's, it's awful, actually. So, yeah, there's just gonna be a lot of alpha scroll. Do we have something to maybe explain? Any ideas? Hello? Got any cool, cool things you wanna we talk could about? Say, uh... We never actually mentioned how long, uh, or how much time you save from jumping over the wall, like that invisible wall for a A2. It actually saved two minutes to jump over that <laughs> wall. A2? Yeah, oh, for A2. you mean like after, after, after you kill A2? Yeah, and go to the transporter. Oh yeah, because there is like a terrible, terribly long dialogue. If I remember correctly as well, that doesn't let you use like the front castle transporter to even warp. Yeah. 
and if you plunge there, uh, there's a wall. <laughs> so even if you could get there beforehand, there's an invisible wall stopping you. So very, uh, very cool that we. Get I could spawn. actually use the Aloe Yards uh, light attack strat if I knew where I had to actually attack, but. It's not too um, bad to I, do. I just I just use it for uh, for the timing because I don't have skill skill gauge uh, <laughs> cheap equipped, so I time my programs with light attacks. You can kind of just feel out where you need to aim, um, as long as you know that like there's a screen shake uh, when the attacks are actually landing. Yeah, that's true. But I just have no clue where you actually do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> even from the description, without like actually seeing it, like I just never noticed that people actually do that. So I never knew it exists before today. See, like, Alayark not only teaching new things, also saving me from resetting Prologue by saying <laughs> where you can go back, like, in bounds after failed uh, angles flip. So much uh, help from core commentators. <laughs> We need you I to destroy try. the enemy EMP generator so we can lock onto the target. <laughs> Sending yeah. the coordinates to your map now. But yeah, this part is really boring. So I guess you guys also, like in chat, can ask questions and we might even answer for now. Like I've been almost fully ignoring chat because there are usually things to talk about. But that's Nars, the... Was in chat perfect. earlier, in high. No, yeah, I've seen Kana. Yes. But he's probably asleep already. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Even Dunfriton would have had a prologue reset. Yeah, prologue reset is... Like, prologue in general, it's... As I mentioned when we played through it, like, A-ending prologue is such an insane, like, showdown of, like, everything. Yeah. It's... In, it's... Like, there is nothing insane happening, but there are, like, every single enemy you kill in that prologue can lose you a ton of time, like literally. It's so can lose you, or if it doesn't lose you a lot of time, every enemy can lose you just a little bit of time that it will all end up like losing you a ton of time. And also you have purely RNG moments, like angles, punches, and just angles behavior in general. During the last bit of the prologue, it's, it's, it's actually very difficult. Like I'm absolute shit and garbage at prologues compared to like all the good runners but luckily none of the good runners run e ending so i can flex my skills there because nobody wants to touch 101 ever in their life yeah Alo, was that your reason for not doing e more uh my reason is that it's long <laughs> i mean e ending is definitely not like like, I wouldn't recommend running E for a new runner, not only because it has, like, very discouraging places where you can die on, like, an A, for example, but also the fact that, like, for me, running E Stand makes sense because, like, I'm okay with longer categories, but after I started running it, like, I initially wanted to run it, and for me, like, I like the whole game. Like, I like 9S, Combat, and Sections, and whatnot, so it's fine for me, but many people did, don't like it. Yeah. So they prefer to never touch. Like, I, I find 9S combat pretty interesting. I think it's, like, it's very different, and it's, like, completely different layer. The first time you switch, like, to doing 9S combat, after only doing 2B, you are, like, in completely different worlds. It's, like, completely different set of muscle memory to set up. And this game is a lot of muscle memory overall. Like, movement, combat... Like, we haven't mentioned, but, like, sl even slow-mo damage glitching, double damage glitching, is a very tricky like yeah you need to eat fingers to... it's like many inputs that you have to to do and some yeah. things probably are looking easier than they are to execute inputs wise yeah slow-mo ddg you need to be holding down slow-mo you need to be timing oh, no. your slow-mos to thread them in with your DDGs because you can't uh, switch weapons at the same time as doing slow-mo. So you have to time all of it like pretty closely to get it to work. And so you're swapping weapons, you're dashing, you're heavying, 
You're holding down slow mo. You're pod firing, and then you're fighting enemies and taunting. Yeah. So there's a lot going on with that combat, and it's really hard to learn as a new player. I remember I was like, "Holy hell! How does anyone ever do this?" And the first but once you time, know it, the first time I understood how slow mo DDG works, I was very upset because the whole time <laughs> I thought you can switch weapon sets like yeah. anyhow. And I was like very slow learner. Like I did no double damage glitch runs for quite a while as well. So I was like, yeah, double damage glitch. That's like a difficult thing. I'm gonna go through it. And then when I started doing slow mo, it was like awful at first. Like yeah. really awful. And then you just get used to it. Like you don't even think about it anymore. Yeah, like it's just it, now it's just like, oh hey, I'm gonna go start combat, and then I immediately just slow mo DDG. It's just you can just do it. It's like riding a bicycle. Yep. Definitely isn't easy. I mean, actually, in my case, riding bicycle is much harder since I never rode a bicycle in my life. Oh no. <laughs> well, DDG, if you were to have yeah. ridden a bicycle. <laughs> DDG slow mo is probably much easier in my case. But yeah, this part of the shoot em up section is actually different from to B1. And it's pretty short overall. Especially compared to core 1, core 2 uh, section. So yeah, run ends quite faster. And there we have an insane missile gameplay. Whoa. Yeah, and it absolutely doesn't matter what you do there, it's just like... A collision at this speed is not recommended. Gotta make sure you hit him. Yep. Okay, now we have a little... Uh, actually, we have a new thing to introduce, which is uh, using keyboard for pack movements. Like about diagonal movement in general. So in this game, when you are inside the hack, it's not even inside the hack, but inside the hack it's like most noticeable. It works in normal gameplay as well. But when you move diagonally, you get like more speed. And in this case, it is much more speed. And doing it on keyboard is significantly easier. And I'm not sure that everywhere you can even do it on controller. Not everywhere you can even do it on keyboard, to be honest, but it's like, it's just much easier to do on keyboard, so. I'm doing like the weird zigzag movement here just because it's faster to like move diagonally than moving straight. And you can right. see that quite explicitly when I'm not moving diagonally. So yeah, that's another place where... Um, Keyboard comes in handy. Hey Dan, I'm gonna drop now for my scheduling conflict. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, Rod has to go to compensate another. I know I messed uh, up. I thought I thought they didn't collide, and then in this morning I was like, oh, heck. I'm yeah, so, sorry. so there is like blue metal running a ending on um, Metal Gear Solid. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep this marathon one up, you know. <laughs> for MGS. Uh, runners that are uh, that go to games done quick and this year i wasn't invited unlike last i'm gonna give i'm, I'm immediately gonna give them shit for that too don't worry <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's okay. the first thing i'm, I'm doing count i'm counting on you <laughs> that one <laughs> thank you for having me though this is such a cool round of you and yeah thank you Robert, good luck on the rest the, all the co-commentating yeah we'll do, we'll do our best i'll too. be in chat later i'll be here good luck dan yeah thank you so yeah, that part was pretty boring, but the next part that is coming in is even more boring. So <laughs> yeah, we have some time for maybe more chatting with you guys. So now we have to self-diagnose and realize the sacred truth about humanity and that it's actually non-existent. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is like a very weird thing that you can like hack 
this like particular one place before it appears like start hacking before it actually appears on the screen and that's like probably the only place in a game where it works like that so that's cool yes yeah, sorry for spoilers guys and insane uh, experience ruin i mean this game is old enough to not be afraid of spoilers so yeah But, yeah, there's gonna be a little bit more of a um, keyboard movement, and we're gonna do a little bit of keyboard movement during the factory hacks. Like, the very final, and not only very final, but yeah, through factory hacks. Factory hacks are actually pretty cool, I think. It's pretty nice. It's annoying, but it's nice. It's at least some gameplay to do. And I'm also gonna do for for the fancy factory just for the sake of showcasing but there is like as i said there is like zero percent chance it's gonna work it's like very uh -huh. very finicky trick to do like it's it's awfully terribly awful Detective, trash and it's like nothing <laughs> so yeah yeah guys i will try to convert your energy into like successful skip I mean, if I'm gonna get it, but just lose time on it, I don't care. Like, you, to not lose time on it, you need to get it at least third try, roughly. Like, if you don't get it third try, you automatically start losing time. Because that's good. Which might sound like, yeah, third try sounds like pretty nice, but not in this case, guys. It's like... It's a mega trash. And if you fail it, you lose, you lose like, minutes easily. <laughs> And it's much easier to fail than to get it. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of something. It's an absolute trash, like absolute trash, garbage, trash. Doo doo, garbage. Yeah. Bad. Probably, uh, it's like probably the worst skip in the whole game. Like I, don't, I can't think of anything that can be useful but can be as bad as that thing. To be honest. Or maybe I just don't know this kind of bad things. But yeah. Optimally, it saves like around 20 seconds. But you have to do it like very optimally. Like super optimally. Old 9S housing, yeah. Old 9S housing is terrible. But it was... It, it was... It felt like RNG. So you had no control over it. This thing is like fully execution based. Well, pretty much fully execution based. And it's awful. Every part of it is awful. What was that? Because every part of it can go absolutely wrong in your scuff. Okay, we're done with the boring part, so... Now we go for the terminal to... Help to be with escaping factory. And yes. Here is the terminal. And so right after the factory, well, I guess starting from factory, like the last, like it's the start of the last third of a run, like last half of the run. I don't know how you call it, because from now on, it's like actually danced with activities and it's mostly not simple things to do. Okay, let's see. We'll attempt it and see how bad it goes. This run is absolutely terrible anyway, so... <laughs> let's see. Okay, the first bit is like very simple. You can see that we're using like we're not just going forward, but we're actually like jumping backwards with the enemy that we're using. Just because it's much faster to move this way. Okay, so and instead of going straight forward our, after we're gonna take the trigger here, we're actually gonna turn around and go all the way back. Do the very finicky, very annoying, very 
scout movements. Uh, yeah, we'll get the in a good position. That already like wasted so much time that it's not gonna be good. And I also messed up, so I have to wait for the second cycle. And I'm not sure that worked. Like I jumped one time extra. I got it. No. Yeah, so if you clip and bounce here, so yeah, that's um. basically it. It's over. That was actually not the worst attempt you can have, but yeah, I just lost the minutes. If you wondered. So what's supposed to happen there is instead of linearly like completing the the area you would actually go through the bottom part first and it would be like we would collect all the we would collect all the needed triggers in a different order in a faster order yeah, i'm gonna wait for this yeah. so when you just do a straight up playthrough of this area like those those things are always in a good cycle for you on this flyer but since i went for for the meme strats and failed it it's pretty bad So yeah, we keep like hacking from one machine to another. And this is the last one we're gonna use. The flyer. It's pretty fast and very safe to travel with, so... It's comfy. If we would go for the strats uh, and it would work, we would entirely skip this segment where I am right now. like, And the previous part was the us because I will like we would fall from out of bounds well not fall but this guy I just flew over we would hack into him and take control over him and we would take the the very last checkpoint first and then we would self-destruct and collect the other checkpoint that is before the first flying enemy we hack into so yeah that saves like around 20 seconds even though it it requires you to do a bit of backtracking, but it's just it's 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 too fast. Even considering that you have to do a weird hack and weird movement, you have to backtrack initially, backtrack afterwards. Still saves so much time. But we didn't see it. It's a shame, but as I said, that trick is awfully terrible. It's. It's very finicky out of bounds movement. Controlling a hacking machine with stable controls and yeah. And now we get in the last factory hack where we have to annihilate enemies and there we use like keyboard for the diagonal movements. Uh, in between enemies, just because it's fast. Will do. Like locking on of the on the final core can be tricky because um, lock on does pick up enemy pretty weirdly. I have like very bad health to the last wave, so I think I will go left side first. Thanks. I think, Alert. but we'll see. Yeah, it's like close to pixel perfect jump. It's not pixel perfect, really, but it's like it's close to pixel perfect. The ledge you have to stay on is incredibly thin, it's not funny how thin it is. One thing about that, uh that really long section before this uh, large area right here. Um, the dialogue is supposed to end well before you're like even close to getting here. 
but um, since we do the vectoring, uh, it ends almost as we get here, uh, just a little bit before, and that just shows how f how much faster it is to do. And yeah, like I died one extra time that you really shouldn't. Like you usually die there once. Okay, there is actually very important safe scum because you have like a very little period of time when you can safe scum before the dialogue starts and it actually saves a bunch of time because when you're in a dialogue you can save using the menu or anyhow really so that's nice <clears throat> so now the dialogue actually gonna play during the the animation and the commander dialogue like starts super immediately as well and now we are going into 9s boss rush and 9s boss rush is pretty scary it's not really that difficult but it's very easy to make a mistake in here because there you get one shotted by many things specifically eve is like last phase in eve fight is the scariest part probably like, yeah. because you get one shot it and it's awful like that fight if you are unlucky it's unsalvageable it's like literally nothing you can do if you if he decides to do the double wave attack when you just like spawn and he will spawn like near like right near to you like you will get blocked by invisible wall on the phase three you're like you would be able to iframe the first wave using the menu but you will get killed by the second one immediately so it's like literally like there are cases when you can't do anything or for example when you actually kill eve and he does his last attack it still can hit you. And actually, uh, it's very important to mention that it's time for the best boss fight in the run. I'm actually going to debuff just in case. Be careful, you know. Yeah, that, there was a Goliath fire, if you haven't noticed, but uh, that was a very, very strong opponent to face. <laughs> I mean, it's time for a bit more scary opponent, which is score one, but barely. So there the actions are similar as with 2B, except you don't have to go right, you just have to go forward. Like, uh, the positioning here is much easier and it's not as annoying. So there, like, the stupid thing is that you have to do one, like, any attack after this is D because otherwise your weapon isn't loaded like I don't even know like you do attack with no weapon yeah it's super and weird <laughs> yeah it's I don't know why it happens but it's just it's just weird thing with like going into the cutscene after self-destruct and as 9s it's more annoying than as 2d because 9s damage glitch takes longer and you are more more vulnerable as 9s while damage glitching Okay, so this wave can be scary if you are unlucky, but only if you are unlucky. There are absolutely no other cases when it's scary. This is actually an awful RNG. Okay, now the more tricky part, which is zero cycle. Even though I failed one damage glitch I still got the kill because uh, like up to <laughs> like three three damage glitches after the taunts is when you still get the zero cycle with score two but like the the only difficult part about this is actually getting the taunt like it took me a shit ton of time to realize a consistent way to taunt him like every time at the same time. I don't know why Core 2 is so finicky to taunt, but it's awful. Everything must die! Uh, I believe it's because of the pushback with the, uh, the, uh, the pod while you're slow-moing. 
Okay, that was a little a little damage for my initial damage glitch. Not like really, but like the if phase one heal rather looks scarier than it is when you know what you're doing. But still. Okay, and there it's gonna be like this hack also. It's kinda annoying to deal with. Like I got the bad attack, so I have to take one more hit to be able to do the death warp in this fight. No, I suck. Oh, no. So I died, I died too fast on the death warp, so phase didn't transition. It's kind of a silly mistake to make and I had, like, I started to, like, I usually don't used to have this mistake, but yeah, now I do make it sometimes but yeah just need to practice it a little bit more it's like unfortunately his projectiles they disappear over time and if it wouldn't be the case you would and it's not just they only disappear that you they also get like out of reach where they can hit you but if you die there at the right time it teleports you ahead like where you would spawn if you would die on the last phase in this hack and it saves actually a bunch of time yeah it's like five seconds it's yeah it's quite a, a bit for a half hacking section and it's pretty easy it's just i messed up kind of in a dumb way and now the actually most difficult part not phase three really but the next phase after it is Okay, we're in a good position, so that's nice at least. Okay, first thing, you make sure you are not getting wrecked by immediate attack, like I just did. And now every projectile we get hit by is gonna kill us. Okay, mo most most dangerous part is when the screen fading white. If you die during, the, like, you can actually die during this part, and it's like very stupid because you can't see the uh, the continue menu, so you have to do. It's like very simple menu to do, but it can get confusing. Like, I can imagine if people die like that casually, they just alt F4 because they don't understand what is happening. But the scary part about it isn't the fact that you just die, like, whatever. The scary part is that you can't use the menu iframes like you usually can. Because you can't open the menu when the screen started fading to white. So there we have to talk with Ninas during credits and we get, like, very nice item from him called e -drug. I mean, it better would be that this item wouldn't exist because that way it wouldn't be an RNG shit in the run three hours in. But uh, yeah, we're gonna use it. We have one E drug. And when we're gonna use it, we with like, I don't know what's the chance actually, but with like 20, 30% chance, probably oh, God, something. I don't like know. That. It's like, it's, or maybe it's like actually 50 because there are like different visual effects and the audio effects are also like only two of them i'm not quite sure like anyway it's a coin toss three hours in a run that can save you 20 seconds by speeding up dialogues in certain segments and as you can guess 20 seconds rng time save three hours in a run isn't fun in general We've so yeah now we start the ending. The ending. yeah and C ending beginning is quite combat heavy up to 9s part. Oh, this part's so fun. It's fun and mostly not annoying, but you have another coin toss here because 9s is D strat is coin toss. Like you can do everything for like you have to do things right, but if you did everything right and it didn't work, it's just you're unlucky. So that's another like 25-30 seconds time loss if you mess up. 
So you better get lucky if you run this category. I guess you could understand that from the Emil part, which is like 100% RNG and understand? it's like our in the run. Like a meal can lose you minutes and minutes. In this run, we've had a relatively, a relatively okay meal. Like we've lost probably a minute at most, if not less, and that counts like pretty nice average meal. Look for machines that are receiving signals from the anti-air system. They should be located. So now we have a part where you we have to like hack certain machines. You don't need to hack all machines, so we don't need to do a stupid like jump over the gap or something like that. I actually very badly now remember it from casual playthrough, so... It's like something about jumping the gap while being in a beast machine mode. But yeah, like, two hacks are simple and three hacks are... Gonna lock on in a good timing, fuck. We got the good hack on the first guy. Um. So yeah, this part probably can be called Defense like fully RNG because yeah, to you to be have declining. no real control over like what hacks you do. Oh my god, dude. Insane double KO. Looks I wasn't like even sure well I got the hack. Every scanner in the dying like that. In this operation. So let's it was try super not to weird. Fall behind. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we have like Make sure one last... Uh, to avoid combat. More difficult hack scanner coming. Such as yourself are not designed I like for that. I already locked on, but the... Oh no, that's a terrible one. I hate this. Like, this is an example of a terrible hack, because you have to wait for so many enemies to spawn before the central core becomes vulnerable. I'm just about wrapped up here. How about you? Roger. Be sure to head back to the bunker when you're done so you can sync your data. Oh my god, Loki. And yeah, we will get in another shmup. And actually in that shmup that we are going to get into, there is like a weird strat that I found randomly not so long ago, since I came back in here, that you can actually kill one of the waves. Well, it's I'm not sure how frame perfect it is, but it's like, it's just stupid. <laughs> I just hope I don't fail. It's, it's a minor time save, but it's just a cool strat. That you skip an entire wave by hitting, by killing it in a one weird spot where for some reason all the units like spawn for a second, well for a second for a frame or so. Oh my god, this dude is heavy attack. Oh my god, how it survives. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that wave is gonna be soon. You will not see it if I don't mess up, actually. And oh, I messed up, but I still got it. Like I, I killed. The oh, machine oh, I've I never seen that. Wow. Oh, you never see that. So yeah, no, like you can, you can kill the entire wave in a single spot if you. Kill the last guy with the swing at the right place. There I got lucky because I had like the wrong enemy alive for the thing to work. Yeah, I actually have the enemies grouped pretty nicely for this. Like this is the wor the absolutely Oh my god, the absolutely worst wave to deal with. with like, without minimap, this is absolutely awful. Because enemies can spawn inside the walls, get stuck there forever, and you will never see them until, like, 
they are the only enemies left. Kinda. This is Unit 8B with Attack Squadron Omega. We've gained control. This is 3B, Captain of... Data Squadron. The enemy machines are multiplying in front of us. We can't hold this position. And this is like one of the segments where VC3 is like a mega beneficial. Probably... One of the most, if not the most, beneficial place to have a DC3. Very good we'll combat, but Six fine. Right. Man, I can't see a thing. Alert. It was Detecting decent. Of like, Why are they going nuts I maybe this? look this... this is unit 7B with like, by knowing Delta. how to We're fight these enemies... It might look that it's pretty simple, but you actually get one shot at by almost everything. Yeah, it can be very scary, especially these It's guys. like, if you get unlucky, you will get killed, like, no matter what you do, pretty much. Because if game insists on killing you, you will die. There is absolutely nothing you can do against, like, the worst case scenarios, like, just getting hits. Because you got hits, a little for that. <laughs> Can you get over there and provide support ASAP? Are we ever glad to see you? They came out of nowhere. We okay, that is the strats. I'm not very like good at, but let it work. Saves a little bit of. T oh no. It's actually kind of bad that I felt. Okay, that's a good combo for the start. So we need to kill four enemies before we make like the rest of the wave spawn. And then we're gonna do a fancy SD. I got unlucky, please. I got unlucky. I got unlucky at first because... Oh, I got level up. So the unlucky, the first unlucky part of it was that uh, the small machine that hacked me cancelled the hack. Like they sometimes don't initiate the hack fully, and that hack animation it's it, it staggers you, so it interrupts your self destruct. And when you have t when you have um, to redo the self-destruct, you hire the chance that enemies will get in a weird spots, but there... I just generally got unlucky that one of the enemies got out of uh, self-destruct range. Normally, you just self-destruct like all the enemies with that uh, SZ and... It's all nice. It's a very cool strat, actually. It's one of the few things I came up with. And it's actually... Dude, just I can switch weapons. What? Okay, now I can. That was very weird. I couldn't switch my weapon set for some that reason. That was very weird, huh? What am I doing on this buff here? Weird. Okay, so there we're gonna abuse some picture books again. Skip all the dialogues with Nine S. That's actually a very annoying part. It's again RNG. So what the RNG part is, when 9S actually will initiate the hacking, and in what position. Okay, I got like perfect 9S. So there will be cutscene immediately after the picture book. Which is very nice when it happens, but... Recently I had like, no moments like that. <laughs> 9S was just uh, wandering around for infinite time. So now we have to fight a bunch of uh, Yorha inside the bunker. Damn, the doors. Did the virus 
it took place up bunker itself. Operator, what? How much time does the SD strat actually save? Uh, as 9s? Yeah, as 9s. A lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, I gold it by a lot, but my 9s combat was awful. I think it saves like 20 seconds at least. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> like, you kill enemies like incredibly fast with it. I mean, fighting enemies as 9s here is awful. Like, it's very awful. Not only you yeah. can get one shotted by certain enemies, it's also that like the enemies in that combat section are an absolute idiots. Like they're just rushing at you straight for like they're running literally in your face. How did that Yorpa jump so far backwards? Yeah, I messed up that last wave very majorly. I'll probably run out of buffs. Probably 100% will run out of buffs. Especially when I fail. But tell me, why weren't you too infected? My damage glitches as many times. So like this combat section isn't difficult or anything. It's a little RNG's, RNG-ish. Um, how it goes overall. But um, the biggest issue there is that enemies are very annoying to like they die immediately as soon as you taunt them but sometimes taunting them is very annoying because of how like camera is and combat is in this like 2d screen so luckily i just didn't die there because dying there is bad Pursuers detected. No. Oh no. The signal. It's. Okay, so it's time for uh, E-Drag to shine. So let's hope Marathon Lock brings them us like at least some positive outcome. Okay, so there we use E-Drag and pray. We didn't get it. Well. Oh man. Marathon luck is against me today. So optimally you get the voice modifier with e drug that speeds up the dialogues significantly that it saves like 18-20 seconds in this segment. Which is huge. Like very huge. But yeah, like getting uh, an e drug there is like oh man, that sucks. <laughs> like immediate just no. <laughs> It really does suck, yeah. But yeah, there you have just to wait for the dialogues to proceed, and that's exactly the reason why it saves so much time when you get it. Critical damage to flight unit. Just because Proposal. it speeds up this Eject whole dialogue sequences. Actually, there is going to be a nice skip coming up CS called Virus Skip, which is very lost. simple but very efficient. Very simple, and before I fail it, I think it'll be fine. I actually will be fine. Nice. So, there is a huge virus trigger so the the people who play this game casually know that in this section we get attacked by the virus and the virus meter virus bar gets like um, filled with the time and you have to reach uh, a certain spot on the map during it and the further virus goes the more more and more functionality it takes from you like at first you can't like uh, do your like sprinting and dashing and whatnot during some periods of time like after self-destruct then it makes you like always in a like self-destruct tier mode or almost always when you can only like occasionally like jump and don't even like sprint 
and it's like very annoying. Casually, I like that was the place I hated a lot. Casually, I don't know how long it took me to like make it, but it was terrible. So when the next event happened, I didn't even like care because I was so mad at like this whole virus segment. <laughs> that like i just i just didn't care i was like god like god things that this is over i absolutely didn't care about what happened next and what happens next is pretty like uh, significant for for the story so what we do we reach out this place it hits the trigger and we actually will get like hacked by the virus immediately to like the highest percent and you will see how it looks like at the very end of it. We just get obliterated. <laughs> yeah, like everything bugs out. We use another picture book to skip the dialogues. But because of virus skip, we just like, we ignore that entirely and we just like enjoy. And we have the first section to play as A2, which is very nice. Oh no, dude. Oh nice, I got two double kills. That was such a very early self-destruct here. So usually like the second wave that spawns is... killed with self-destruct immediately, but I used it too early and... Yeah, I just use it a very little bit too early. It's kind of hard to time precisely, but just do it by feel. This is how we kill the first enemies. Actually, as we figure, as I randomly figured out, like if you watch the cutscene, like the cutscene after the virus infection, um, if you watch it like long enough, all the enemies spawn at once. So it like counts toward the the enemy spawn timer, which is oh. kind of weird, but. Yeah. It's just weird. And there is a very, very, very important part. We choose 9S. Um, this is going to be a start of the setup for Tower Skip, which is the skip that saves like 40, 50 minutes. Uh, why we do it? Because we want to get the key to the uh, one of the towers by completing the mid box so called like the first tower you approach as 9s called mid box and actually i hope i will get the insane transporter skip Report. Mail I believe. which is the taking transporter in like couple frames window and the annoyance isn't that it's couple frames window the annoyance is coming from the fact that the interaction menu has a cooldown like you, you, if you spam like as fast as possible, it doesn't register your input like of taking transporter as fast as possible, because there is a certain like uh, period of time when it's like inactive, and that's why this is actually a tricky part, and it loses you twenty seconds if you mess up. A forced message from the enemy system. Said message relays the locations of objects known as resource recovery units. Cool. We've we didn't get like so many things in this run actually. It's embarrassing. So uh because we didn't get the transporter thing, I have to picture book all the dialogues that I get to be able to use transporter and that as I said like loses you 20 seconds. So if you don't get it in a real run, you are basically fucked. <laughs> this is why C ending is so like rough. Transporter is 20 seconds, 9 SSD failure is 25 seconds, like E, uh, e like E drug not working 18, 20 seconds, RNG. It's so many things that just cost you time for very little mistake that you make. And sometimes even no mistake. Oh yeah, actually about dying during tower, I need to make a safe here just in case because if i wouldn't save here if i die inside the mid box you get the game over screen and that's why c ending and further is just very scary for speedrun 
game over screens in this game put you all the way to your latest save file from the menu, which is usually in a speedrun very far away. And, I mean, by very far away, I mean the start of C ending when you make save file after B ending. So it's like like 20 minutes time loss if you die there. So thank you, Isam, for actually reminding me that you can die in tower. Because I definitely wouldn't remember to save there. Which is a big mistake for a marathon run. So there we get rid of all the unnecessary... Why did I not get spawns? Because angle is for some reason busted. I absolutely hate like taunts during slow mo sometimes, it's awful. Because of how weird the interaction with the camera is. Oh my god, I ran out of buffs so early. Was maybe a little bit scary even. But it's okay. So mid box is kinda a lot of uh, tricky combat, I would say. Specifically, like, first and last floor are the ones that are difficult. The rest is, like, whatever. There are definitely scary parts, like, there are many enemies that one-shot you, and many attacks that one-shot you, but if you know, like, what attacks to beware of, it's not that difficult. I think main box is actually super fun to do. It's fun for sure. If you don't die there, actually. Why this guy didn't get aggro? Weird. This last wave is just the suicide guys that are kind of annoying to deal with, but. Snipe at the end. Okay, and only the last wave left. Fun fact uh, you can actually climb up the outside of Meatbox uh, all the way to the top as, uh, as 9S. Insane. You can't quite skip it. Um, because a couple triggers are too far out of reach. But, uh, it is a cool thing that you can do. Okay, so this wave is kind of annoying because, like, those, like, red face guys are not running away from you, but the others are actually running away from you, and it's annoying. So, like, have to act a little bit differently based on what the enemies are. Yeah, they go away from you because you pod fire. Oh, actually, because of that? Yeah, it's literally because of that. Actually, I never knew that. So maybe you can do no pod fire for some of the enemies. You need to consider that. Especially for the flyers. Well, I guess it, it's not really that big of a deal for, for the flyers. At least for the, sec for the first flyer. Because usually you should melt him like immediately, and there it's gonna be another SD. Speculation. It's just one of the raw materials from the structure. Wave of the enemies at the very also top. For creating weapons. And yeah. Cutscene, then we have uh, our beloved key, the the forest toxic key, the the item that sca saves us 40-50 minutes. If used wisely. <laughs> okay, next very important part is to choose 9S again. So we can actually use the key that we just acquired. And now we just Alert. gonna do the tower skip. Data Hope it's all good inside the tower as well. Alert. Convoy 
combat inadvisable during abnormal vital conditions. So what we're gonna do is, like, I don't think anyone knows why it works, but it, I guess it's just made that way for some reason, like, just overlooked by developers. So the thing is, if you use your key to hack one of the one of the towers and then use transporter to reload the area, game allows you to hack another tower, like if you would have another key, without having it. And that way, instead of completing all three, like, boxes, like, I don't remember, like, soul box and god box or something like that. Actually, yeah. I don't know how they're called. And receiving two other keys, we're just gonna use the forest... Forest mid box key for all of the three towers and get the access straight to the main tower. So you just unlock the tower, hack it, complete the hack, And what do you do? Just go to the nearby transporter and warp to the same tier in some transporter and boom, we're gonna be able to open up another tower. And that way you entirely skip not only 9S, uh, like soul and god boxes, you also skip entirely A2 sections before entering the tower itself. Which is a lot. Like, a lot. And that's pretty much the only sequence break, like the actual sequence break in this game. There are no other actual sequence breaks in this game. Sadly. <laughs> yeah, sadly, this game is loving triggers too much to be able to sequence break stuff without soft locking or something yeah the game is not like, really soft locking just nah. like not getting anything as an outcome yeah it's crazy because we were talking about it earlier and it's like it's not a matter of like if you can get there it's how you can get there you can always get to a spot it's just how do you get to that spot <laughs> Yeah, it's like all the areas routing with all the out of bounds possibilities is fully based on what triggers you have to collect to progress the story. Nothing else. I mean, maybe game would be like, would lose a lot of like fun and tech if it would be just like completely broken. Like, I don't know. Like the games that actually allow you to get to the final boss without collecting all this stuff previously, you know? I mean, in this game it kind of makes sense since you have the story, like, development over time. Yeah. So, like, even possibly you wouldn't be able to fight Eve because the fight with Eve, first of all, happens like a, in the same area where you are all the time. So in that sense, it makes sense that there are no major sequence breaks unless this one, like except this one. So there we are using, like I used this um, hack cancel before during 9S hacking part uh, in C prologue, C ending prologue, but there it's most useful. Like normally if you just hold your hack the whole time here, you have like enemies, going around you and like Devola and Popola comes and like helps you and sacrificing themselves to let you hack but with the hack cancel none of the enemies even like spawn yeah that's it's how much faster so it is. fast yeah it makes this place like nothing it seems like really peaceful as you're going in but like Normally, there's supposed to be so much happening if you, like, do it casually. And now, after entering the tower, we're on the very finish line. The problem, like, the only problem tower has is game over screens, to be honest. 
nothing else really is a problem about tower. It's just if you die, you are hacked. But we're just gonna make all the pitch save files and make sure we're doing well because there are not too many. Actually, another very important place where you have to say no because if you open the visual novel about Devola and Popola, it it's endless. It's absolute. It's Why like a book long, like a real book long. It's awful. It takes minutes to skip. Like literal minutes. Oh, actually, we wait for the dialogue to end. Uh, I'm gonna save even there. Usually, like, even if you are trying to be safe, you don't save here. Since we are in a marathon, it, it's better to be extra safe than die and lose bazillion minutes to be doing mid box. Actually, I ac accidentally saved during the tower skip, so wouldn't be as bad, but still would be pretty bad. Yeah, so there is gonna be a not be safe. So we're going to do a pretty weird SD strat. That's the first time it didn't work in a very long oh, time. No. It's actually partly sort of RNG, I would say, from what I can tell. But luckily, it doesn't lose you too much time. It loses you a lot of time. Like, if this would happen in a real run, it would be another, like... Why does it... Nice. What? I actually uh -huh. had to go. I actually had to go away. What? <laughs> um, yeah, that was weird because this happens so rarely. Like, the structure known as the I don't know how I did it. So, like, the good thing about A2, she has incredibly super long dash, which is very nice for plunging. Yeah, there, we're gonna use Berserk. I'm gonna do the sprinting start that I like to do. So, um, A2 has the most superior SD compared to 9S and 2B because it not only deals the damage like regular SD, I actually don't know, does it deal like less damage or does it have downsides? I don't think so. It has now, slightly even... less damage oh, slightly uh, less for damage. like the initial hit. Mm -hmm. I see. So, but as the rewards, you also get in the Berserk mode, and the issue with the Berserk mode is that it takes your health, like, permanently while it works. So I have to heal from time to time, but what it grants you with is very powerful. Because not only it makes you, I actually don't know, does it modify the damage itself? It makes you attack faster, it makes you move faster. It also, which is very important in this run, it prevents you from dying when you get the lethal damage. Which is not necessarily super useful in this run, but in one place it's actually useful, like at the very end of the elevator. When you have to fight one of the she robots. So there we get into the library and we have to do a bunch of hacks, so that's a boring part. We're gonna do another we're gonna have another boring part in tower. It was like a lot of uh, dialogue skipping and stuff. I believe uh Berserk does uh make you do more damage mm, yeah, so it's so even better <laughs> even better it's like super powerful but because we have so literally two combats it's not being like utilized to an insane amount Okay, so we hack all the three books, like, I don't know how else to call it, three archives. 
And actually there we're going to save. That's the last place where you can save with the menu. I actually don't even remember when you save it. So they haven't saved there in ages. That's the last place where you can save manually in the tower and in the game. There are... Like, the only game over screen you can get is 9S Combat. After you get past 9S Combat part, you will get started with checkpoints, like from checkpoints. So that's gonna be better. Not in elevator case, because if you die on the... Uh, elevator thing, it's gonna be absolutely awful, because it takes ages. Let's just hope that I don't die. Like, this segment of the combat is pretty nice to do, it's it's pretty clean and just comfy, mostly. A bit of RNG with your high units, but the first bit is very little RNG, pretty much no RNG. Yeah, one thing, if you're not careful, that flyer that just got obliterated <laughs> can uh, one-shot you. Yeah, it, it, that flyer one-shots you with anything. Like, projectile, just anything, basically. So the last wave you deal with, with SD, just one kind of to kill as many enemies as possible to minimize the chance of SD failing, kind of. So you have to SD less enemies, but because they like spawn in waves, there is no reason to like SD uh, immediately or anything. So yeah, the first part done. The actually this part, I mean, you can die on your half flyers if you are really unlucky or you mess up and get unlucky on top of that. But usually, like your half flyers, is pretty safe combat section. Especially in Don't Plus 6. Don't Plus 3, your half flyers is actually worse. Thank you. That was actually very good RNG, like they all came to me like without meme attacks and very fast back to back. Yeah, I was about to say like they were all like right next to you. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of them always choose to like go toward you when there is no others like right next to you. There you have to just break the leg of this squashy. There is like a weird clip. Oh, not even going uh, for it. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna do it because I have no clue how to do it. There is also a weird clip that saves no time, like clipping an out of bounds on the way to to the button. It's like very it saves pretty much nothing. Hey, it saves time though. Probably I don't know how because I found it. <laughs> but yeah, that's like the last really boring part. I mean, not like super really boring part, but. There was a bit of waiting. Yeah, a bit of waiting. Like, first is a bit of combat, but then it's a bit of waiting. So there you have to kill, like, enemies fast. That's all you have to do. Just spawning, like... ...things. And there are 
quite many enemies to kill to actually get the trigger to work. Especially to throw damage glitches not as nicely as I just do it. You can actually SD kind of efficiently there, but it's it's like not very big time save because SDing itself takes time and like finding a big enough group of enemies. And what is most important is like if you SD to too early, you have to wait for the like berserk initial like animation to to go through, which also slows you down. So yeah, this is E ending speedrun. So the main ending, all the main endings of the game, speedrun. And yeah, there we just have to wait and skip the long dialogues with picture book and do nothing. Very fun. Ah yes, we're waiting. Waiting. Waiting is nice. I also would probably enjoy ending, uh, waiting more if I would have uh, more sleep. <laughs> Before this marathon, but some things are not in your control. Need a nap as well, well... Feel sorry for you, Ryu. Consciousness data saturation rate, 100%. Hypothesis. Oh, what is yeah, I don't know what that is. Like. So yeah, now when we've got to like this checkpoint kind of thing, um, now we just, uh, yeah. So there is like a super weird SD to do, like this SD is super weird. Because yes, because of this. It just <laughs> yeah. Like I am not sure like why this happened when it does. There is something to do with it, how you approach enemies, but I can't tell the difference when it doesn't work. Sometimes it's just impossible. Yeah, I mean it seems random. Like it's obviously not, but it just feels random. It's like why? It's like hard to tell what exactly matters for this SD, and it's super annoying to practice, like... So there we get our first... ...interruption with Mr. Koshi. I actually use wrench defensive buff, because I'm not sure what attack... ...his attack is considered. Probably melee, but... ...I don't want to figure that out. So there, because he one-shots us and I want to run out of Berserk, I'm just waiting till he's... Holy shit. <laughs> I was just waiting oh for Oh my god. I was just waiting for his stone to disappear. I mean, if I would die there, it wouldn't be really big of an issue, but it was... It was stupid. So there we have to use another picture book. Holy shit. That was very bad timing for running out of Berserk. Okay, so now the part begins where we're gonna constantly switch from A2 to 9S back and forth. Okay, so there on Roshi you just use like all you can and that's it. Generally for Roshi we're gonna spam pot programs with whatever it's called. Uh, skill solve that reduces the cooldown of uh, pot program twice.
actually don't like my recovery uh, sorry buffs amount for some reason even though i did oh my god i did like no weird buffing or anything they also messed up like i was wondering because it looked like you were pretty low and i'm like oh is it supposed to be that low no i'm actually not sure why it's as low but i should be fine still like there is a chance that i will not be fine and it will be a very whack backup but unlikely that's gonna be the case still okay. i mean doing the like under using Under using arranged uh, buffs on 9s during this section is rather risky, but I'll just do that. It's like I'm gonna use it on the 3D part of this thing. Speculation. It is a resource of some kind. Fun fact, for that 3D part specifically, um, you can actually hold the light attack button and it will just keep doing them. Whereas oh, really? a lot of other parts of the game it just doesn't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. They're saving enough buffs. I actually don't know why I'm so low on ranged buffs. I think I overused it like um, during AB ending. Since I've like I bought 30 and I often both buy 30 and yeah, it's enough but clearly not this time. Oh wow, well, yeah, I usually buy a, like 50. Wait, that's nice. Okay, so... This is an annoying... Combat part. Because, like... Like, dealing enough damage with your bot programs is a little inconsistent in this fight. It's like sometimes you get the kill super early and sometimes it's just terrible damage with your bot program missiles. And what's most important about this is to not skip this cutscene with the start button. Because if yeah. you do, your game can crash with a very high chance. So yeah, just don't do it. We get to the very final, well not very final, but to the final boss fight, kind of. The actually scary boss fights. And for that we unequipped on plus three and equip, uh, sorry, unequipped on plus six and equipped on plus three. And I've got the worst attack, so I hope I don't fucking die there. Oops. Weird. Oh. That's kind of weird. Especially the way I did it. But I got switched to A2 in a way that I could berserk as A2 and don't get staggered. So that was okay. Usually you are supposed to SD as 9S to finish this fight, but uh, yeah, <laughs> was a little bit uh, out of hands.
you start as A2. Like, first we get the C ending, actually. Like, the actual C ending. Why did I not get the pawns? This is a very major time loss now. Ooh. Because he will keep taunting us, like, forever. Yeah, it's like, it's impossible. Basically, I have to take damage and pray. Oh my god, dude. Oh my Hell's god, he's so far away. Trap. This is like super unlucky. I have no clue why he didn't get taunted with as many inputs as I did initially. <clears throat> that was like super scuffed. Yeah, usually I pretty he's much... just dead like instantly. Yeah, he, he's dead instantly all the time, but you just have to press like to taunt him in order for that to happen. And in my case, taunt just decided to not work. And that's the issue with like taunting in general. Sometimes because your camera is like a little scuffed or you didn't lock on like perfectly in the right timing. Like your flashlights will be angled like super weirdly not toward the enemy and enemy will just not get taunted. Actually one of my PBs had the super terrible 9S fight. And, I mean that was that one was even worse than super terrible, but yeah, happens. So yeah, that's the ending. But that's not the ending we're looking for yet. So basically the The run is done. Like you will have only one more combat section. That is gonna be very easy if I don't suck. And we gonna have an ins an insane like 10-15 minutes shoot him up credit section for E ending. For which I'm just gonna make game louder and we're just gonna shut up probably. Because there is like absolutely nothing to, to talk about. You just kill credits as fast as possible and that's it. So I guess actually... Alayark will have time for an outro maybe during that section. Boy. <laughs> Since we're gonna have no time after that. But beforehand, we have to get the D ending. The ending is a 9S against A2 fight, and just like in the forest, you can just stun lock A2 like infinitely, and in this case, you just will need one damage glitch. It's like very simple. And this time, like, Pond decided to work, so there was no issue with that. Then we get into the visual novel. Then we have to skip. One thing about that, uh, while you're 9S, uh, a lot of the time, people will pick A2 before 9S. Um, yeah. But if you do 9s afterwards, you'll have the debug menu, and you're not supposed to open that ever. Uh, and some people's controls uh, make it really easy to open that menu. So it's kind of like you have to be careful to not open it on accident. I am one of these people. Like I can't practice like anything with the debug menu because my like taunting and attacking inputs overlap with the debug menu. Yeah. <laughs> like I have select uh, on flashlight and R2 on on heavy. So like I literally can damage glitch. So there we have a dialogue where we should say yes twice without saying no, which is very important. Now we get into the final shmup, and actually I'm gonna tune the game audio up a little bit.
quite a little bit because that's going to be a catch-up moment. So we are like to play E ending. You are you need to play mandatory online, and the reason for that is how is how the the support help uh, work sort of because if you are offline you will never get the the OP the invulnerable buff during the during the credits luckily even on old patch it works because potentially it could be ruined for old patch like that technically Luckily, it works. You just have to be online in Steam. So you have to die like multiple times during the same section. And then you will get offered with the help. It's gonna be time for an ultimate cat jump. Here we are. And for the next 10 minutes, we're just listening to voice to basic. I shot that fucking card 3 3. I ain't gonna go buddy. We were created to execute the Android's Project Yorha plan. We had no capacity for emotion, but when we six were connected and exchanged information, something But yeah, we're just gonna happened. kill a I lot of credits. Of something resembling consciousness and emotion being born. And this segment is like Perhaps fully understand that not everything execution based. So you can lose you actually can lose quite a lot of time there. You messed up. I'm not sure like how loud the the insane like uh, fireworks outside are, but I can imagine that it's related to this like finishing the ending run. Clearly. I don't think I can hear anything actually. Probably it was not picked up by the mic, but still, I heard it.
it's time for... For Nier. And... Um, we switch, because it's done for Tom. We have no time to, like, spend time on... Oh, man. Having good feels about the run. Dumfrithon must go on. Monk Giga. GG. Yeah, it's thank you so much for the co commentator, Ala York and Rod, that had to go away actually early. But we are doing Sekiro now. So thank you, and you can do some kind of outro. I, I believe since how fast uh, we switched. Yeah, I mean, it was fun commentating. I enjoyed it. I don't want to overstay my welcome. <laughs> yep, and big shout yeah, out to like really near breaking guard speedrunning community in general. Like, if you are interested in like speedrunning the the Yoko Tara games, that's the place to go. Yeah, that is sponsored by Drakengard.com. That is the actual that is the actual Discord link if you want to join. Not actually sponsored. But yeah, I will see you uh, in chat. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. So yeah, now we are already running Sekiro and I'm ready to welcome the Sekiro co-commentator that I have ready for you. It's Roach. Hi, Roach. If you're there. Hello, everybody. I'm Roji. Yep. Roji have to suffer because he's living in Asia and it's like actually kind of past 12 already quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's actually my usual time. Um, not to brag about it, but <laughs> I, I usually still play it in this one, so it's okay. Yeah, so we like because of how rapidly. Um, Things develop in Dumfrithons usually. Well, already like killed the first mini boss in a game, and luckily I didn't get sniped by RNG like gunners. And there are a couple things to mention in Sekiro. So uh, first of all, we play no subtitles. The reason for that because it saves enormous amount of time in this category. Like for some reason they made the dialogues to work differently, whether you have subtitles or not. Like pressing start button with turned off subtitles skips the entire dialogue while well, if you have subtitles on it actually doesn't do anything with the dialogue it just That's removes like all the progression in the dialogue yeah because it's so specific to just subtitle it is actually just found recently in like the, the past half a year yeah. it's actually kind of crazy that a, a simple skip like this one is taking so much time before he's actually getting discovered. Yeah, it got the, like the game came out for like I guess around two years when the thing was discovered. That's very crazy. When such an easy thing, and again in this category, it saves over ninety seconds because of how many dialogues you will have to do. But we will. Yeah, I, I yeah I still remember the day when <laughs> uh, dialogue skipping just discovered, and every single road record just got beaten within the first month just because of yep. the dialogue skipping is just very powerful. Yep, so there we already picked up our first uh, prophetic tool, which is gonna be Shuriken. We're actually not gonna use it super quite often, but it's gonna be useful, and most importantly, it's useful to get the skill tree. It takes so little to pick it up that there are like pretty much no downsides, and picking it up makes it very easy to obtain the prophetic skill tree. That will give us a lot of like two extra spirit emblems and also it will give us a lot of spirit emblems. Actually it will not give us anything. Well actually it will give us a possibility using prosthetic while jumping, which gonna be useful in couple places actually. But that's gonna be further. We already killed like the second mini boss, which was the samurai boss, and now we picked up some sugar that makes us uh, barely visible and completely silent so we can do a weird kind of death blow on Ogre. 
Yeah, and Dan right now is using a completely uh, log off fight. So um, it very much just move around Ogre without actually needing to dodge a, a lot of the attacks. Uh, but he didn't really get too good of an RNG here, but it's, it's still a much faster fight than just locking on and dodging every attack from the Ogre. Yeah, like lock on on Ogre complete uh, uh, specifically is very bad, especially like for the grab attacks. For some reason, when you try to dodge them being locked on, it it works absolutely disgusting. Like, no no joking, it's it's like he might. Yeah, the, the, the hitbox. Grab yeah, the hitbox in Sekiro is supposed to be really good, but for that specific quick grab, is somehow feels like it's magnetic. <laughs> okay, so there is gonna be like we actually skipped one mini boss. No, uh, oh, I actually go the for vertical it? jump. <laughs> I got the vertical jump, which is shame. So now we'll need to do a little bit of waiting. The snake to yeah. So so Dan away. right there was going for the the infamous double canyon skip, which is a very very difficult skip. So the first part, which actually requires a a frame perfect no, input, no. so you you need to do a delayed jump. Oh, you, you got another vertical jump there. It's it's actually like uh, not as bad as I make it to look like. No, I don't like this jump. It could work, but I didn't like it. So uh, the thing is, usually when you fail this skip, you just jump from the wall and you like make enough distance to grab the grapple points. It's no, not a big deal. You lose a bit of time, but uh, doing the skip saves more. Like in my opinion it's justified to go for it it was like four seconds at most to just go for it compared to completely not going for it but twice i got like the outcome that is making you like to to void out and that's terrible that's like usually when you reset your run if you fail it like that and Un unlike i just did because it's a marathon but yeah the skip is very difficult that's like probably the most difficult skip in the entire run in this category because it's like delayed jumps as a mechanic is very scuffed like there i'm going to do another skip that involves delay jump but that one going to be significantly much easier because of how the mechanic works it's like the thing is i actually have to get lucky with gyobu rng and they didn't i don't even know what rng i got kind of weird turn around in a bad sight nothing i can do but yeah we will make gyobu just fall off the cliff and then when he falls he just dies immediately which is giving them us like shinobi i actually have to probably say like what the category i'm running like i'm running all bosses mini bosses unrestricted category which allows me to do all kinds of glitches and stuff but we have to kill all bosses and all mini bosses, which is a lot. It's almost 50, 50 fights in this category, which is pretty brutal. Yeah, so having one fight like that can be uh, abused to the, the outbound glitches like that can be very helpful to, to the overall speed and time save in the overall run. Yeah, in this and, uh, category. I, I just want to bring up that you just got the single canyon, which is also a very difficult jump when you're first starting to learn it. And uh, th that icicle jump is more tricky than you'd expect, and you always get some vertical jump from the single canyon. But Dan just made it look very easy there. Nice. We also got to the, That's in my RNG. opinion, we, we got to the, in my opinion, like one of the hardest bosses in the entire run, because Bull is. Like, I made it look probably easy, but it wasn't. Like, getting this fight perfect with any, like, RNG is a lot. The yeah, opener just to put alone... that in perspective, yeah, just, just open... If you fail the opening deflection, the fight would go much longer. So, uh, that time it was a perfect fight because Dan played perfectly and got every single deflect comes in uh, his way. So, that fight was super, super quickly done. But um, usually, that fight, uh, if you didn't get the perfect RNG or you messed up the opening uh, deflection there, th that fight can be easily 10 seconds longer or even 15 seconds. Yeah, the, the biggest issue when it comes to RNG in that fight um, is when enemies survive the opener. That's like the absolute worst. 
Yeah, there's there's just two guard in front of the bull. If the bull didn't didn't charge in the right angle and or somehow the guard just move out of the way, well they they, they can really pose a big problem and they can easily kill you from your back. Okay, yeah, there we're gonna introduce the well known mechanic such as the dead angle. angle. Yeah. Yeah, so there Maybe I can least. like explain a little bit of how dead angle works. Uh, I kind of want to explain one little thing is that we like in Sekiro the consumables we're gonna use all the time gonna be like uh, sugars and spirit falls later on. It's like usually the uh, like the damage buffs, and in this game, uh, like health damage you deal is important, but what's most important is the um, posture damage that you deal with your attacks, and both sugars that buff damage in this game aqua sugar and uh, yashoriku respectively like works for spirit fall equivalents they both increase your like posture damage significantly and we're gonna use that we already are using them to get the kills faster but oh no i actually did reset my very last run oh. <laughs> not so long ago to this and i don't know why i'm failing this and how i even managed to fail this as i do like why it just it's it just doesn't let me grapple. Okay, I will grapple to the actually like very right place. Okay. Oh, I I I have no explanation why this thing works as it does. Like I I I think I do everything like I'm used to, but it just doesn't work. Oh, I don't have a. Okay, this is very scary, but. I'll just need to deflect the kick if I get one. And I guess you can go for the dangling explanation. Yeah, and also uh, there would be a gunner that can heal the run, <laughs> usually. But uh, uh, you you would want to do sort of like a um, aggro man management, where if you look at the gunner uh, oh, before no, it turns what? red... Oh. Why so ever... usually Snake Eyes would just duck on the corner there, but uh, that time Snake Eyes just got out of the corner. It's not the only box. it's not only Snake Eyes; it's also the Gunner aggro at me because yeah. like I do the I do the cautious pathing, like the yellow marker pathing that makes him de aggro at you like all the time. But because he aggroed so late, I actually had to look at him to make him de aggro fully. Because like at the last like half a second, even less than half a second, just couple frames, but he still aggroed. He aggroed at me. It was just enough. So I yeah, messed but luckily up. Luckily, he didn't hit you. Bit. So it's so we, we, lucky we, we, that we, I generally <laughs> survived this fight as it was. Like it's it's very lucky what happened here. In fact, marathon magic. <laughs> it was marathon magic. That's yeah. I didn't get kill there because i i don't know it's not only i strafed the gunshot somehow at also like i didn't die to kick and didn't get wrecked by anything else it's was really lucky so there we actually do some shopping we picked up some uh, money purse on the way and we actually must talk with ishan here to progress the main story further uh, otherwise like we'll just not be able to to kill all the bosses in the end and there we go to the merchant nearby we and we buy robert's firecrackers and that's gonna be our third we actually picked up the spear um on our way to long shadow one fight and these are three prosthetics and as i mentioned like after you obtain three prosthetics uh, sculptor gives you the um the skill tree the prosthetic skill tree and it's very, very useful in this run because it gives you an ability to use your um, to use your prosthetics me there, and on top of that, it also gives you two extra spirit emble emblems, which is like spirit emblems will come in handy very soon, as soon as we acquire mortal blades. Yeah, that's one. Like, and you just saw the spirit emblem getting sucked up into Sekiro there. 
So those yep. cross il illuminating yellow thingy is the spirit emblem that you can pick up or buy from your idol. And they are very useful for your uh, prosthetic and also your model draw later on in the run, which are basically a consumable for you to use and it can empower your prosthetic or your model draw. Which um, uh, Dan actually just bought a, a robust firecracker, which is probably the best um, speed Absolutely running prosthetic best. in the game. Yeah, it, it just makes so many bosses just uh, getting stunned and you can get some free damage in and especially comboing with model draw, which is the most broken um, skill in the game, which they buff on 1.04. So so now um, <clears throat> with, with the model draw and ro robust firecracker, we can uh, do a lot of damage in, later on in the run while we are routing this. So um, the basic routing for this run so far have been to kill a lot of the major bosses before the day of time changes. So uh, maybe then would you uh, like to talk about the day of time or the, the just just general routing? So yeah, as, there as is why like we are doing this. Yeah. So the should thing be a is, very uh, very interesting thing to to bring up. We actually like first of all we kill corrupted monk first just to acquire like ability to swim because air swimming even though it's not like super utilized in this run like to some insane degree like in any percent but it still saves a lot of time and corrupted monk as the boss is just cheesed entirely so it doesn't matter like what stats you have or what consumables you have by the time you reach out to the boss i'm also picking up some idols on my way sometimes it's like a, a pretty mandatory one i probably can call it uh, that it's going to be used for much later periods of time in the run and some of them are just picked up to kill enemies like for example the previous idol I picked up was just to kill the ore in very 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 late game when we will come back yeah the, yeah the general purpose of this entire routing is to get as much memories which uh, memories is are from major bosses and those memories can boost your attack power so uh, the general consent right now is to uh, get as much uh, attack power before the day of time changes. So uh, we, we pick up all the memories, so Genichiro, uh, Abe, and so on and so forth. And then we get, we get all the attack power and then we go do the mini bosses afterward. And then we progress the day of time and then we get, gather a bunch of memories after it again. And then we do mini bosses. So some bosses such as O-Ring, uh, the idol that we just picked up, um, that, that, that boss would not disappear no matter which day of time it is, so we just save them to last so we can get as much uh, damage and attack powers and then we can just pretty much just one-shot them with auto draws and firecracker combos. Yep, that was Corrupted Mon, because you could see this boss is entirely cheesed. It's a very weird leftover... I don't want to say glitch because it's in glitchless, but cheese. <laughs> the thing is, like, we argued a lot about, like, whether it's a glitch or not, because you use completely intended mechanics. The thing is, this boss has leftover, like, aggro range. Like, she has a field of view. Like, she just doesn't notice her, like, she just doesn't notice you from where you enter the arena when she spawns. And because of that... It allows to perform a stealth death blow like, like you're supposed to do on regular true monk, like the, the other iteration of this boss later on in the game. But the thing is that like the way how this leftover mechanic work is like super weird. But it it's just because probably boss was made as a rare skin version, and they just left this like death blow possibility. So it's not even like because it, that blow isn't something that can can be unintended. Like that blow is something that hard that is hard coded in the game very like specifically. Yeah, basically, uh, if you want to kill a a boss, you need to do death blow unless it yep. is like Yubu or later on Demon of Hatred. They just fall off the map. Uh, basically, you just need to use so death blow. So that's why. That's an argument. This is just AI manipulation and exploits instead of just a, a glitch that is unfixed. So yeah. um, because you can also do the, the death blow on true monk, which is uh, basically uh, like, like Dan said, is the, the true version of Karotan monk. So uh, that's why there's still animation for the uh, uh, un Aerial death blow. Uh, undetected death blow and, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. So uh, we just 
thought, thought that it would be wise to just let them in there as a AI exploits, just oh like this God. one. Uh, the dead angle is all is also a a cheese rather than a glitch. Yeah, there was very scuffed Guinea where I could mess up like many times, but luckily yeah. I got lucky <laughs> enough to not die entirely. Oh, one lightning. What? Oh, two, two lightning. lightning. <laughs> it is oh. two lightning. <laughs> The best RNG we see. Oh my god, we actually got like the best perfect RNG. Yeah, actually perfect, I think. Uh, except for you, you didn't get the deflection depth, which is a bit faster, but no way you just get double lightning. <laughs> yeah, double lightning is the perfect. Okay, so there is like another weird thing that I'm going to do is like a short black screen. Or at least I will try to do three, four, five, six. And. I did get it. So this game, like we're going to use it like multiple times. You already used it once in very tutorial. It's unnoticeable as a person that doesn't know what's supposed to happen. But if you stay in specific places when you enter the cutscene, it makes the black screen after the cutscene faster. It doesn't make cutscene load faster. It makes the black screen after cutscene uh, like disappear pretty much immediately. And there are like three places I can think of. It's like at the start, in tutorial, here, and also like in, uh, before the monkeys. Where you abuse it to your favor uh, to do like specific actions in order to make the black screen fade out pretty much immediate. Yeah, yeah, to these days, no one really knows why that works. But um, so what Dan was saying is that so in tutorial when you are uh, meeting Ganitro and your your arm get cut off by Ganitro, so if you walk or jump in a specific angle, uh, slightly forty five degree to the left, you actually get a very very fast cutscene. But if you go straight towards Ganitro in the tutorial, you get a semi long black screen that can uh, be the bane of world record or not, because you know world record matters yeah. uh, with with the 0 0.5 seconds. So uh, with, with this fast cutscene, uh, it, after gain intro, I think the fast cutscene actually saved like one second or even 1.5 seconds, which is huge for uh, any run that is on road record level or just short run in general. So it, it's actually a pretty big discovery that just dis it, that is just discovered in the recent uh, half a year. So there, there, there is a lot of uh, skips or just fast loading thing that it just got discovered in the past like half a year. It's just very, very mind-boggling indeed. Oh no. I messed up oh. the, the parkour. Kind of weird that I got the, 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 the vertical jump here, but even initial jump wasn't very great. Yeah, that, that yeah, wasn't I, I don't great. think you've got enough momentum there, yeah. We didn't explain actually air swim yet, but we've had one already to Genichiro. But air swim is a very weird glitch as well that allows you, like, if you dive in the water that has no limits, it makes you able to swim anywhere. <laughs> like, if you find the out of bounds water edge that allows you to dive, like this one, <laughs> yeah, that allows you to dive in and just swim away oh my god why did i not get the area loaded I just swim away yeah i have to actually be a little bit extra careful there since i messed up the movement okay nice like uh, the air swim movement is like very weird and precise like for each area to be able to utilize air swim you need to do different sets of actions like quitting out in the right places and like swimming up in the right places to make the area loaded Etc. It's like very confusing, and basically all of that was found by just blunt like guessing and experimenting, usually, because it's it's like if you just try to swim anywhere, first of all, game will just not load the areas properly, and when it will, it will insta kill you, like, which is not the point. And in order to do that, you need to like load areas ahead in different ways to not just die immediately. Oh no, it was weird. Follow up together. 
Okay, I'm actually doing a weird thing. Ugh, that was super weird, but I just was too low. So that was a fast uh, Armored Warrior Air Swim kick kill. It actually was found quite a bunch of time ago, and it's also one of the things that was found rather late by Sutamo, and... Yeah, it's a, it's a very weird kill because Armored Warrior can only walk off in a very specific place and his pathfinding to the player is super busted. So in order to make this work, you need like to do very kind of specific actions. Yeah, one thing interesting to add on, on the air swimming is that uh, even if you can't see any of the, you know, <clears throat> dangerous places on, on your screen. There are a lot of death planes that are just lying around when you're in air swimming mode. So uh, when Dan was um, swimming towards Roberto and he's trying to go to the pond and swim up to mm -hmm. the surface, if you go a bit left or a bit uh, too up top, there's actually a death plane where you, you can just uh, straight up die without uh, having the resurrection working. So um, that's why in air swimming, we actually take very specific paths. So there was a lot of experiments going through uh, what is the quickest and safest path to go to uh, each of the area. And um, air swimming to Roberto there was actually one of the prime examples to if you go too far right, you're going to die. Or if you go too far left, something's not going to load and you're going to die. So air swimming is actually quite tricky and it actually requires a lot of practice but once you get it you 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 get it for the rest of your life is <laughs> is a very yeah. interesting glitch and it's very fast for the entire speed run in general if, if we don't have air swimming there we would have to run all the way through and into a sample and have to fight roberto in a specific way yeah it would make him fall off but differently actually in a more legit way, but uh, still in a glitchy one that isn't allowed in glitchless. Yeah. But yeah, we're in the monkeys. I actually used my Gachin Sugar before entering the cutscene in a kind of specific way. That was also done in order to make the black screen fade out much faster than if I would use the sugar inside the boss fight arena just a little optimization but it also saves a little bit of time still and now we finally get the the, the op weapon an op skill but before like before making an op it's very important to actually get some skill which is mid-air combat because mid-air combat is essential for i mean mortal draw after patch 103 is very powerful by itself but when you get the mid-air combat something weird happens the thing is that apparently like um, from what we can tell if you perform a mortal draw swing while jumping with mid-air uh, combat it gets the value of the damage from like empowered mortal draw and nobody knows why like it's just there is no sense in why it works like that but if you jump and in like mid air the jump you perform the mortal draw it deals significantly more damage like very very significantly more damage yeah there's rumor that uh, miyazaki heard the player's feedback so he, he made a hidden upgrade to all the player that uh, only speedrunner would know is to get jumping model draw and breathe through every bosses in the game. <laughs> and and yeah. now we are in the mini bosses part of the speedrun. So before the day of time changes, we are back to the cleanup duty. So we just got through the blue guy in the dojo and then we just got through the general here. Uh, with just jumping mortal draw. So you, you can definitely tell how broken jumping mortal draw is. So all of them just die in two swing yeah. and then a deflag or a hit. Yeah, so um, not only the death blow on the samurai is pretty like 
fancy looking will also like quit out immediately afterwards and the way how this game stores your last uh, stable position is when you get aggroed by the enemies your position stops updating so because with deathblow samurai and the aggro like happen before we land on the ground game just teleport us all the way on top of the castle so we can actually go back to the uh, sunken valley and gun for it without uh, coming back to an idol. Aggro, train, aggro, aggro chain is actually a very important mechanic in Sekiro. So uh, early on when Dan was doing the air swim and then he got out of the air swim and then got into center pit and then he did a quit out. There was also a, a pretty um, yeah. huge time save there to just quit out and then it would just teleport you back on to the first guy that sees you, which is uh, right before the rooftop of the Sample Temple before Monkeys. So that was also another example of the aggro chain working in our favor. Yep, exactly. So and now is the infamous gunfort. <laughs> yeah, and it, uh, the first mini boss we're gonna kill there is pretty weird. Like the gun lady death blow here, how it's done is very weird. Because you have to buffer your crouching like immediately and only then she will not notice you entirely and then because of the gunner that notices you when you enter the gun fort does a shot it makes her cautious and she starts turning around and that's what makes her vulnerable for a death blow so it's like a weird like very weird combinations of different factors because she's kind of not supposed to be death blowed like anyhow apparently like the way she's like positioned how her aggro works how you can approach her and stuff it's just super weird yeah i i i would like to think that this is an, another example of the gachin sugar doing some heavy lifting there because <laughs> uh if you guys remember uh in the beginning of the game when we are using gachin to do the death blow on uh, do the first ogre. death blow on ogre that is also a prime example of Gachin doing us the heavy lifting and then we can just sort of sneak our way into his back and do the uh, supposedly not possible uh, first step blow and then we can just skip the first health bar immediately and then we just kind of breeze through the entire section. Yeah, the infamous Sensipede Yashoriku fight that nobody does for some reason. Uh, because like people like different like sugar routing but it's actually faster to do the centipede gash than the bosses that people usually do, but I, I I just don't know why people don't like it. It's so good that people don't like it. I, I like to imagine people are just so used to echo centipede. Yeah. So no one you no one does uh, Yashi centipede anymore. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky because you need to do one attack before you actually use uh, firecracker mortal draw at the start of the fight, but outside of that, the fight is like super free. I also took the safe, uh, safety idol before the centipede, just in case, so we don't go through the whole gun fort if I die to guardian ape or centipede himself. So hopefully that's not going to be the case, and we just took that idol for nothing. Would be good enough for me. But yeah, next boss coming up, and actually that's going to be the last boss out of uh, first three bosses, like three major bosses. I guess you can call them. Yeah, the, the three uh, major bosses be before the day of time changes. Yep. And we're we gonna not abuse like the idol. daytime That's changing very brave. a little bit. I mean, I already took the gun for the idol that I... Ah, you need to Just for that. Okay, we got the decent phase one. Nice. Okay, just in case, I'm not gonna do the the one hit punish in between the, the combo hits because I uh, I just feel bad about it. Oh yeah, so we probably should bring up also uh, the other very great effect of the Firecracker is that it deals tremendous amount of posture damage to any beast type enemy. So the Guardian A phase one is actually a beast. So the, the two Firecracker actually deals a lot of posture damage and we just pretty much skip the entire phase one with our uh, set attack Pattern. Okay, so 
Peace. That was a good fight. I'm glad that it was yeah, as pretty, it was. pretty much as good as you can get. So you, you just yeah. use uh, three sets of Mortal Draw and you have nine Switch Emblems left. So it's a perfectly amount, perfectly suitable amount of emblems for the entire second phase. Clap. Yeah. So there is like a tricky part here. As soon as you acquire the third main item from like three main bosses for the daytime change, game automatically sets your last rested idol to this one, even though we never took it it automatically becomes our last idol so we can just uh out like we can immediately idle out to the last communed idol and it's gonna be this one which is very 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 convenient and now we do another cleanup like because this mini boss will disappear whenever we kill dragon and it's just very convenient to get him down like now Seven Spear bosses are actually very frustrating to fight, casually. Like, very frustrating. But with Mortal Draw and Firecracker, all of their attacks are so slow that they can do anything. And there are only two of them. And the thing is that the second one actually has a friend, which will make it kind of annoying to deal with, but even his friend will not help him. Unlucky, unluckily for him. Yeah, because Mortal Draw, uh, aside from the huge amount of damage, it also has huge range. So uh, it's basically an AOE to kill everyone in his way. So a, a actual fitting name for the Mortal Draw, like a, like a lore fitting weapon because before 1.03 Mortal Draw is actually worse than your normal swarm swing <laughs> funny enough but uh, now they bad, bought it yeah. it is like it's like two or three swings it's, it's, it's not that great it's and, and, it, and it uses three spirit emblems uh, nobody just n nobody ever wanted to use it but but now after 1.03 Mortal Draw is just omega busted everyone just want to use it now so they are very important to not choose Shura ending, um, which is very difficult to do, not on purpose, but everything is possible if you try hard enough. And I've got like the good RNG for oh, my nice. setup. So we've got the perfect good setup. Out. So yeah, we um, like Sekiro is a very nice game designed you to backtrack through the areas, right? Like coming back into the places where you've been before. And what is even better, they reuse the boss fight arenas. And they managed to reuse two out of, like, two out of three reused boss fight arenas are absolutely busted. Like, that's the first one. We fought Genichiro there, and we just cornered him on the other side for the first two phases. Then we fight Owl here, and we just corner him in the other corner for the entire fight. Yeah, Which is and, very busted. And our hitbox is actually so big, you don't even need to flick your fifth swing into him yep. because uh, if you if you don't flick uh, on your fifth swing on the Genichiro fight, uh, the fifth swing would actually miss it. So uh, yeah. if you guys remember, uh, Dan actually flicked the fifth swing, fifth swing into Genichiro in the previous fight, but Al is just just too huge. He's buff, so yeah. we get him into the corner and then he just dead. Yep. He's a little bit trickier to get in the corner compared to Genichiro because Genichiro in that sense is very like uh, true, cooperative. True. But, but we did get a good luck on the, the setup. So uh, just one dodge and he's in the corner. But usually if we try to do Shuriken or some other attack, you would have to do more manipulation before he actually gets yep. into the corner so we can do that. That is true. So now we are going through the part that actually is most affected by no subtitles because all of these dialogues would take significantly longer without uh, no subtitles. It would be like terribly long. We skip like most of the dialogues by just pressing start and wiping the dialogue entirely. 
without subtitles off, it's not possible. Though there is like a tricky part about subtitles off is when you have an item receival, uh, receiving in the dialogue where you have a dialogue option, if you skip the dialogue, it doesn't proceed uh, through enough. Because like it either gives you an item immediately, like if it's an item, you just receive the item, but the rest of the dialogue isn't like completed. If it's the choice, it just closes the dialogue, but the choice isn't made. So you need to make sure that the dialogues you skip have no either no item or no choice. But with the items, it's a bit different because there are um, there are a couple dialogues when you just want to receive an item, but you don't want to finish the dialogue entirely. Like you don't care about the rest of the dialogue; you just care about the item NPC gives you. So in this case, you just like skip the dialogue, don't care about it being like not finished, and take your item. And we're going to do like Trumon phase one skip, which is hopefully gonna work first try. Yep, uh, True Monk, True Monk phase one skip is actually got semi patched uh, in in current patch, but it is still possible with a very specific angle and timing, and there, and just got it first try, easy. <laughs> Yeah, so initially in like release patch of the game, you could do Trumon phase one that blow just the same as you do corrupt in one. Okay, let me focus a little bit on the fights first. Then he's going to do a very set pattern here. So one jumping mode roll, four to flag, dash, and then two jumping mode roll, dash, firecracker, jumping mode roll, and dead. Yep. So, um, it's a what I wanted set to fight say. and it's very fast. So, yeah, so he definitely do not want to dis be disturbed. Otherwise, the fight will be going to go longer. And it's not as cool. Coolness is very yep. important to you for the speedrun. <laughs> yeah, this fight becomes like. Like, the second phase, uh, like, this boss has three phases, and the second phase skip is like absolutely intended. But because of how they coded the boss to be able second death blow to be like intended is the way why phase one and corrupted monk death blows probably work because they like they made phase two skip based on where you are like does the boss see you in a certain place and because of that they actually made boss notice or don't notice you in the first place and that's again the reason why phase one skip work and why corrupted monks uh, cheese skill work because it's like a leftover parameters from original true monk but the thing about uh true monk phase one is that initially on the release patch it was much easier it was just like you get in the arena she doesn't notice you you death blow from the from the tree there was no no tricky part about it but then they patched it but someone figured out that you can still get the kill and then we figured out like the consistent setup with uh, mouse wheel uh, like you bind your attack to mouse wheel and use it to get your inputs more frequently to get in this like four frame window more consistently and the thing is that there are there is like a super tiny short period of time when boss still doesn't see you like the, the thing is the whole time while you're entering the arena, the boss model and parameters, like the boss body is here. It's just the animation with the like mesh, with like model jumping in and stuff. The actual boss is standing right there being invulnerable, untouchable, and just being there. But there is a four frames window when boss becomes vulnerable and touchable, but still doesn't notice you from you jumping on top of her. So it's like utilizing that four frames window with like a perfect death blow timing that allows you to skip that first phase. Also on the way we like took the idol to work back to and also we annihilated some we also annihilated some bosses like the, the bolts lady which is very simple to deal with and she actually did nothing for me so I didn't even need to throw a shuriken or anything and we also killed First headless in the run, and most important headless in the run that drops the Yashuriku Spirit Fall, which is very important. 
gonna be very important for the rest of the run now because it will use I got the weird bull uh, oh <laughs> that was uh, sketchy <laughs> yeah it was it was weird one bull does uh, not hit the left wall it's something about positioning but yeah so uh, when we're gonna use the Spiritfall, like what Spiritfall Sugars do, they use Spirit Emblems. It's like an infinite sugar, but it takes emblems instead of consuming the sugar, which might sound like entirely OP, but in fact, it's not uh, entirely OP. Funnily enough, because uh, we will need, like for some boss fights, we need enormous amount of Spirit Emblems to like use enough mortal draws and stuff for example ishin and owl owl two fights require you to use like all your spirit emblems entirely and we will also acquire the item called tanto that we also want to use on top of the emblems we have so that's going to be even even more to do yeah and so, i yeah. believe spirit fall has a shorter duration than an actual no it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't oh. uh so initially okay. like since i initially routed this run in 102 the first version of this category was in uh version 102 and 102 had a spirit fall that costs four emblems instead of three and has significantly less duration time like the 102 spirit fall works for 20 seconds instead of 30 like in 103 and further so they fixed it to be more useful they made it more useful i'm actually doing this in the wrong order but i hope it doesn't hurt it shouldn't at least because i kind of supposed to do aqua uh aqua headless first but it shouldn't matter really So we have another underwater headless, and that's the last one. This one is much easier because he doesn't have a friend, so I don't need to use the Gachin Sugar. Instead, I'm actually killing him with posture damage. But yeah, the, the, the thing is that... Underwater headless... Headlesses are super easy. Like, they're very easy. The ground headless are an actual pain. They have super variable annoying moveset you have to get used to. And they have also like all kinds of weirdness with the hitbox based on how they do the attack. So it requires a lot of like practice to actually know how to fight them. There is actually yeah, a believe... cool... Yeah, there I believe no one really likes Headless. Yeah. Headless are like... Definitely the least loved child of this game. So, uh, that Lone Shadow kill was kind of tricky. Like, actually, funnily enough, this Lone Shadow exists for like the least amount of time. He only spawns after you uh, change the daytime by killing like by obtaining all three items major items and disappears as soon as you kill dragon so that's like very short and also i use the spear on him to bait out him to use his yashoriku sugar which is usually okay i got the weird headless fights already I probably could get the kill if I would do the stab of Strahd, but I'm not used to it yet to use it. But yeah, on that Lone Shadow, you use the spear and for some reason it does a Yai Manip him into... It does a Yai Manip him into like using Yashoriku Sugar by default. And that's weird. But yeah, and that's it is very, very helpful in a speedrun also. Because otherwise yeah, they, he's going to jump around mm -hmm. and your jumping moral 
usually don't connect if yep, he doesn't yep. use a Yashi. Yeah, it, and uh, what's most important about him using Yashi is that he deals posture damage to himself. <laughs> yes. Which making the fight even easier. Not only he just stands IFK and does nothing, he also like is dealing damage to himself. Okay, now we are... Yeah, I'm not sure why I got like kind of weird enemies aggro here. Because it's not the usual. Enemies behave a little different on my movement here. Which I'm not sure about. But I guess maybe I did something differently from usual somehow. But anyway. So, yeah, this is like a very early game area. And that samurai also disappears as soon as you kill dragon. So we have to kill him. And because we are here, we also killing the remaining headless in this area. This is probably the, the most difficult headless. No, that's Go Gokan. Gokan is more difficult. Like the previous that I killed. Aqua is easier than Gokan. I just hate the graves around here. <laughs> graves are awful. Yeah, the boss fight arena is pretty bad on this one. I'm dead. I'm only dead there because of elevation. Like, if I wouldn't stand on top, like, higher than headless, I would actually be able to deflect this hit, but... Because I didn't... I didn't survive the hit. And that's exactly what I was talking about when I meant, like, that... In this fight, so many, like, weird things can happen. Like, your position compared to position of uh, headless matters a lot. I actually worked to the wrong bonfire because I had to, like, idle, because I had to work to... to... temple? Since I have to talk with Emma and get the, the Owl Bell. Owl Bell is our way to kill one boss and one mini boss extra. No, actually two mini bosses. And that's uh, actually also basically an ending playthrough. Oh no, I skipped the dialogue before the dialogue. Yes, and this should be our last talking section. So from now on, it should be all actions now. Now almost. We're gonna have some purchases, but yeah. Mostly it is. It is all we had to talk about was NPCs. Uh, I haven't closed my bottle fast enough. Luckily, I have a <clears throat> nice door open. Okay, insane <clears throat> time loss from actually drinking water. Nothing I could do about it. Saving time for future. <clears throat> Most speed runners does it. Yep. <laughs> Oh, uh, now it's the funnest fight in the entire run. No, that's like the, the coming up section is the worst section of the whole run because the sequence of dragon, fire drawn card, and demon of hatred is absolutely the worst and unrestricted. Like, it's the most RNG heavy part where each one of them can just waste you billions of time for no reason, just because of RNG. And Dragon is probably the most peaceful of them, like, when it comes to most bullshit time losses. Because Dragon is mostly behaving the same, like, he very rarely does super awkward stuff. Yeah, okay, I've got my branch in a very weird position, so hopefully... Yeah, we'll just do the fall off. Yeah, I just didn't like the position and the spawn, so I just went for the peach, peach strat, waiting for the branch to fully disappear. To the timing. 
At least we've got lucky enough. Oh my god, what is this? Okay, that was absolutely terrible because I didn't get the swing when I first jumped. So it's gonna be two lightnings. Like, optimally, this fight goes in one lightning. Did I get the overlap? I thought I oh I get I got like two neighboring lightnings, so that's like the best two lightnings fight you can get. That's very nice. Yeah, for so the, I must have who are, Yeah, for those of you who are not too familiar with this strategy, uh usually what? in a in a casual or play playthrough you just go for lightning and it, it, you didn't. Why I got kills? It, yeah, usually you don't go for any mobile draw, you don't hit the dragon at all. But uh, in, in a speed run, you would actually use a Yashiriku Sugar and also try to get in jumping mobile draw damage to the body of the of the dragon and then use lightning to sort of finish off and start the last phase of the fight. So it's actually much faster than just using lightning here. I healed for a good reason here. I'm not sure why I died. Did I not like level up health enough? But I don't think so. I think like I didn't get knocked by the wind at the start of last phase for some reason. And because of that, I probably got like hit with the sword itself and it deals like extra damage. Super weird. So the last part of this fight is kind of RNG. Like you can save loose time based on what attacks he does and in what order. It's similar how in near you have the angles RNG at the end of a ending prologue, I guess. But yeah, like um, this fight, yeah, you you like in initial phase of the dragon fight, you have to deal as much health damage as possible to make him uh, switch to the. To the needed phase immediately after one lightning yeah i believe that is the only time that the posture bar is is lying that the posture bar doesn't matter on divine dragon yeah posture only doesn't matter left. absolutely yeah. yep I, th I think that is the only time that the posture bar did not work as intended in this game yeah probably can't think of any boss that can't be affected by posture like at all Okay, so the next RNG part comes up, and that's Fire Drunkard Quick Kill. And this Quick Kill is very fancy looking, but there are certain cases when it just doesn't appear to be nice. When the RNG is on your side, like for example when you get hit by the... Oh. By this guy. Mm. I would pray. <laughs> Oh, let's hope the the other guy is as accurate to hit the box. Okay, that's like that was bad, but I like kind of salvaged it. I got so I got sniped after the death blow. That's unlucky. Like there is nothing you can do. It's absolutely random. That already lost me time, and most importantly, I wasted like an extra emblem, so I couldn't fire Cracker Drawn card nearby with the boxes to make sure that if I get the slow explosion, I will be able to. Um, I will be able to to deal damage by the explosive uh, by the explosive box to him with the slow explosion. But then. Like, because of that wasted emblem, I had not enough to use Firecracker, so I had just to do a regular attack and pray that Drunkard behaves, and he did. So that was uh, unlucky, but I got lucky after I got unlucky. That's rather nice. Okay, so there we are taking the Ido to level up some stuff that is going to be useful for the rest of the run. That's the last level up we're going to do. Yeah, and talking to the merchant before getting the idol there was also very important to get enough divine confetti for the confetti, last few yep. apparition type forces. Yep. 
and after Demon of Hatred kills all the enemies in the arena, we just bait him out to the cliff from where Gyobo already fell once. And we're just gonna make him stuck here, and by making stuck here, we have enough time to do all the parkour we want to. And I think I got the fast kill. Yep, I did. So, um, another, another this example works. of from mm -hmm. self using the same arena, to yeah, using the same <laughs> boss fight arena to just our advantage fully, yeah. And so that is it, the uh, only instance that the bosses are killed without a death blow, yep. So, um I did quit out here. I don't think that's like RT friendly strat really. It probably saves nothing this way, but the thing is that you get the dialogue after you beat Demon of Hatred, and while dialogue is proceeding, you cannot interact with the idol. But if you quit out, dialogue gets skipped entirely and you can interact with the idol just fine. Here it's time for our old friend Ape. And since now we have a mortal blade, we will finish his suffering entirely. That's actually kind of important part here. Even though we're not going to use the ability he gives us after killing him, we must kill him there to make Shichimen Warrior to spawn in this arena. <laughs> because otherwise he will not spawn. I guess I mentioned it... Oh, uh, well, I actually have a warp back. Heck. Want to take the idol for some reason, like if you like you do after actually killing Shichimen. So that's the thing I mention every time I speed around this category anywhere. That that Shichimen warrior spawn is super weirdly made, and I have seen the fifth mat at the start of the stream here. So he was the person that helped me to like figure out what was wrong about it. And the thing is that actually you can see me like um, equipping finger whistle as my prosthetic, like making it a prosthetic instead of um, just having the material left in my inventory. And that's actually important thing to do for Shichimen to spawn. Because otherwise he will just not spawn. Because they ho they coded the Shichimen spawn to like multiple flags. One of them is having Headless Ape killed with Mortal Blades entirely in that arena, and the other one is having Finger Whistle as your prosthetic tool specifically. Like, if it, if you just kill Guardian Ape and never turn, like, whatever he gives you, like, the material into an actual prosthetic tool, such as Finger Whistle, he will never spawn. That Shichiman will never spawn. And in my casual playthrough, I got him spawned, Oh no, why did I... Ah, weird. Oh my god, dude. this enemy is awful to deal with if you can just mortal blade him immediately. So if... Um, it, it was so difficult for me to figure out and if not Matt, it, probably this category would have no Shichiban fight in it where I would eventually figure it out, but... In a speedrun, you never think that equipping prosthetic tool, like making it after receiving the material, will matter for the spawn of a boss. Like, it makes no sense. But they just coded it this way, and I'm thanking Matt for providing support with that one. But yeah, we're in Hirata 1. I actually did some air swim toward the Shinobi Hunter, and now we are... Like, it's a super early game area. <clears throat> Enemies-wise, as you could see, like, I was just one-shotting literally the boss. Each swing. The Juzo 1 is more tricky, like the next boss coming up, because he has a shit ton of enemies around him. But it's also one of the cases where... Gachin Sugar will allow us to perform a very weird death blow on an enemy. So yeah, hopefully it goes fine. 
Yeah, Gachin Sugar is very broken that even though you are literally touching the enemy, he, they will still not spot you if you're not in the visible uh, clone, clone. So right now, then he's using the Gachin and then he's gonna crouch right here and then no one's gonna see him. And then he's just, just sitting right at, right at the spot and then we change Sugar. So one thing very important is that you cannot use multiple Sugar effects at yeah. once. So uh, we were going to use Yashi Sugar, but we are going to only going to use it uh, right before our death blow, so so that there is no chance for uh, Juzo to actually spot us, and we are allowed to do the first health bar without any problem. And the second yep. health bar is just same old same old jumping moral draw, and and it's dead. Especially because this is a early game boss, so two jumping moral draw or, or even three. Uh, was it was it three? I think it's three. Three, three, three. three. And then yeah, and then Juzo is just dead. Same same thing here. Uh, Lady Butterfly, uh, you supposed to be one of the toughest boss when you're starting your first character playthrough, but uh, you will see how far she just. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't like the greatest fight. I got the bad opener, and I think I didn't get yeah, the damage. Got, 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 got the kunai opener. It's just. Can be bad. Yeah, it's, it's the best. Uh, sorry, the worst opener probably you can get from her. But yeah, the second phase is much more of a joke because she's just dying into like she does the same actions all the time, and unlike in Glitchless, you deal just enough damage with just two swings because you have the extra uh, demon of hatred, muscle memory. Uh, sorry, muscle memory, just memory, not muscle. Memory. Brain is melting slowly. Is Sekiro's muscle memory? It yeah, works. Sekiro's muscle memory. And the boss is like, no issue. So now it's time to get another very crucial late game item, which is Tanto. I mentioned it briefly before. So we're gonna kill our first Chichimin in the dungeon. And the thing about it is gonna be that this guy is just. Like, they're weird. Shishimans were quite a puzzle to figure out for me when I initially was routing, but what it ended up being is, like, a complete joke. The Shishiman warrior was supposed to be uh, as scary as Headless, but uh, now we just use Yashiriku Sugar and Define Confetti and just circle straight with attack, and there's... Literally no attack in the pieces here. So yeah, the the Tanto is the item that works similar to how you can get bullets in Bloodborne. It's like you can sacrifice half of your health to get five extra emblems, which is gonna be specifically useful during the upcoming segments. Owl 2, like Hirata 2 in general, and Owl 2 specifically, and Ishin fights become significantly faster by using Tanto during them. Yeah, and Hirata, and Hirata 2 is sort of like a secret area. Oh where no, you, you, you oh, can... oh dude, this oh. is such a meme death, like, oh my god, I got it like once <laughs> ever before, but that's such a joke of a death. Like, there is like a meme pixel on the floor with the burning ground that you can stand off while buffing and that's like second time ever literally for me for this to happen like it's so so rare you get this you never ever get this it's a, it's a marathon run it's, it's bound to happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess marathon luck i mean there, there's there's good luck the marathon space. magic and there's also bad luck marathon magic and we we, we see them both in this run. Yep. Okay, I'll use the heal there. So there for Juzo we're actually gonna use Quit Out. Oh, I thought you were going to showcase the, the finger whistle strat. Nah nah. <laughs> I mean it's a nice showcase, but I just well, at this point I just don't remember how to do it precisely, so I will not <laughs> risk it. Yeah, there is yeah, like so, a very uh, cool finger whistle, whistle strat. Yeah. Finger.
but yeah, there was a cool finger whistle strat, but it's slow. Waiting out is much faster. Juzo is a joke though. In this fight, the spam mortal draw and he's dead. Here, he, here I'm gonna use Dante again. Get all the extra. We get all the extra emblems for Owl. And hopefully Owl will go fine. Owl is annoyingly RNG-ish boss. It's not very RNG, but phase 1 is RNG and phase 2 is RNG, so it suck. Time to pray. Pretty good phase one. No, that's actually a bad phase one. Like the good phase one is when you get double slash kill. And it's kind of oh, tricky I was to expecting get. something even worse than that. <laughs> Okay, I would probably get the kill if I would dead angle my mortal draw there in phase 2 and get like the perfect fight pretty much, but that was still, that, that was pretty normal regular good fight for all. Yeah, you, actually, yeah. you actually quit out there as well like you do for Demon of Hatred. I'm pretty sure for real time it saves nothing, like guaranteed. But uh, since I'm just doing the strat I'm used to do, it's no issue that way. Actually, I didn't even reach the idol. That's how bad our position was there, huh? So yeah, we're done with Hirata in general. Now it's time for Ashina Castle cleanup. And... Wait, I... Okay. I moved my camera so weirdly during the loading that uh, I got lost for a second. And Ashana Castle cleanup is not a big deal, to be honest, but it can be annoying. This Ashana elite enemy is... For sure is annoying in phase one sometimes when he decides to not do the slash attacks. There is gonna be also again like the, the quit out strat for for Lone Shadow here. So we kill his friend first and after we murder his friend we quit. Sounds legit. And after that, he will obviously not be aggroed, and we w will be able easily get the the stealth that blow. The yeah, funny thing about the blue guy that we just killed, uh, with the worst possible RNG, he could absolutely do not did not do any uh, slashes, and just pummel you to death. <laughs> And that would be a very, very sad RNG showcase. Okay, the next thing coming up is our Ogre. And Ogre is annoying because of his friends around him. Because not only they can block you, like they just did, but also game really likes to death all his enemies. Yep, exactly like that. Actually, gonna go for the front that low here. So unlike on the very first ogre fights in a game, on this one it doesn't matter when you death low because you don't have the stupid invisible wall, like stupid fog wall. Actually, let's go for double door like always on a showcase. Nah, it didn't work. Heck. Well, that was first uh, part of the jump fail. Like first part of this jump is the most annoying one. The rest is like much more doable. Yeah, so this double doors here basically this mm -hmm. this double door. Yeah, this double door. Danny's door. opening. Yeah, so there's yep. like a very specific spot that you can jump onto the ledge over to the house over there. 
and you can do like a simple jump to the other ledge and then jump over a wall so you can skip these two door opening animation hence uh, the name of double door skip yep oh my god i did hit the that's weird they hit the samurai with actually like first swing which is unusual I like what, but it's fine. Like, yeah, it's doable. Like dying here loses kind of a bunch of time when you are on a good speedrun pace, but uh, it's pretty safe to die here at the beginning. Like after doing two swings. So yeah, we are going for Ishin fight, but Ishin is actually isn't the last boss in this run. Of how routing is, yep, and Ishan, but, uh... Ishan is a very cool fight in this route because you have so many spirit emblems that you can utilize Mortal Draw literally everywhere, like you just use it everywhere you can. Yeah, really if fight. you get the absolute best RNG, Ishan can be dead in like a minute or just, just, ab just about three minutes. And yeah, unfortunately, so, uh, Swall Saints Asian is not going to be the final fight because of how the routing works. Right? Notice how we said that we want to get as much memories and attack power first before we do the cleanup duty on the mini bosses. So Asian also offers us a memory, so you can use that to gain more attack power and do the cleanup work faster. Thank you. Actually, got unlucky in this phase too because oh no, how did I? I didn't get the deflect on the lightning for some reason. This is very scuffed. Okay, I almost messed up like the last phase entirely. Like the last phase is, is super consistent, but I just jumped so early and I didn't get the deflect on the lightning to reversal it that I just got shocked. That's kind of weird. But I actually tackled like phase two with the long combo, so that's nice. I got the hyper poise shitty combo that takes ages to proceed and it's not great to deal with. And that's the issue. And we have like very little left actually. We just need to clean up the bosses that we skipped. The reason why Ishin isn't the last boss because Ishin actually gives you the memory and memory is damage, basically. And damage is always useful. Always, always useful. So all the bosses, like four out of five bosses that we are going to clean up are actually in Mibu Forest. Since Mibu Forest is entire like entirely not affected by the item changes, we can postpone these bosses like to the very 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 end. We are starting with Orin. Orin is actually super annoying RNG ish boss. Because she can turn invulnerable and that's bad. Also, she has like super annoying move set. Oh no! You actually informed your jumping model draw, right? <laughs> that was that was not good fight, but I, I survived for. For the model draw, yeah. so I guess it evens out a bit. Mm, not really, but just just a little bit, just a little bit. Like considering that I whiffed uh, one of the model draws at the start uh, at the start of phase two, yes, it evens out a bit, but it doesn't make it good for sure. And now it's time for the last headless and last drawn card in the game. 
So there is like a weird spots for aggro that I found randomly. Let me get it fast enough. That baits out the ranged attack from Headless, which gives you. Why do that? Like I need to get used to the demo strat more, because that way I could get the kill there probably. Not experienced enough with it yet. And this fight can be a little bit annoying. So, like, I found the place where you can aggro the headless from on top, from on, being on top, and that way you can bait out the range attack consistently that allows you to deal quite many hits for free. And I'm actually doing like a weird strat that nobody is doing for Drunkard Mibu, so I'm going to do it. So because this is unrestricted, I can just quit out to lose the aggro and uh, void out peacefully. Yeah, so we're blown out peacefully. And that's gonna be it for for drawn cards. I can't recommend this strat. It technically can be faster than the the shuriken killing last monkey and death blow, but it's not applicable for glitchless and it's less consistent because there are like outcomes when you get just wrecked by monkeys. Okay, so we have only two enemies left and both of them are Shichimans. That's the guy that we took uh, pros uh, Whistle Prosthetic for. Oh wait, why did it overheat a little? Okay. Now he will stagger one hit early because I did one hit after he got staggered. It's kind of weird how like uh, Shichimin fights work in some aspects, but like most important parts to understand about Shichimin fights that like first of all that angling them is OP because otherwise they're like invulnerable basically because they block any attack and deflect it immediately and teleport. And second of all, their teleporting positions can be like 100% manipulated. And it's based on your position in the arena, like based on where you stand when he decides for a teleport. That's like how he actually like chooses the spot to teleport. And this is the last achievement. I did some weird movement here on top. And that is to be able to do this aerial death blow that I just did. Because normally you can't aerial that blow this guy. Yeah, I believe and... it is some weird glitches that yeah, uh, it's Tom Tom didn't patch out. So when you go out door, if you notice, there's actually a blink of the boss's health bar. I'm actually, gonna, I'm actually gonna show the final time. 115 actually, not a bad time. Not and that's it for Sekiro. Right? Yeah, it's actually a not bad time for sure. GG. Now it's time Slacked. for DS1. Yeah, thank you so much, Rochi, for your help. Hope yeah, thank you for you having me. Man. Actually, like, uh, staying at late night. Hey, it's okay. I, I stay up on late nights all the time. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's, it's a very cool run. Yep, it is actually a very cool run. <clears throat> it's pretty dense to his, like, uh, full fights. Yeah, having 115 on a marathon run is a is is a really fast time for those of you who don't know. Yeah, it's pretty okay considering how much time I spent on Canyon <laughs> when I did void out twice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, considering you you spend that much time on Canyon, this is more impressive, right? <laughs> yep. Well, All right, thanks for having me, man. Yep. And it's time for DS1 old bosses now. Man. Now it's finally time for Regal to come into play. What's up? Hi, Regal. So Regal is the actual like uh, hero of the day because he's restreaming the whole thing. Yeah. For the whole time. Well, you are as well. Well, I am as well for sure because I'm playing the games. But Regal had been there from the very start. 
Yes, I have. Uh, and anyone, since I can't listen to the stream right now because I am restreaming and doing commentary, let me know if the audio is a little off in any way and I can fix it. So thank you guys. But yeah, we're on to Dark Souls now. Dark Souls 1, all bosses. And this is actually the road that's uh, going to beat Regal's ass. I mean, probably <laughs> not, but uh, not, in, not in my execution, probably, but uh, yeah. So um, we start as the Pyromancer, and there are like billion reasons why we start as the yes, Pyromancer at this point. Like Pyromancer is just like turned out to be multiple super reasons. OP. Even the levels are actually kind of useful. Yep, even levels, especially for Dragon Tooth Road, I yeah. guess. Yeah, <laughs> you're exactly. mentioning it, but well, uh, so yeah. like you get the Fireball spell with the Pyromancer's Flame, which is going to be useful for a glitch later. You also get yep. armor which has very specific weights, which we're going to use for another glitch. Uh, and also it's just uh, nice level ups the whole run. Like you actually can get uh, endurance really high, really easily. Yep. So there, there are multiple reasons to start as Pyromancer. And uh, we, we don't get to start with the master key, but we don't need it either. Um, so we're, we're taking these black fire bombs so we can not only kill Asylum, Asylum Demon faster, as you see Dan has already done, uh, we're also going to be using the bombs for multiple things later on. Yeah, and we're going to use bombs for many things. I'm actually going to quit out, even though it's like a real-time sure, run. Just do your muscle memory. Yeah. yeah. So uh, quitting out there when the door actually saves time my GT, since we're, I mean, we're on Speed Soul, so I guess people know that uh, games are measured by, like, in-game time. In case of Dark Souls 1? Yes. And <coughs> skipping the opening door animation is crucial. Also, there is like a very small time save from skipping the fire link, like the Lord Run arrival. Yeah, it saves message. like less than half a second, but it's cool. Yeah. In this route, it does. In Sword Alert, it actually saves yeah, a bunch of time. You can you the rest of the bonfire. bonfire. Yeah. Yep. But in this run, well, still. Yeah, it still it's saves not. time and it's cool and it's not hard to do. So this uh this whole first part is honestly kind of annoying, kind of random. Even even when you're picking up the the flame uh in asylum, you have these hollows yep. trying to block you out. It's gonna be happening here in Berg for a little bit. Maybe Dan will get lucky. There's a cool trick Hope right I there. Oh, Just actually, roll through the uh, Drake stagger there. It's, you get you have a few frames that you can actually roll through that and not get staggered. And here we're going to be buying some stuff from the merchant. Dan's going to buy some arrows, rapier, club, short bow, and he's going to prop swap to purchase the residence key, which is a glitch that is abusing the mouse and controller inputs being used at the same time to swap the category to. Uh, to the key items, but using the context of purchasing the orange soapstone. So it kind of tricks the game into thinking you have enough souls to buy souls, yeah. the residence key, but you're just actually only spending souls in the soapstone. And so that's one reason we can skip the master keys, because we just get the residence key here. We, we need to open the store to get these gold pine resins, which will be useful for Taurus Demon. That's why also why we bought this club. And to cut the no. Hellkite Drake's tail after afterwards. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's scuffed. I think because I toggled, I jumped. I yeah, jump. that was a, that was kind of a scuff sequence there. So and here's the, here's a uh, difference from the dragon tooth row. He actually needs to kill this lizard right here. Yep, lizards that I need to kill to get enough twinkling tide in it so I can dupe it a bit later on. And also, I'm like I actually forgot to. to turn steam and offline with all the game switching so hopefully we'll not get the weird online interactions during this run so it's not legit already like for an actual speed run are you uh, are you online right now yeah yeah <laughs> I, I, forgot. I mean that's a dump it on time safe okay i don't like i just forgot to install yeah steam because did, did I had you see to... install the dll no, anyway, so... anyways, so Dan's moved on past Taurus Demon, and here he's going to pop a Humanity for a drop rate and to heal up. And he's going to shoot down this Drake. Oh. Get a tail cut. Hopefully nothing goes wrong here. 
really right. good hit kind of weirdly, good, but that's good, fine. Good. And he gets the Drake Sword, so we're gonna we we need this Drake Sword just to have something to kill Iron Golem with, basically. Uh, that is the main and reason to get it. And also, we need uh, the yeah, Black Knight. that's right. We're gonna stop here to kill the Black Knight to get the weapon, main weapon for the route. Gonna be whole Black Knight behaves. A couple reposts yes. and a couple attacks from the club in between. Oh, there, there's a chance that a hollow can come up here yeah. and attack Dan, and there he is right there, but he didn't. Unfortunately, not legit run is not legit. Yeah, this oh, is a uh, prepare to die edition. So I obviously like supposed to get Black Knight Greatsword here, but I'm using the software called gadget image that we use for practice runs basically well not practice runs in my case because i i don't care about farming but uh basically it automatically gives you the farming weapon whenever you kill the the black knight so yeah, yeah i've got my black knight greatsword in my inventory without actually getting it from the knight dan is cheating yep I'm also cheating by being online already. So yeah. <laughs> Alright, so this is Sin's Gate Skip. He's going to repost this hollow at a certain spot to activate the death cam here. Yep. And this is going and to prevent is... any new assets from loading. Yep. And that way we just make uh, Sin's Gate to not appear. In yep, the first so he can place run right... Closed through uh, what should be the Sins Gate, but it's not there because uh, the game just won't load it. And it that, that repost is done in just the right location to where there is enough that is loaded that you can still enter, but the gate won't be loaded. Yep. Uh, and he, he rests there because he needs his bonfire for later and just level up some decks and keep on going. He also noticed he killed that hollow on the repost. Um, that is basically just to ensure that that hollow does not catch up with him. And prevent him from resting at that bonfire, because that could definitely happen if you don't kill him. Yeah, that's a VC. Like, Gadget Lemage is a VC3 model. Yeah, for, it really is. Neuro Automata. And so he just quits out as he gets into Sins, and it resets the camera, and he's good to go. Yep. It's very easy to get rid of um, uh, Death Cam. So it's a very convenient tool. Yeah, quit out run, are gonna... useful in so many ways, honestly. Yeah, uh, in this run, we that was the only place where we are going to utilize the death cam. Like yeah. in old old bosses route, like in Swordle, we used three death cams instead of one, which was significantly more, as you can guess. Yeah, I also failed move swap. Move swap is another big thing we have to kind of explain. It's a glitch that allows you to transfer the running attack, the plunging attack, and the rolling attack animations from right-hand weapon to the left-hand weapon by performing yeah. uh, very specific actions with the two-handing bow. Like, you have to buffer two-handing bow and switch bow to the weapon you are supposed to use. And that way you will two-hand your left-hand weapon, which is not doable normally in Dark Souls 1. And for, for some reason, if that happens, then game just thinks that you have no, like, running attack animation or plunging attack animation or rolling attack animation. Because normally the bow weapon. doesn't have information for those yeah. types of attacks, so it just ends up falling back to the information from your right-hand mm -hmm. weapon. And all this is done by basically just abu abusing the action cue system. So when Dan gets... Yep. Uh, when he does this jump, whenever his feet hit the ground, he's basically free to queue up an action. So he, he'll input two-handing the bow as his feet hit the ground. And normally when he comes out of that animation, it would two-hand the bow afterwards. But before that animation completes, he's swapping it out for a different weapon. So he comes out of the roll with the two-handing queued up, and then he queues up the weapon that he had swapped to. There's a lot of things in this run that abuse that action queuing system. That is probably the most useful one, though, is Moose Swap. And here yeah, is there the... Are many and many. 
Here is the Iron That's Golem easy. fight that won't show off the power of Moose Swap too much, but it does help quite a bit in this fight, because the Drake Sword is pretty weak, but we just need something to deal enough damage to get Iron Golem to fall, and we're going to do that by dealing 400 damage to below the knees. Here you see Dan's doing these sequence of attacks to bait him into doing certain things. Uh, and there he goes. He staggered him. That was 400 damage. And then 200 more will make him fall. And if he's standing perpendicular to the bridge like that, if he's close enough to the edge, he'll actually just fall to his death. And so even though we weren't doing a ton of damage with the Drake Sword, if you paid attention to the HP bar there, it, you only needed to do 600 total to kill the boss if you have him situated just correctly, which was a lot of that positioning that Dan was doing there. Yep. That that fight is actually kind of uh, precise. Um, I'd say it's one of the harder fights to get good at to do it quickly in this run. Yep, for sure. And it's time to explain the thing that I forget to explain every time I run the <laughs> Spawner Marathons. The, the yeah, the confirmation book. Yeah, the, it's so it's so like native at this point. Yeah, I understand. That I just don't consider it as a glitch. You just never never explain it so confirmation box dupe is uh, also action queue up glitch that allows you to carry over the like if you queue up the confirmation box during an action the same as we just uh, queued up the the bow for the move swap you actually can open the menu and choose any item you want from consumables bar and use it and then you will have a confirmation box pop up for some reason over it and if you press yes it will actually consume the item you chose with the effect of the items which confirmation yeah. box you choose it's not it's as like... powerful as the dupe that the remaster does if anyone's familiar with that yep. but um it's really easy to do um like anyone can learn how to do it and you can just do it uh Basically, anytime you have downtime, like on elevators and such, and just gets us a little bit closer to the levels yep. that we need. Because the, the 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 route, this route does have pretty uh, tight level ups. Actually, no. This does it? this route particularly, I wouldn't hmm. say it has a like tight level ups. You just level up whatever you can. Well, I know that you have to you have to kill like Capra Demon and Gaping early on. Just I mean, you, you kill the, you, no, you kill them not to get levels. You kill them because it's faster. Oh, I see. You kill them because it's faster because you don't need to do the extra warp to set the bonfire to. Well, we'll get to that later. <laughs> to the undead perish, yeah. So basically, um, the good thing, like this route, is relatively new. It's like half a year old, and. Why the levels, I would rather say, much less tight. Because, for example, you don't even need, like, duping on Duke Skip elevators and stuff much. You, you don't dupe at all. Exactly because you don't need as many souls. Because you don't use magic. Like, just yeah, the fact that true. you don't use magic saves you a lot of souls. And the reason for that, we will see further. In that some It's so way. funny to see these messages on the ground. <laughs> Yeah, messages. Uh, I so, actually haven't noticed them unless you, uh, until you mentioned. So there was a, a quit out that Dan did there uh, when that elevator was reaching the top. Um, so that elevator is unique. Or do you want me to be quiet? No, no, no. Okay. Go that on. elevator is unique, and the other 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 elevators in this game, when you quit out after they're activated, they'll just go right to their final position when you reload. But that one actually will reset to the bottom because it, it doesn't fully uh, save its upper position until it, the animation finishes. So what Dan does is he he jumped at the end of it to reach the top level and quit out before the animation ended, sending it back down which will save him uh, a good chunk of time when he is on his way to Priscilla later on because he won't have to call that elevator back down again. Yep. And also, optimally, I wouldn't need to do an extra warp that I will need to do because of the Peach Blanchstein yeah. spawn fire. But... Yeah, this spawn fire is actually pretty slow, but it's understandable to take in a marathon. Yeah, because the next boss fight is probably the most RNG boss fight in a whole run. I would so, say it definitely um... is. Yeah.
so we'll see how that goes. I had very hard time with Ornstein Small when I was derusting for this, but... Yeah, we'll th this boss is just, do. like, since there's two enemies, they're constantly, like, playing off each other, like, it, it, you can just get so many different possibilities. Hopefully, Dan's going to be looking for three different possible uh, openings here from Ornstein. I'm going to try to isolate Ornstein by himself as best as possible to uh, kill Ornstein first and try to face off against Super Snow. So this is a good opening here. Um, he's going to get two attacks off. Okay, snow shoveling, so he's going to avoid that. That's the weird fight, but fine. This is, yeah, this is fine. That Definitely, like, a decent fight Not a fight fast there. fight, but it's okay. Yeah, not the best, but definitely, you'll take that. I will take anything that is deadless, as long as So, it's the main reason that you kill Ornstein first is... First of all, he's just easier to isolate by himself. It's it's that. Plus, you can stagger super small at, as you see Dan doing yeah. right here. You can just mostly stun lock him to death. And he's a lot easier to manipulate than Super Ornstein. You can't actually stagger Super Ornstein. Okay, that was very tight elevator to me. Yeah. But I did make it, so it's nice. Okay, so there is time for us struts. Yeah. <laughs> the famous our strut. Which is just duping the soul. Yeah, well, out. so we we are trying to figure out in a more optimal way to like pop one extra soul. And we Dan had the idea to do it while Guinevere was dying, but we had to figure out a perfect like movement option to get you in range. For the Lord Vessel to go into your inventory mm -hmm. and be able to pop the, uh, and to dupe the bone as well. And just double yeah, rolling exactly. out of the, uh, arrow shot ended up working perfectly. Because you need to be a certain distance into the room after you kill her in order to get the Lord Vessel. So, Dan, uh, I, I'm not actually familiar with the menu you're doing here. So you just QS spike, okay, buy yeah. the second spike, and uh, what you do there, you buy the shield that you're going to use for the rest of the game, and okay, you also buy like 999 arrows for the QS. And you store a negative quantity, right? And you store a negative quantity, right? right yeah. With the pikes, uh, by viewing them. So, And he's about to do a brightness dupe with that negative quantity yep. stored, and drop negative 998 twinklings, which gives him a positive uh, number so now he just duped yep. a bunch of twinklings so now he's set up for m multiple things a uh, bunch of menuing glitches there that are kind of difficult to explain yeah they they, they go like really back to back so those yeah. spikes they aren't just for you know like negative quantity do they aren't but we actually buy them in order to perform a glitch equip stop manipulation that will happen a little bit later on yes yeah it just ha so happens that the you can also use it to store a negative quantity yep so the reason why you actually do the under menuing here so that you can uh, get the negative dupe earlier and upgrade your black knight great sword to maximum right so after this after this fight uh dan will have uh, the ability to upgrade his Black Knight Greatsword to maximum. That's an interesting Gargoyle fight. I have no clue how <laughs> I actually didn't get hit by that follow-up because I got confused. Because so, normally if you if you trade, you you just go for the for the follow-up. Um like for the running attack immediately because Gargoyle usually jumps back. But this time so to like explain the routing that's that's going on here, that the uh, the beginning of the run is kind of just getting to Anderlando, getting yep. the Lord Vessel and a bunch of souls so you can wield the Black Knight Greatsword and that you can warp as well. And then after you do that, he he goes and kills Gargoyles because he needs to access Stray, uh, plus Gargoyles as a boss, and he's trying to get to Stray so that he can get the doll so he can go to the Painted World. To get an item from the painted world. So that's kind of what Dan's doing right now. And also on the way to Stray, he's talking to Petrus to get the Homeward Miracle, which is one of the reasons why we started as Pyromancer, so we can no. do an item swap glitch that allows us to spell do swap, a spell swap. Oh, yeah, sorry, spell swap that allows us to perform the oh yeah, the Homeward Wrong Orb. 
Uh, and that's why we talked to Petrus right there. And it's yep. also an extra benefit of killing gargoyles beforehand, as you get enough souls to upgrade your Black Knight Greatsword to plus five, yep. and to buy the Homeward spell from Petrus. And the Homeward Wrong Works don't save a ton of time mm -hmm. in all bosses, but they do save, uh, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 seconds. So. I don't know why I make this mistake, but I again dropped DGH, so my Hydra RTSR uh. are going to be all cold as <laughs> the bike. Yeah. I'm too lazy to pick it up. I probably could, but... Uh... You dropped it at the nest here? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> kind of weird, like... I actually did it once as well in my D-Rusts this month, so it's kind of weird. So if, you, if you've, it's, it's well. if you've seen the Dragon Tooth route, but you haven't seen this route, this is a much better straight even fight. Mm. Much, much better. Yeah. Straight even this fight. boss is uh, really annoying with a plus zero dragon tooth. Well, plus five BKGS, not too bad. I guess not too bad is quite a... Yeah, he's, not good. saying he's uh, amazing boss fight, but yeah, not as bad. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so now stray. we have Stray down, and so Dan's going to go pick up this doll. It's going to allow him to get into the painted world because there is a particular item in the painted world that we need yep, called the Red Sign Soapstone. Obviously, we need to kill Priscilla anyways. It's all bosses, but the, the, this is a big reason why the routing is structured this way. is because we want to get the Red Sign Soapstone early so we can use a glitch ESM that Dan mentioned earlier to turn it into Red Tear Stone Ring. I think, are you about to do Gwendolyn right here? Yep, and okay. hopefully you want to explain it. Game version, yes. Okay, will work. Yeah. Since that's an important part. Do you want me to explain it, or want you to explain it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You do the okay, I'll do it. Right. So Dan did a quit out there because there all the all the enemies in this game have like a a timer. There's a universal timer that's about five seconds uh, that controls when their AI starts and when they can start noticing you and reacting to you. And doing a quit out will reset the timer to a consistent time. That's what he did there first. And then after that, he did a series of unequips and toggles to uh, mm -hmm. deload his character. Because when you toggle or unequip gear in this game, you actually end up deloading from the enemies and so what he did is he timed his deloads in such a way that it actually skipped over the ai uh timer that gwendolyn has and gwendolyn just didn't even notice that he was there so yeah. it was allowed him to skip basically the entire fight um which you can yep. do that on pretty much any enemy any boss in this game with the proper setup but it happens to be very fast for gwendolyn as well uh, most of the also other bosses, mention, it's not fast. Also, I have to mention that this particular trick works a little bit different for me and for other people for yeah. some reason, and we still haven't like figured out what exactly makes it like that. It's some yeah, there. It so it really like we have different setups depending on how quickly we go through the fog wall um, to time our toggles just perfectly. Um, but for some reason, it doesn't work for Dan <laughs> super well. Yeah, like, the, we can't for figure example, out the, entrance, the entrance I got would never work for anyone else but me. Yeah. Because it was, like, a pretty not very fast for gate entrance, and doing my setup wouldn't work for anyone. But for my game, it works. Yeah. Well, you got it, so that's good. The really yeah, cool that's... strat that gives a lot of consistency because normally Gwendolyn's very random and it's also just purely faster. For for yeah, other it's bosses, it's not faster, faster so. but for Gwendolyn, it, it 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 really is. And now you see Dan in Painted World trying to grab the red sign soapstone, and this is kind of a this potentially scary part trying to dodge these crows. Dan got hit on the way up there. Uh, yeah, and then he's probably gonna have to up. heal, I would say, because he's gonna run down yeah, this bridge course. with a bunch of hollows shooting at him, as well. Nice. He should. There's there's some pathing you can do to make it to where you don't get shot very often, but it can still happen. So yeah, healing is. Yeah, I usually idea. like get shot once at the yeah. very last bit because it's like. Like I dodge the first two arrows consistently, normally. 
Yeah, it's definitely not it's... unheard of to get shot like once here. Oh, oh you got that's actually unlucky to get that super late shot there. Oh my god. I would actually like super yeah, weird. Yeah, you got a really weird pattern there. That's unfortunate. So I got like the super late yeah. uh, left hollow arrow, and then I got very fast second arrow from mm -hmm. him and very fast like second arrow from right hollow. Yeah, kind of that way. is a pretty uncommon pattern to get. Yeah, if I wouldn't get initial hit, it would be much better, but yeah. All right, well, um, so no, um, he's already crammed is the term here because he bought the yep. uh, pikes, the uh, stack 990, of 999 yeah. pikes. There's actually a, just a, a, a hidden mechanic One. in this game um, mm -hmm. where if you reach, what is it, 10,000 uh, weight units, you actually reach the maximum inventory that you can uh, hold in this game, yep. which normally you wouldn't even come across this in a casual playthrough. Um, but it, it's like a leftover mechanic from Demon Souls that they didn't get rid of. They just added a super high arbitrary limit to it to where you wouldn't normally reach it. Now, when you get to that level, that, that uh, equip load, it, weird things happen. You can't pick up anything new. Uh, any new items that you get, they'll just immediately go to the ground. But also, you can't unequip your ring slots. Um, but you can do uh, this particular trick. Oh it's kind of hard to explain. Where he's going to take the uh, the ring that he has in his slot, which is the ring of the firstborn that he got by Gwendolyn, and he's going to turn and he's going to swap that ring out for the red sign soapstone. The red sign soapstone actually has the same item ID as the red tear stone ring, so the game is just going to think that it's red tear stone ring. Why does the and yeah, that was a sketchy painted world. <laughs> yeah, it was like, Very like the, the bridge really wanted me to be dead, but yeah. I did my best here. So that was Priscilla. Priscilla actually was pretty calm. I actually, you like, will see the ESM glitch pretty soon here. It's very quick when it happens. It's just like a really complicated glitch. It's a lot easier to perform than it is to explain it. It's much easier to perform than it is to explain, <laughs> to be honest. It's like, it's one of the things that is, uh, like, it's it's imp it's very easy to explain what it does. It's very difficult to explain why it does what it does. Yeah. Yes, Dan is playing online. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing online because I actually, like, you have to play online for Nier Automata speedrun that I've done. So I had my Steam offline and uh, oh, sorry online, and I forgot to switch yeah. during the. All right, so that that was it. He did that that punch with the catalyst or the talisman and talisman, uh, yep. went to his helmet slot and during the animation, pressed A, and then he swapped the er, removed the ring and just selected red turstone ring. That's it. That's it. Yeah, also the part that you usually don't see, because it's like uh, defaults like i don't know stored index is that i had to open my consumables yeah. mm -hmm. to choose like the consumables yeah uh, you have to like IPC. make sure it goes to the right uh points to the right inventory type yep so here's the first homeward wrong warp here homeward wrong warp. oh nice first try first so first he's try. gonna go to this is gonna take him to undead or not uh to uh undead bird yeah undead bird yeah and he's just gonna immediately go down to lower berg with this lower berg skip i was gonna move like swap to and heal this, to perform this skip i actually had to sit on the bonfire in undead parish yes that's mm -hmm. when i actually that, he, my he right after he did that warp uh he he rested at undead parish which is at the default location the developer placed default location to here and upon performing mm -hmm. the wrong warp and resting at the other bonfire it teleports him here in uh instead of his last bonfire and now his his last bonfire is set to that garden bonfire so when he warps out from this he's actually going to go back there which is uh an extra cool function of the routing oh for home yep. wrong warps and the problem with that bonfire is that you can't warp to that bonfire yeah. unfortunately do you want so. to have it set as your last one for this uh, portion of the run yep. so here's a transition like clip Finicky glitch, yep. I got it first try. 
This is death insane first out of bounds. Also, I had an insane Capro fight with Dumpless Struts, which is like super weird strut, but uh, yeah. With the look with down? The camera. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that dog can bite you when you're trying to attack Capra, but if you just look down, it like makes the dog act weird. <laughs> it like runs forward, so it doesn't like... It, it, it not, not just... It, it runs for it like falls off yeah, on the stairs and presumably weird. it happens because of like the because when you don't see what you this get... is so bullshit i oh, actually got this board roll and i got sniped God. here that's unfortunate. that's very unfortunate well you can just well that's i can't you need the souls you... Mm, I actually, you just warp no, to fire link right no Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, actually, I can warp too far. Yeah. Like, and don't, and don't it's pretty much. pretty slow, but you can... It's a like mega slow, but... yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just annoying to, to kill the gaping much later on. Yeah, gaping in these new melee-only routes can be pretty annoying, with depths out of bounds, especially. Uh, like, sometimes he doesn't even death, slam, but also, yeah, the channeler can shoot you as well. That particular death, I don't think it ever happened to me yet, because I never got sniped by the, like, like after store roll. I don't know. I don't make it this far into runs very often, because this is, like, super <laughs> far into the run. I mean, just leave it in practice. Yeah. I, I, I don't have, uh, I don't usually get hit by the... Channeler with Dragatooth. I mean, normally, even if he shoots you. Oh my god, where are these dogs? I guess uh, we're gonna uh, is, dupe yeah. the souls anyway. Seemingly, how it goes. Yeah, if you die, you're gonna lose, what, 120,000? I'm just gonna go all the way back, actually. Yeah, so those aren't instantly angroed. I mean, you might as well just heal and move swap. Oh, no. Okay, no move swap, all right. Yeah, that is, that is like, that, that's how I roll when I do YOLO, Capra. Now I see. All right, okay. So I guess we're doing depths out of bounds again. This is a transition oh, clip. Later. That is using the two loading zones that are here. I think it was a little late there. Yeah, yeah. Really. yeah it was kind of not very little late, to be honest. <laughs> it was late. pretty bad. Yeah, so this, this skip isn't too hard. Cap or gaping is can, is just annoying in this route. He is very annoying. Yeah. Also need to move swap somewhere. Yeah. So probably will move swap. Before the jump. So also the annoying part about this is RTSR setup because like. Mm -hmm. uh, not with all jumps, not with all like combinations, you can get the RTSR set up to work as you want it to work. And fall damage can be again. pretty inconsistent in this game. If I'm gonna get sniped there again, I'm just like gonna be pissed. Yeah, see this time. I mean, this time I was a bit slower on my movement, but still. All right. Yeah, keeping first try focus. That was like purely RNG death. And it was like very stupid. I mean, most of the deaths on gaping are RNG deaths. Yep, because uh, in the melee routes, if you don't get the slam opener, you are already like yeah, majorly really fucked. Bad. It's like you, it, you can't like quit out, or it'll just take you back to <laughs> the top before you did the yeah. fog gate skip. It, it's it's not good. You really want him to and do the slam, in... which he doesn't always do. And also, even like in this route, you will lose our TSR immediately if you do that. Yeah, you'd have, you would have to heal. Yeah. Okay, so we have to go for the pike. The pike. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I so actually is, landed on the railing is, nicely, and oh, that's why insane! Wow, what a setup. 
What a setup. <laughs> so that's the that's Wallers. the pike that weighs 999 pikes. That's why he was moving so slowly. Um, so this is a pretty cool hydra. This is what my R1 doesn't work. Oh, that's. Excuse me. I mean, I hope good. I just pressed it late, but it didn't feel very very promising. This is a this yeah. is a fall damage cancel. He's trying to hit this piece of rock here, and then he's gonna put him in a plunge animation. Uh, let him pop. roll in the air. He dodged the ground basically. This is fine. I did like super weird movement here, kinda. No, I don't need to drop the pike. I don't have DGH to drop. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh. super weird. But at least I. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I need pike. Like you initially buy two pikes, not only to store like negative quantity, you can store negative quantity without buying anything, but uh, because it's just like you don't need to pick up the dropped pike. Yes, you, you, but so just you want to, you want a pike anyways for the air rolls that we're going to be doing later, and also butterfly. Yeah. Yes, and butterfly as well, uh, but you don't want a pike that weighs nine hundred ninety nine units, <laughs> and if but it. What you could do is just keep the, the pike that's 999, drop it, pick it back up, and that resets it. But Dan chooses to buy two. Uh, and right there, he accidentally dropped both of them because... Yeah, didn't have because I didn't the, have DGH the, yeah. that they usually yeah. have. So this is uh, this is to basically just to save Dusk to get into the DLC. Um, you, yep. you, you have to kill Hydra and rescue Dusk to even just access to spawn, the DLC bosses. Yeah. Spawn the key for the DLC. All right, so this is just cleaning up more bosses and dark roots. We're on our way to Seth. That is the, the... hardest skip incoming. Yeah, ruin. this is ruin and skip Giga. coming up, which I, I hate this skip because it is, it's real finicky. Also, that oh, RTSR yeah. setup can be... Dan does this meme jump. That RTSR setup can be annoying because that enemy can be pretty random, but we actually recently found a slight uh, AI manipulation for that enemy I guess it's not very recently it's been kind of a while i, think. I mean it's, it was Since like this year. this year um was this you year? just hold block the enemy well, is not this year but yeah. like six yeah sure that it's <laughs> like 60 percent more likely to be two-handing and the two-handed attacks are like guaranteed rtsr setups yeah like the one-handed attacks are terrible like uh, she has three different no four different no three different <laughs> that i can think of one headed attacks. well you can like do rolling the rolling attack, attack light, yeah rolling hard like uh, light heavy and rolling yeah and both it. rolling and light are just terrible yeah for rtsr at least light if she does the follow-up you can oh my god master tier move swap in sif arena no oh my god easy clap so. did you do the quit out yeah i did all right so yeah, you see Seth doing that turnaround animation there? That's because Dan quit out at the bug wall, which actually messes up the boss's AI. But it actually saves in-game time to quit out at that wall. And while Seth is doing their turnaround business, you just go pick up the Hornet Ring. And... Yep. It's all good. And now it's time for the butterfly. This is a really, really cool strat. Uh, so one of the problems strike, that sure. we initially had with this new full Pulling melee new routes walls, yeah. was that we didn't have a great way to kill Butterfly without any magic. So at first, uh, when Dan was the first one that like tackled routing these new routes, and he was he was just duping firebombs and tossing firebombs at the Butterfly. But our community genius, Androv found a setup that allows you to kill Butterfly very quickly, completely melee, by using a Pike Moose Swap. So this whole time we've been using a Rapier Moose, moose Swap. Well, this is the Pike Moose Swap, which also gives you a double hit. But the double hit attacks are really close together in timing, which allows you to actually hit the Butterfly with both hits. But it, you need a somewhat precise positioning setup not super precise the timing is a little more precise than the positioning timing is much more precise yep. dan messed it up just slightly there uh, i'm not sure if you're late or early um, was there it was early it was yeah. early and actually tends to so he got early. he got one hit off but he didn't get both hits so he has to redo it Let's see if he gets it this time yep easy clip 
So there, yes. uh, the thing about the strats, like the most painful thing, is how much time you lose to retry it. It is like 15 seconds. More like 20, actually. Really? Hmm. Yeah, it, it loses 20. Well, just don't mess it up, because it's really easy. I mean, it's not really easy. If it would be really easy, I wouldn't mess it up. But yeah, <laughs> it, it, this, like, this particular strat is like very... It's not um, hard, it is easy to mess it's up. It's very, yeah, it's easy to mess up, and yeah. usually, like, when you're slightly rusty, it's yeah. much easier to oh, mess yeah. up. I, that's definitely true. It's, it's very field-based, and yeah, you just get used to it. So, um, here is a uh, cool trick. So, for a while now, we've been skipping ringing the bells uh, for, for this category, which mm -hmm. would... Uh, Normally, we would ring the bells so we can place the Lord Vessel so we can go into uh, Duke's archives, but we have not placed the Lord Vessel because we have not rung the bells to get to uh, to Frant. So Dan is actually going to have to do this seam walk to skip the Golden Fog Gate that is preventing him from entering Duke's archives. So he is getting on this seam here and he's using his uh, bow to get down the seam and... Doing this without the bow is kind of crazy hard, so pretty much everybody does it this way. Um, he, he's just running on like a, a very small pixel wide wall and then jumping onto At this the end, roof. I actually was close to mess up, I think. I was like pretty far right with the last roll and my analog stick movement. So he's now he's, uh, he's on top. But he needs to clip back inbounds, and there's a there's a really annoying clip inbounds here. Dan's really be... annoying. It was until Andrew figured it's out the sword jump. It's honestly still annoying, of... but it's less annoying. No, it's not. It's so much easier. I mean, than... yes, but it's still annoying. <laughs> it's not. Uh, I don't know. We'll, Maybe we'll again, disagree. my game is cursed, and like it's actually like working very well. For well, me. I mean, it, it works. It's just like setting up a store jump's annoying, and then if you just slightly off yeah, like, in your you, lineup, you, need... you have to set up a store jump again, which is also just annoying. So, but it works much better yeah. than what we were doing before. That's for sure. It's like store jump apparently gives that instant yeah. jump, um, and that uh, somehow affects like how the clip works. Yeah, way. I don't like this health. Ugh. This is also especially a knowing scary that scary part of the run with the enemies around. Yeah, this upwarp saves absolutely no time, real time. But no, it doesn't. But it's cool. It's cool, yeah. So there we do a glitch called upwarp. It teleports us on top if we stay like close to the elevator. I'm yeah. actually not sure why it works like that, but it's... it's it saves like two actually. seconds in game time, but... Yeah. Just puts you right up there. Are you doing the bow, Duke Skip? Okay, cool. This oh is... Oh my god, dude. This is a... Oh, you messed it up. So this is a pretty yeah, a, new way the... that we have to uh, Duke Skip, which is... a. Uh, Pretty easy, um, and Pretty it allows easy you. Until you fail it. <laughs> I mean, it, you can you can mess it up. So, but um, the the coolest thing about it is that it lets you land on like the railing every time, which is gonna save you a little bit of time because landing on the railing actually aggro's the hollow up ahead, so you don't have to knock him out of the way. Yep. Is that that That's in addition sure to? Really nice making the skip just really simple in general is, yeah is awesome. the thing is that it's it's the reason why we use bow like for uh, like one of the reasons why i use bow for a golden for gate skip for for duke's archives is that bow locks your rolls to yeah. four directions it's the same as lock on in this game so when you like using the bow you actually can don't worry about rolling slightly left or right yeah yes yeah, so you don't even have to worry about like yeah and during like, just the right roll angle very nice yep okay i'm obviously not gonna do crystal cave slope right route. so there there's a uh really fast way to get through this area but it's not exactly like marathon friendly because it's very easy to mess up and you will lose a lot of time if you die to it so dan's yeah, just gonna do a, a easier way yeah 
to get through it. Especially because of Golden Forgate Skip. Yeah, like you'd have to redo all this I stuff. guess this Golden Forgate Skip was the last time to retry, but still. So what do we do? We just go through the area casually. Yep, just take some fall damage to set up a uh, red stone ring for the boss. Yep. And uh, coming up, like, the, honestly, the, the, the boss fight is two things. It's one, not getting any clams. Two, not failing the move swap after you shoot the crystal here. Because once, once you, if you do both those things, the boss dies very easily. Um, Dan is going to be doing very specific pathing here to ensure that the clams do not enter the arena with him. Yep. Oh, we're going to have a cursed bodies in the... Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I already can see them. Yeah. Sure. Um, and then hopefully he doesn't fail the move swap afterwards, because that can also kind of make the fight scary. Oh, no. Well, luckily, there is no cursed body blocking my arrow. <laughs> That would be pretty unfortunate. <laughs> there you go. All right. And I think this is DLC time, right? Yep, it is DLC time. So after we, like, the reason why we go to this area in the first place is just to get the DLC key. Yeah. Um, so the only thing we have left to go through DLC. Actually, um... Going to DLC in this route, rather, is just because, well, DLC is not easy and quite RNG-ish in some aspects, especially Calamite. So you want to get rid of it as fast as possible. Because previously, DLC was as important as, like, doing ESM and going to Ander Londo for Lord Vessel just because there is Dark Beat. And since there is no Dark Beat anymore or Hidden Body for us, the only reason to go to DLC there as early as possible. Actually, it's not I mean, only the the routing, like the convenience of killing annoying bosses fast. It's also the bonfire that we have lost. Yeah, right. Saved because uh, we, That's, we cannot uh, warp this bonfire. The big thing as well for the um, not ringing the bells in this route. So all, all, the old routes would have had to go and kill four kings in order yep. to. Yes. Uh, place the Lord Vessel with Cath, yep. and then get into Duke's archives that way. Um, but now, with the Golden Fog Gate skip, we don't have to do that. We can uh, delay Four Kings for later on, and keep this bonfire here as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's check out the... This is a very the annoying keys. boss. Uh, hopefully Dan yeah, yeah, doesn't annoying. get very easy, but really very annoying. Yeah, it's not. It's just like very random. So we'll see how nice Guardian is to Dan. Relatively nice. Yeah, not too bad. Just one lightning. So which, it's fine. There is like definitely hard things about this boss and it's close range lightning that's yeah. like the only difficult mm -hmm. part about it yeah but if this boss wants to fuck you up he will yes he, he can just spam lightning at you all day and then you you just yeah. can't really approach it's it's very annoying i would say most of the time it doesn't do that but it definitely happens so yep. Dan's gonna do another quit out here to prevent these enemies from oh, aggroing no. on him. Ugh. Did you fall? Oh, I hope I'm you not, don't sure. fall on reload. Yeah, okay, here. it's fine. Okay, good. I mean, the, the, <laughs> how perfectly I rolled in this like. I have this, definitely this... fallen there and died. So. <laughs> yeah, I definitely fell off, uh, but I think I walked off before we yeah, jumped. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think I actually... That, that quit out was just to prevent these enemies from aggroing on him. Because uh, they are they really annoying to dodge. I, and no, he's in red stone range. Uh, I oh, equipped the pike in the wrong slot. No. Did you hit the ground? <laughs> no, I didn't. That's some weird, like... Okay, rain. you're you're alive. Alright, that's good. I blame Remastered. So this is the arrow... Remastered Liquid Busted Sword. 
This is the aerial glitch, which relies on having a very precise equip load, just above 25%, oh. which the game just allows him to chain arrows uh, and then do a fall damage cancel. So you basically iframe the ground. Yeah, we actually didn't explain the plunges, but... Uh, well, I, I mentioned it earlier, but yeah. It, it's just did. different ways to fall damage cancel. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, and we have Artorias, and Artorias is a very... Very hard. Fight. <laughs> yeah, Using Artorias... Using actually a regal strats. Poor Artorias gets bullied in speedruns. And I hope my Calamite gonna be better than the last run I had because so, I haven't touched Calamite since then. This upcoming uh, fight is the bi the biggest reason for all of the rerouting that has been going on the past like yep, four, four for months. Sure. Um, recently was discovered a, dif a, a, a different way to kill Calamite without using Goth. It had already been known about for a while, but we found a new way to do it, which doesn't rely on getting the strong magic shield. And it's also faster than that method as well. Uh, and it, later on, it was also found that you can kill him without even shooting him in the air because the tail hitbox from Calamite reaches all the way to the ground. So Dan is actually going to be using Moose Swap Black Knight Greatsword attacks to hit this massive tail hitbox and uh, just kill Calamite this way without activating Gong. Yeah, well, let's see if he get. It doesn't matter, but I'll, I want to see if you get a double hit opener here. You really just want to get one hit, then. Oh, okay, yeah. Getting a double hit on I the opener on is very hard. Luckily, BKGS does not need it. Uh, and this is Yeah, with BKGS, it's probably even a little bit harder than with DT, just because of the length. Yeah, yeah, but you just don't need it. You just need to get one hit. Yeah, you don't need it. And so Dan is doing right here is he is using the this HP bar glitch to see when Calamite is going to return. Uh, so he can time his approach to a specific spot so he can yeah, do a backstep running attack to land the a double is this. The problem with this is that Calamite's approach, like his comeback timing is absolutely random. Yes. So you he don't has, know like, when he's coming back, and you need to get to that spot quick. So you need to know when he's coming. So there, and I'm also doing very specific positioning and pathing in order to get the right attack from Calamite on top yes, of that. Right. So the, where he's standing is actually baiting out this specific attack, uh, yep. and then running forward to a safe spot and doing a back step uh, attack to nail the uh, the double hits on him. Um, and this HP bar glitch basically works by y you either lock on to an enemy to see their HP bar or you deal damage to them. But then you look away before the HP bar dissipates. And so then the next time you look at that enemy's direction, you will see an HP bar appear even through walls. And that actually is a way for you to tell when Calamity is coming back. And it's a glitch that like has never been used in any sort of way before, but it just happened to yep. be extremely useful for this. And yep. you that actually, was actually a smooth fight. Yeah, that was you didn't even get a rare cycle. Um, yep. And so, and Calamite actually dies as soon as you see that death animation. So Dan just quits out. The arena is still unstable ground. Uh, so he actually gets warped back up to the beginning, and then Calibre dies soon after. And that sends Dan all the way up here so he can then do the next skip, which is going to be Township Skip. And he's going to do a very specific bow setup here and do a standing jump attack plunge, uh, which the bow setup is going to put him in just the right spot. So he hits this ledge, and then he's going to do a delayed roll to start an air roll chain to get to no, the bottom of this no. very very deep elevator right, and messing up his uh setup a little bit there but it's okay no i also messed up there oh you the don't rolling. have stamina i actually don't have i actually stamina. had no stamina yeah, but i also yeah. like messed up the the roll itself yes yeah, so this is just this is a very long shaft and you need like four air rolls plus like the extra distance that the plunge gives you as well but doing the standing plunge requires you to be in a very precise oh spot. Oh my god. It broke my muscle memory. Oh no. <laughs> Rip. 
So, he, so he's going to get all the way down to the chasm of the abyss. And this is a this is a big reason why the route yeah, yeah. went fully melee, is because this is very fast and getting down here if you don't mess up, and mm -hmm. um, it but it totally skips dark bead is the problem. So that's one of the big reasons why the route went fully melee. Just like you know, you're not even getting dark bead. Why even bother getting any magic, especially because fall control isn't really needed for anything anymore. Yep. Like the. The township skip is, it's tricky with the like how you rebind inputs and stuff to be able to get the delayed roll consistently, but it's actually not difficult. It's just that. No, nah, it's it's up. fine. It's very. Simple. I I can definitely see messing it up if you haven't uh if you're a little rusty on it though. So yeah, here's Manus. He did a little fog gate skip out of there, which, which uh, saves a few seconds. Jump yeah. straight to the fight. This sinister. A weird okay, stone. Jump back, so he gets a dark beat here. Should be able to finish. I knew that off. he is gonna do no scream, so oh, I that's... waited for it. Yeah. Oh, it job. was because it, it was actually because of that stupid stone on the side, so I took like a wider angle right to make sure that I don't get hit. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. went too far behind him with my running attack and because of that. Yeah, that's that's something that comes up every now and then is those stones in the fight can actually be quite annoying. Depending on how it, yeah. the fight goes. Like, uh, luckily, my experience helped me to not. Yeah, yeah, like that was good. That attack. was good. Though I probably like, against this attack, I probably would succeed. Yeah, probably. I think you would have if you had committed to it. Yeah, um, but it's okay. So this is um, rather to not come back all the way back from. Yes, the... absolutely. Because if he died there, it would be a very long run back. So. This this is I don't really like that setup. Light town skip. It's not in no armor. It's fine. Yeah, it's gonna be another transition clip like the one we did in yeah. depth. That Dan getting. is setting up his position here in very exact ways, where he uh, does this transition clip right here. He is going to clip through the floor at an exact right spot, and the the transition clip is basically just uh, abusing two different load zones there. So it actually he he enters New Londo for like a couple frames, but then backsteps back onto the elevator. And so New Londo loads first, but his position is still stored up top. So he actually just clips right through the ground uh, because the elevator shaft loads later, and he. Loads in at a certain Holy spot to where he lands on another gosh. seam. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that was like. Well, that gives us more time to Initially, when exploiter. you fall off. Yeah, initially when you fall off, it's always like kind of janky with the camera. So there, I messed up. Yeah, this is a this is a, a tough skip. Um, so that yeah, that positioning sure. that he does influences like where he clips through, and he clips through in a place. Mm -hmm where he falls on top of another scene and he does a quit out. And because he, this is another weird thing, uh, because he stood up without any ground below him, when he hits the ground and dies, it actually delays his death, similar to like a fall control fall quit control, out, yep. um, which actually keeps him alive and it stores his position onto the scene below. And then you also saw him do a, another bow setup with a roll and a back step to get below and then to walk on another seam. And walking on the seam that he's eventually going to get to is like the toughest part of the skip because it's like pixel wide. Yeah, but it's it's hard. very easy to fall off. It's hard to even see where you are. And if you fall off once, it makes it even more difficult to recover. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the same kind of seam as you do have gfgs4 but it's much much easier to navigate yeah it's a lot more straight uh there's not a whole bunch of stuff blocking your vision for this but it's still still not super easy like this takes a lot of practice okay fall off okay. once that this well, first the, part uh, it's honestly it's... the hardest part is this this the first part of the seam that dan just fell off at right here but uh, it's yep uh, like okay. the thing is that i all know <laughs> oh no! I, think I stored my position at the yeah, board, I think you, I think it probably did. 
No, it didn't. It didn't? Probably. Wow. It didn't. Insane. I'm surprised. That Yeah, that looked like it was bad. Oh my god. Right, cool. I'm menuing the wrong way. So now he he's arrived at the end of the scene. He's going to do another set of arrows uh, and then arrive below in Quilog's domain. Which this skips all of Blight Town and prevents him from needing the master key at all. Which at the beginning of the run, you might remember, he did not take the master key because he started Pyromancer and Black Fireballs. And this Quilog fight is real nice. There's two running real packs nice. and she is dead. Easy. Dead Lamo. So this yeah, is. Yeah, that was a bit scuffed. Uh, a bit scuffed BTS, but. That's yeah, that's okay. can be annoying at times. This is like. Essentially the cleanup stage of the run. It's not as easy as it was with like Dark Bead, but still, like, you, you're, you're just tearing through these. Uh, basically garbage bosses that you know like uh sure. don't have a lot of yeah. hp or anything and you, you're just going through them like paper and so here's a here's another really cool skip called uh fire sage elevator clip if you notice this yeah, elevator, elevator clip is amazing if you notice this elevator is actually loading in a little bit late and what dan is doing is quitting out in front of it and his the stand-up animation after quitting out is moving him slightly backwards which allows him to clip through the floor. And luckily, there is a plungeable enemy, Fire Sage, below, and he just plunge attacks and lands on top of it and doesn't die. And then the boss's AI is also not loaded because he didn't cross the fog wall and he just kills yep. him easily. And we actually take the bonfire here, and it's actually not a peach bonfire, even though it could be, but it's the right. bonfire we need for Wrong Warp. Yes, he's going to use to that, to ceaseless. that location of that bonfire to Wrong Warp to Ceaseless, because uh, the default mm -hmm. location is next to Ceaseless, and he'll do that later. Here comes Centipede. This is, Melee Centipede can be annoying, but <sighs> if he cooperates, <sighs> it's, it's fine, but if he doesn't, it can be bad. So what well, we hope that it, he cooperates here. The old folk. The regal pathing kind nice. of works. So that was that, nice. That pathing that Dan did was just to bait out that jump attack. You can pretty consistently get that jump attack from the centipede, and as long as you don't mess up, he's he's pretty much dead. Yep. Like uh Getting the jump attack not only is easy to like punish and he doesn't like get stuck in the lava, it's also like easy to punish with the first running attack, not like the follow up. Yeah. Because he's standing still for very long and that's. Yeah, he does that roar and to... you can pop him in the yeah. arm. And like that's Dan just really said, easy. like him not being in the lava is a big deal because if, if there's at any point that Centipede is like far back in the arena in the lava there's just nothing you can do you just have to wait yep. for centipede to approach you which can be very slow and sometimes he will just start spamming projectiles at you it's, it's awful so this is a uh, probably my least favorite part of the run just because it's so boring but this is just like us <laughs> just a run through of isolith you need to do like specific pathing here to be safe from these bounding demons um, but it's really easy. It's just kind of like a boring sprinting segment. Imagine calling dragon buns bounding Well, that's what they are. Bounding demons. Demonic foolish to your name. <laughs> so we're on our way but to yeah, like, the chaos here. I would say this part of the run is rather not boring in an actual run because you are when you're in a, on a good pace and you're like you're generally pumped from the pace. I, it was more annoying. It was more boring for me and no wrong work because you did this earlier on. And yeah, it, no it wrong work with the mid game. It didn't feel like you were near the end of a run when you got here. It just because like uh, I have to run through this part now. In, in this category though, it is kind of like late game, so you're kind of just this is like a a chill out moment. For sure, chill out until you get killed by firestorm. Huh? Yeah. Or you throw the bombs too fast. Actually, no people strafe this attack to the left, but I have no clue. What yeah, there's specific the pathing path you, you need to do yeah. in order to do it. And it should be faster. Yeah, you saw Dan roll that, that fire spray. That 
That's definitely one way you can die, is that enemy fire spraying you right there. Alright, so here's Toki Bombs. Um, so Dan's going to run to a sp specific position on the floor and uh, pop a Blossom to give him some extra stamina regen. And then he's going to aim with his bow specific places and toss two bombs. And it is going to just skip the, the first two phases of this fight, essentially. And then he just can immediately go to the middle. And hopefully he doesn't get Firestorm because this boss can actually attack him in this tunnel um it looks like he's safe though yeah i've got the with rng actually this bone out was unnecessarily precise but it's okay Dang. insane bone outs yep so next thing we're gonna do is uh four kings finally four kings and that's gonna be the play the actually the time when we place lord vessel and the reason why we place lord vessel is because we can skip the golden fog gate to Nito. Yeah, like you, you can skip way. like all the golden fog gates except for Nito's. So you, you just place it near the end of the run. Um, but it's better like routing to be able to do four kings later on than it is to do the earlier. Yeah, it's just it's just comfier and also on top of just being comfier later in the run because it's an easy boss. Um, it's also good um, good for home wrong works. Yes. Homeward wrong works routing because you need to take that bonfire and you take it with homeward wrong warp so you you actually homeward wrong warp, etc. So there are some advantages to it for sure. Alright, so he's gonna be doing a, another skip here to prevent having to lower the water. It's called seal skip. Um, there is a small slope just on the edge here. He's gonna just try to barely touch and do a slope put out. Uh, which is like a fall control quit out. It's going to yeah. save his position down here. There he is. Now he's out of bounds in the water. He has to do another quit out here because he activated death cam. Really um, managed to quit out too fast. Oh, nice. <laughs> Off of the first roll. Don't think I ever done it before. So not only is this fast, but uh, it also is convenient in a few ways. Like, first of all, if you drop in from out of bounds where he's about to drop in, the king won't throw magic at you because you can get to him really quickly. And if you're up yeah. close to him, he won't throw magic. But also where he lands, he's going to drop an item to know where the second king is going to spawn. After he kills the first king, he just goes back to the item as his frame of reference, and that's where the second king is going to spawn. And he's only going to get two kings because you will see that once he does... Uh, once he triggers the death on the king he's going to continue to attack it and continue to pile on extra damage onto the king like so and you see that even though he only took out one king the health bars passed halfway yep the damage that you deal to kings with the black knight greatsword plus five move swap is pretty immense yeah same works for dragon tooth yeah and you can basically just spawn kill the second king Yep. With this stamina, it's like zero issues to do so. And the most important part of the run, in a way. To not say not no Not say to no to Cap, yeah. Go back and ring the bells. Oops. Alright, so he's going to place the Lord the Vessel. The hardest over wrong warp. Do a wrong work game. to go to ceaseless. This is also going to save his position at this bonfire. Yep. Which it will, will then lead into the next wrong work he'll be doing after that. Okay. Do a ring swap here. This is easy RTSR setup. You just run up the slope. Yeah, very down. easy RTSR. This is a this well, is I a guess we, little bit of I a scary fight. Yeah, I just don't fail move swap. Over fights. What were you the, saying? The problem of this move, uh, just don't fail move swap over fights. You're saying we didn't explain something. Oh, we didn't explain the RTSR setups with DCR kind of. Oh yeah, but, like the DCR fact that it like, actually, yeah, yeah, the all the fall damage in the Dark Souls one is percentage based, like it calculates the percentage from your all health, and DCR makes it so that not only you can deal half percent of your damage just in in equip unequip manner but also it 
reduce it makes it so half of your health is like hundred percent of your health. Mm -hmm. So it reduces all the full damage you receive. Yeah. By two. Just gives you extra way to manipulate your H HP, which is very useful. Yeah. The dad actually has to move swap in the fight here, and he yeah. and messes it up. So he's not going to be able no, to I'm one cycle here. Yep, no one cycle, but I mean, if you even if you fail the move swap here, it's like it's very easy to bait out the ceaseless for the right attack. Yeah, if you don't get bait off the right attack, though, it can be scary. If you um, don't bait out the right attack, in my case, I'm usually dead. <laughs> like, yeah, he, he like has like so a, few, dodgeable. a few different like possible melee attacks, but if you're standing in the right place, he shouldn't do them. Yeah, it's like weird AI money that yeah. standing in a certain spot makes him attack. Quite specifically, like the opener is hundred percent consistent, basically. Like I, I don't remember a single time getting the bad attack. Well, I think the you right still, position. yeah, you still need to be in the right position. Yeah, you have to be in the right position, but with the follow up, it's I'm not sure actually. Yeah, like you probably can behave weirdly based on how you how you get in that position, etc. But yeah, like this fight is all about just not failing moves. Well. Yeah, uh, as you long execute as you don't properly, properly, it's it's, it's nothing. Yeah. Yep. Actually, I haven't included. This is the, uh, um, one of the scarier areas as well, mostly because of uh, a particular enemy oh called God. Bone nice. Whale Skeletons. Which... Insane me there, Rule. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, Catacombs <laughs> is just an annoying area in general. Uh, and he's going to be doing another set of air rolls here, which can also potentially go wrong. But hopefully, yeah, you can go like hopefully super fun. wrong, but I mean the it, run back it, here is only like a minute. Yeah, it's very so, short, but still. but it's it, fully RNG when it goes badly. Yeah, with the rolls. It's funny because like the catacombs area is like really annoying with a super easy boss, oh, and I then actually super badly. And then Tomb of the Giants is yeah. like really easy area. I could probably just quit out immediately oh, because I knew yeah. that the roll was bad. Yeah, that was. A that's a finicky roll, honestly. It's finicky, but I just equipped my pike so late that yeah. I didn't make the timing right. And uh, I mean, I kind of understood it, but I was just in kind of let's see what happens uh, approach. Yeah, <laughs> I know that feel. Let's so just, let's just, just lazy. see. Let's just see. Yeah, Maybe it'll work. You're <laughs> you're just lazy to like salvage it. Not cautious enough. But yeah, generally like uh, this part without hidden but like if we would have the base vit for bone wheels, oh, it, it would be, be a little scary. Annoying. You the, in melee routes, you really don't want to come to this segment with low HP. Yep. It, it can be very scary. Like, I, I, pretty much any route I can think of that does a uh, Nido segment with um, melee gets a bunch of HP beforehand. I think, what do you have, like 23 vit right now? 25. 25. 25. Okay. 25. Yeah, SL1 here is. Uh, not, can be not very fun. Nice. That Skelly was close, but he just. Yeah, he. That I, that Ooh. skeleton is almost always close to hitting me, but he never does. Yep. So here's Bone Will's nice dodge. This is honest. Bone this is a little bit of a weird pinwheel fight too. This can go wrong, but usually it's fine. It's just mostly annoying. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah, you actually can't uh, kill him in a single running attack. Um, yep. And if you do, if you start off with a running attack, you then don't have enough stamina left over. So you start off with a rolling yep. attack into a running attack. Yep. It's not a big deal, actually. I mean, you can do running attack plus R1. It's, yeah, it's you can. really not much slower. No, it's not. Ultimately. So Tomb of the Giants can look a little bit confusing for the first time. This area is r yeah. actually pretty bumpy though or if you're experienced yeah, it's, well experienced it's comfy runner. unless unless 
I mean, that what you just did, that fog gate skip, is like Holy the cow. most likely to screw up part of the run. <laughs> nice toggle escape. Yeah, nice toggle escape. <laughs> All plans initially. Oh, <laughs> man. Um, um, you don't yeah. usually get hit by that skeleton, but it can happen. Uh, it's because it I happen. rolled, actually. If I wouldn't roll, I wouldn't get hit. Is this part thing. Probably. It's because I rolled instead of toggling, I think. I already don't remember what I did, but since I since I wasn't a roll animation, it means I did something wrong because you never roll here. In any circumstance. Okay, so this this upcoming boss can also be very random and annoying. So hopefully he plays nice with Dan. I mean he's usually totally fine. Yeah, it's not really a scary fight, like in terms of dying it's just like you can lose a lot of time it here. can be annoying like it's fully rng based if he yeah. wants to fuck you up he will that's this kind of a fight so there's a fall damage cancel plunge i actually the didn't fight. even expect him to be an asshole so oh, yeah he's got a screen that's that's the attack that sucks and he's also going the wrong direction okay here we go But as you can see, as soon as you like, uh, as soon as you reach the boss yeah. himself, it's like pretty true. Very simple. And uh, that's the reason that we got the stone armor to begin stone with. Stone armor, this yeah. fight. Is because the skeletons can stagger the crap out of you while you're doing this, and you do not want that to happen because it can mess up everything. You also take a lot of extra damage. So here's the final wrong warp of the run. Dan's last bonfire was the Lord Vessel. Yep, Lord Vessel. Wrong warping with that as your last bonfire puts you into the kiln of the first flame. So he's just immediately on his way to Gwyn. And the Ooh, last the last boss of Dampleton. Yep. We're actually under seven hours, yeah. which is like an hour. Almost an hour shorter than I did expect. I was it to I was expecting it to be a little under eight. Like I, I, I was saying eight, but I actually thought it was going to be seven and a half, seven. But under seven is pretty. Yeah. Pretty nice. Unless you die to Gwyn like multiple times. Mm, I need to die as many times as Nubis died. So like, <laughs> for that to be the case. Yeah, Nubis I mean, I already Gwyn. almost. I all I already had potential to die to Black Knight because I got the fast swing, but I didn't. So this is why Dan picked up the Hornet Ring by Sif earlier, because it's actually going to Yeah, get Hornet him Ring a... is only useful for Gwyn. Yeah, like it's gonna give else. him it a just saves one repost. Two repost fight here. Yep. Instead of three. And it actually like uh, takes less time to pick up the ring than to do yeah, one after repost. Absolutely. Especially with the quit out strat, so but Gwen can be a bit of a memer, so we'll see if he gets any grabs or whatnot here. All right, one grab. One grab is okay. Yeah, just one. All right, nice. GG. I mean, the advantage of 25 bits is that you can tank like two fast hits without follow up. Yeah. Which is pretty mm -hmm. bonkers. And we are done. Final time, 6.41.17. GG, Dan. Well done. Insane. Actually, my throat hurt. <laughs> Your throat hurts? I bet. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see that in-game time. 1.11. One eleven. Not too bad. I mean, I died to BTS once. I also, like, died to gaping, which was a big one. Yeah. I mean, you, you, there's so a lot of time losses horrible. everywhere, but yeah. Yep. But this is like fine. There was no like super major time. Like the most dangerous part, like one of the things that happened, like gaping is one of the most dangerous parts because yeah. any homeward wrong warp is potentially an insane time loss, especially yeah. ceaseless. If you well, die you to can, ceaseless, you can take you need to do BTS. bonfire, right? Mm, only like. I know so if you can in the dragon tooth route. I don't if know if you it messes want, up anything for this. If you want to do it like that, you have to homeward wrong warp from the abyss bonfire. 
so you have to hover hmm. wrong word from a beast bonfire so you take it then you take ceaseless bonfire then you kill ceaseless then from ceaseless bonfire you warp to a beast bonfire and from a beast uh, bonfire you go place lord Vessel. i see i see I think in, um, in the, the route that I'm doing, you can just take the ceaseless bonfire and it's like not a big deal. Nah, yeah, there you can't. Yeah, and also like sense. the the Gwyn, like dying to Gwyn. Yeah, Gwyn is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Gwyn is quite you bad. Will need, I mean, for that also, like taking a beast bonfire will be super beneficial because you will just form a wrong warp yeah. or just place like souls whenever you uh, reach yeah. Lord Vessel. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, 111 all bosses in DS1, 115 in Sekiro. I have no clue what time was in here. It was like 358 real time or something. Let me check. It was, I think, less than four. It was 358. Let me check actually what RTA my BB is to like compare maybe. Um, like very quickly. Uh, my PB is. Uh, seconds 340 352 so it's like six minutes slower which is a lot of course but for four hour long run that's so it was that's what, actually uh, 358? that's actually less uh yeah 358 would be like pretty fast still since yeah. i that only once i mean my near run is closer to bb than my dark souls one run so, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's I mean, dark souls one run is the furthest but yeah, it's it's actually a good Danfrithon version 2.3 world record. I definitely can say that this is a a good one. You hear that, guys? World, world record on stream. Can you believe that? World records on showcase. Yeah. <laughs> the world record. But yeah, it's been nice. Uh, I'm glad to like do the opening of 2022 on Speed Souls channel. Like we plan to do to do the Dumfrithon much earlier initially. It's supposed to be like last year, but I got ill and then things coincided in a way that we postponed it for the better times. And I'm just glad to like showcase it because it's Yeah, you did a great job. And so did all of the uh commentators you brought on. Commentators, yeah. So, commentators helped a lot. So thank you to everybody that participated and thank you everybody for watching. Yep, it's been a pleasure of right. mine to. Do you to have anything this. else to add, Dan? Hmm? Do you have anything else to add? Mm, I mean, new Dunfrithon world record is nice. So I already got the record this year. That's also nice. I guess there is not much to add. It's been fun. It went better than I expected in all senses like because i woke up quite a long time ago me too but luckily like the 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 marathon well not the marathon but the showcase atmosphere uh removes the tiredness kind of yeah so that's nice so yeah i mean big shout outs to all the communities i'm the part of like speed souls first of all and near community Sekiro community these people are all great if you are interested in speedrunning any of these games you should like go and check out the the communities there are always people that are ready to help you with new stuff and whatnot so yeah speedrun games enjoy speedrunning uh, speedrunning games and yeah that's it okay thank you dan okay all right we're gonna